ocean of stars who first gazed up at it, dreamt that it held the key to humanity's future. How vast the universe must have seemed to them, unending and eternal, filled with infinite possibility. But if only those dreamers knew what I know now, that humankind harbors a voracious hunger, one not even the limitless cosmos can sate. Another 24 hours and we're off the clock. Gotta say, this has been one easy gig. Yes, I suppose it has. Would you care for more coffee, Ray? Sure. Don't get ahead of yourself, Ray. Uh, Captain. Seriously, something's up today. I can feel it. Your sixth sense again. I'll take your word for it. Human's intuition is a mystery to me. Hey. Danger tends to rear its ugly head when you least expect it. Maybe pirates are sneaking up on us as we speak. Oh, ha ha, laugh it up, you guys. <laughs> For real, though, you've got to relax. Look how quiet it is out there. Huh? See? This is what you get for ignoring me. Probably just some random asteroid field or something. Scanning craft. Verified. Pangalactic Federation battleship, the Astoria. As in their latest and greatest. I heard it also has a Kenny on board. What's it doing so far outside of Fed space? Uh, I think they're aiming at us. Warning. Phase cannon fired. Distance 350,000 clicks. <sighs> Take evasive action. Starboard thrusters to full power. There's no time. Everyone brace for impact. Shields holding at 78%. Why are Patch they doing a single this? group. Tell them we're not hostile, damn it. No response. Second strike incoming. Schematics on screen. Find us a way out of here now. No good. Cannons fired at our projected course. Make it stop! Shields down to 12%. Weapons activity detected. Readying third strike. Still no response from the Astoria. Seems they have no intention of letting us go. Ray, they've ceased fire. Your orders. Abandon ship. All crew members, get to an escape pod. Wait, we must consider the cargo. Is evacuating the correct course of action? These are feds we're dealing with here. If we don't clear out now, we're goddamn space dust. This job isn't worth our lives. Captain's orders, evacuate immediately. Got a loose end to tie up. Don't worry. I'll be right behind you. I'll be fine. Come on. Open, you stupid. Power has been cut from this section of the ship. No matter how hard you try, you won't be able to open that door. Elena? The Astoria has fired on us. I'm sorry, but there's not enough time to save the cargo before impact. You have one minute. That's more than enough time. Now help! Yes, Captain. No! Hey! Stop! What do you think you're doing? Elena! Elena! The 
crew of the Edis needs you. Good luck, Ray. And goodbye. No! Computer. Number and location of all ejected pods. According to the latest records, nine of the 49 escape pods have been successfully jettisoned and are now untraceable. This ocean of stars. Who first gazed up at it? Dreamt that it held the key to humanity's future. must have seemed to them, unending and eternal, filled with infinite possibility. Setting course, fourth planet of the Aster star system, warp 2.1, estimated arrival, five days. An underdeveloped planet? I can't take this! But humanity is insatiable. It is that hunger, that bottomless greed that drives them, and they will not rest until they have claimed every last star in the sky. Escape vessel located within communication range. <gasps> That's gotta be Chloe. Open up a channel. Ray? Oh, thank goodness. Is Elena okay? It is you. Man, I'm glad to hear your voice. Elena, she... she's safe. So let's you and me worry about our own hides, huh? We're headed for an underdeveloped planet, Ray. Relax. People back home probably just got our Mayday call. They're coming. So until they get here, just think of this as an adventure, okay? Entering orbit around the fourth planet in the Aster star system. Those dreamers knew what I know now, that you can only push the universe so far before it starts to push back. Arriving on Aster 4, planetary surface found to be sufficient for all life forms aboard craft. Initiating emergency protocol, distress signal activated. All right. Let's hope someone picks that up. Otherwise, we are SOL. Oh, my legs are friggin' killing me. Could do with a stretch. Well, the pod's electronics seem to be working just fine. It is just for emergency escape, though, so useless now. Right. Computer, give me all known locations of Vetus crew members. Unable to locate escape crafts jettisoned from the Edis. Of course. So then where's Chloe's pod? I saw her enter orbit. The vessel's descent was interrupted by an electromagnetic cannon. The onboard computer was likely damaged in the attack. Underdeveloped my ass. Computer, get an emergency signal through to my brother, Antonio Lawrence. And be quick about it. Attempting to contact Antonio Lawrence, captain of the merchant vessel Aldous. You 
there! Take this! Whoa! Whoa! Lady! You've a death wish. Two arms! No idea what's going on, but not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth. Aight! Let's rumble! Thanks for that. Don't know what I would have done if you... Silence. Who are you? <laughs> Sheesh. And if I tell you, you'll let me go, right? Let you go? After witnessing you exiting a foreign ship? <laughs> You're more fool than you look. Wait. Uh, you two know that's a ship? Let me guess. You're the assholes who shot us down, aren't you? Incoming. Long range subspace transmission from Antonio Lawrence. Huh? Raymond, it's me, Antonio. Can you hear me? Ray, come in! I knew you weren't alone. <clears throat> Show yourself! Huh? Who in the hell are you? This isn't Raymond Lawrence! Step into the light! Hey, asshole, harm a single hair on my brother, and your planet scorched Earth, you hear me? Raymond, where are you? How is this possible? This voice? I see no one. Uh, big ask, I know, but mind if I answer him real quick? After that, I swear, I'm all yours. Very well. Princess! If he truly had armed fighters waiting, we would be slain several times over by now. Go on. Do not keep your comrade waiting, Sir Raymond Lawrence. Oh, why, thank you, milady. And uh, as for your butler or whatever, mind telling him to back it up? How dare you! As you wish. We shall give you the space you ask in good faith. In exchange, you will tell us who you are and the nature of your talking airship. Awesome. Okay. Sounds like we got a deal. What the feds don't know can't hurt them. Antonio? It's me, Raymond. Oh, Ray! Are you okay? Yeah, define okay. Had a run-in with the Federation, and it didn't end too well for the Yidus. What the hell? Emergency landing on some planet called Aster 4. Locals are real friendly. And listening right now. Are you shitting me? Chloe's down here somewhere too. But I lost track of her pod on entry. And big question mark on the rest. Look, you've got to get here, man. We need you. Sir Raymond, Antonio. Hey, that voice. That one of Aster's friendly locals. I can guarantee Raymond's safety while he is stranded in this land. On one condition. You answer my question. Are you aligned with the Vale Empire? The who? Yeah, uh, don't even know him. Vile dissembler! Al Baird. Your comrades. Have you any idea of their whereabouts? Well, at the moment, not a clue. A girl named Chloe was riding one of these when she crashed way that away. And this ship, is it possible for anyone to pilot it? Yeah. I mean... That's kind of the point of them. That said, mine's run out of juice, so it's not going anywhere for the time being. So, if we provide it with more of this juice, theoretically, would we be able to pilot it? <laughs> Aren't you a curious one? Huh? 
Can it be? Hey, speak of the devil. Madness. Oh, how magnificent. Computer, get me a read on that craft. Was it from the Yidis? Who's on it? Readings indicate the pod was also ejected from the Edis. No passenger signal detected. Is there a town or something in that direction? Um, not a town, no. Only the Medum ruins. Albert, you must see this. Uh, Highness. Thanks for the info. Oh, and, uh, gonna hang on to this for a while halt. longer. Sorry, buddy, but no can do. Hold there. We will accompany you. The ruins can be a treacherous place. And two friendly locals could assist. Oh, for the love of... Ah, fair point. Thank you. You may call me Leticia. And this gentleman here is Albert. Stand down, Albert. We are here to help him. Is that clear? As you wish. Awesome. Hey, Antonio. We'll catch up later, all right? Wish us luck. Uh, roger that. Stay safe down there. <laughs> you guys. I'll explain the ins and outs of all this junk once I know my crew's safe. So, we got a deal? Yes, we do. Shall we then, Raymond? Uh, uh, wait. No more full name stuff. Just Ray is good. <laughs> All right, uh, Ray. Awesome. Okay, let's move. the Madoom ruins. If we follow the pillars to the west, it should come into view. Can you tell our direction by reading the stars? Nah, don't worry. since I've swung a sword around, but I guess I still got it. My muscles are gonna be hit. This to be tomorrow. And stay down. So, it falls to me. You rang?
forest is full of monsters at night, huh? Guess I'm lucky to have met some people out here. Even if they are a little eccentric. We all need to cut ourselves a path. About time for a rest. Entrance of the ruins. Got it. Let's go. stairs look a little dangerous. Even if we did try to climb them, they'd probably give way. And then perhaps we should go around. The west side looks scalable, does it not? is poor in such darkness. Pray, mind your footing. I'm good. As long as whatever we just saw doesn't show its ugly face. It holds dominion over this area. Land shouldn't appear at all. Well, that is... Nothing 
two have some killer moves. Pretty used to fighting monsters too, by the way. Is that how it is for everyone that lives here? Yes. Well, more or less. Uh, whoa. So, this is Medum, huh? It's friggin' massive. Ancient and powerful Osirian Semiomancers once called these hallowed halls home, as written in the old texts. Okay, didn't get all of that, but I'll save the few for later. For now, let's focus on getting in and getting out. safer not to stray from the path. About time for a rest. Prep for engagement. Ready yourself! expert on the regional history, but folks here don't seem too friendly. Before the kingdom became as we know it now, this was the heart of civilization in the western part of the continent. It is said that much of the culture and knowledge that served as the foundation of our kingdom was created in this very place. So the riffraff left behind by the changing times wind up here, left to fend for themselves, huh?
We have company. Another day. Enemies, get, get ahead. This to me. There is much I get to love. Detecting. Escape pod signal above. Current position. No passenger signal identified. Device is probably just busted. I'm gonna tell myself. Finally made it to the ruins. Now let's head inside. Please, please, please be okay. You gotta be kidding me. What is it? Elena, why? Ray. Why'd I have to play the hero? Why couldn't I just get in the damn escape pod? <laughs> Some captain I am. Ray! Duma production model 004213 activating. Confirmed. Life forms in need of protection. Whoa, hey, what the heck's this supposed to be? Warning. Warning. Hostile entities identified. Engaging defensive mode. Highness, are you all right? I believe so. But what? Yeah, what is this? Later. Right now we we've got company.
destroyed. I thought it was yours. More like in my care than actually mine. Hey, uh, Duma, was it? So, uh, what's your deal? Oh, so now you decide to give us the silent treatment. Why, it is just marvelous. Tell me, is this some new form of semiomancy? There's that word again. What, is it like your version of symbology or something? Symbology? Uh, never mind. Uh, anyway, thanks you two. I really appreciate it. Oh, and while I'm at it, here. And what will you do once we part? Well, try and figure out where my friends are, for one. Uh, these lands are vast. What will you do for lodging, for food, for survival? What if your companions are across the sea? Would you swim? To that end, Ray, I have a proposition for you. Assist us in our journey, and we shall assist you in yours. Are you sure that's smart? Only thing you know about me is my name. And we ought rectify that at once, for learning more about the other is sure to benefit us both. Highness? Albert, should Raymond agree, he will be in our care. Whatever comes of this, I shall bear the consequences. Allow me to properly introduce myself. I am Leticia Asarius, Crown Princess of Asarius. And this is Albert Bergholm, my royal retainer. Oh, shoot. I thought he was kidding when he called you Highness. Oh, you think us liars? Uh, put yourself in my shoes. Doubt you'd be saying anything differently. <laughs> Indeed. Not over far from these ruins is the village of Larset. There, we shall find a quiet moment to talk. I, uh, might have to hold on to this for a while. Please do. Consider it a symbol of the trust we have placed in you. Morning already? <sighs> well, this is a fine mess we found ourselves in. Think of this as something new. 
something extraordinary. set place. Anyone near here? We should be able to reach it by evening if we leave immediately. Ah, uh, you do realize we're running on no sleep, don't you? If I may, I think I know how to make the trip a deal safer. We employ Duma. Its powers of levitation should let us skirt any dangers. That true? Oh, we forget they are a bashful sort. How inconsiderate of us. scenery are different on the return trip. Are you certain we are going in the correct direction? There is no need for concern. This is the way. I assure you, with nothing but dilapidated ruins as landmarks. <laughs> Most seasoned adventurers might get lost. Building, no? Indeed. The interior. It may be complicated. Take care not to lose your way. The exit is on the southern side of the ruins. I bet Duma could probably just zip around a building like this. Cut off the ribbon! Don't come for you, Travis. Another day. Enemies up ahead.
neutralized. Destroy. Closer to getting out of this place? Stray from the path, and we will leave you behind. Find. A beard! Yes, I believe we are almost there. Threat detected ahead. Don't get cocky. We are nearing the exit of the ruins. We must pass southbound through... ...through this forest in order to reach Larset village, must we not? Yes. If we continue southeast from here, we should be near the place where we first met. Ah, that's so. Well, if it's on the way, mind if we stop by my pod for a sec? Of course. Let us be off, then. Time for a rest. Prep for engagement. Hang back, I got this. We live to fight another day. We must pass through the forest to reach Larset village. Time offers us no respite. I know. I'll be quick about it. Well, that's over with. Just a little ways more to the east. Let me call my brother real quick before we head out. Antonio, do you read me? Ray, loud and clear. Was anyone in the pod? Nope, just freight. 
It was one of the pods Elena ejected, right before the Edis went down. Wait, she did the ejecting? Then... But I don't want to hear it, okay? As the ship's captain, I have to assume everyone on the crew's safe until accounted for, right? Yeah. Uh, for now, I'm gonna look for Chloe. And I'm gonna do it with the two from yesterday. Think you can trust them? Does it matter? I need them. But even if I didn't, they're reasonable people. Plus, they saved my life. That's enough for me. All right. I'm gonna try to get to you as fast as I can. Tell Dad not to lose any hair over it, will you? Too late. He already has over the fact that you called me for help and not him. <laughs> Parents, man. <laughs> Hey, Ray, before you go, let me talk with your two traveling companions. Hey, uh, uh my bro says he wants to talk with you guys. Uh, uh hello? Uh, yes? Ah, uh, <clears throat> Yesterday, I was pretty upset and said some pretty rude things to you. Apologies for not doing this face to face. I'd like to make a fresh start. My name is Antonio Lawrence, Raymond's older brother. Uh, Sir Antonio, my name is Leticia Asarius. And with me is. Uh, um, Albert Bergholm, sir. Sarius, Mr. Bergholm. I'm sure Raymond here comes off as a strange and weird man. But please, look after my little brother for me. The Lawrence family comes from a long line of well-known merchants. We always pay our debts. Nothing to fear, sir. We shall do our utmost to ensure the safety of your brother. I appreciate it. Ray, try not to be too much of an annoyance to your new friends. Good luck. Over and out. You are loved. I wish, but nah. You just can't help treating me like a kid. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I can't wait to sleep in a bed. Let's get going. Agreed. Let us depart. Come on, let's make our way to that village. Right. Uh, Larset Village is to the south. Detected ahead.
Let us put down this rat. <laughs> Destroy it. Let it be the last. You'll not be the last. We live to fight another day. If we continue on our southward course, we should depart the forest. Excellent. The village is just beyond it then? Unfortunately not. It will take us some time. We are now entering the Larkus region. Come, let us continue to the south. Right, let's go. Much easier without all the trees, too. This is the ideal terrain for walking. Destroy. Everyone all right? Your Highness, the village of Larset lies to our west. West, indeed. Oh boy, can't wait to kick my feet up. Oh, and take a hot bath. <sighs> I second the latter. Come, let us be about it. Larset village is not far now. You must be exhausted. Shall we retire to the inn? Don't you think we should hide that thing? Kinda makes us stand out. I do not think it an issue, as it closely resembles a Semiomancer's orb, such as the one over there. A Semiomancer's orb, huh? All right then. Besides, I would like to prioritize our lodgings. A nice rest will do us all some good. We have arrived. Anyone home? That's the kind of meal that makes you glad to be alive. All right, so, where do you want to begin? First, would you mind telling us whence you hail? If you thought I said some weird stuff before, brace yourself. I'm from another world, 
One that's far, far away in the sky. Another world, you say? Far away in the sky? You know, like how you can cross a mountain to get to another village, or the ocean to get to another continent. If you fly high enough, you can cross the sky and reach other worlds. Like the stars? Uh, which star do you call home? Whoa, no. One, it's a planet, not a star. Two, you can't see it from here. I've never heard something so asinine. Well, that's because people on planets like yours don't usually learn this for a couple hundred more years. Anyway, my job is to transport cargo between planets. And we now know, Duma was my cargo. My vessel, the Yidis, was attacked by another planet's battleship. And I was forced to flee here. Right now, I'm looking for a crew member, Chloe. Gotta be traipsing about here somewhere. Oddly lackadaisical way of describing being lost in an unknown land. She's got a good head on her shoulders. And she's great with languages. Roughing it a little won't bother her. And now, I'd like you to answer something for me. What's a princess doing sneaking around outside her castle, with only one bodyguard in tow? Because I too am looking for someone. Per my intelligence, at one point, he was seen entering the Medum ruins. Therefore, I have a proposition. In return for helping in your search for Chloe, I would like you to assist us in ours. Sure, but uh, I don't know how much help I'll be. I'm not even from here. The person we seek is hardly congenial, but he is inquisitive. Your presence will be more persuasive than any argument we can make. Sounds like I got my work cut out for me. Perhaps some further information would help. His name is Midas Felgreed. He was a former Meister, one of the three most accomplished Semiomancers in all of Osarius. really want to run around looking for a semiomancer. At the same time, I don't know anything about this planet, so I'm not gonna find Chloe on my own. What do you think? Yeah, finally get to a bed and I can't even sleep. Yeah, maybe a walk will tire me out. Looking for a match? Fine then. I'll teach you everything you need to know. Something wrong? Trouble sleeping? Yeah, yeah, a little. I've been taking walks till I get tired. My apologies. I should not be burdening you with our troubles. Hey, I'm the one who said we should join up. 
I would have never been able to take care of food and lodging by myself. So don't be shy. Let me help you too. <laughs> well, if you insist on it then. Atta girl. We don't need more than one negative Nelly around and Albert's got us covered there. I am the reason he remains so troubled. Please try not to think ill of him. No, no, no. I know. I know. I guess he's uh, been through a lot, right? All those worries had turned anyone's smile upside down. Do you feel no need to inquire to fill in said details? Where we are is within the kingdom. And Albert's always wary of the Empire. The princess of said kingdom is sneaking around looking for a banished wise man. I can imagine said details. There's bound to be bumps in the road ahead. Let's at least enjoy the quiet while we can, princess. Might I, then, ask something of you? Sure, name it. Could you refrain from calling me by my royal title and use only my name? I gotta think that's gonna make Albert a little mad. Yes, well, we are undercover, and this would make things enjoyable for me. Do you agree, Ray? Yep, gotcha. Excellent. Now, with that off my chest, I do believe I shall return and rest. You would do well to do the same. You got it. Good night, Leticia. Yes. Have a good night, Ray. Alrighty, let's head back to the inn. Oh, and hey, do you think I could keep using this weapon? Of course. Consider it yours. There is also a merchant within the village. Shall we take a look tomorrow? Sounds good. Gotta be ready for anything around here. Alright, I think I'm finally getting tired. Guess I will head back. Anyone home? It's been a while since I got a good night's rest. Morning. Before we head out, I just wanted to thank you again. So, thanks, Leticia, Albert. Good morning to you too, Ray. So, uh, where exactly are we headed? I kind of forgot. Oh, hey! Is that Delric Village over there? about bustling. Well, Delric is the largest and most productive mining town in the kingdom. Don't expect us to go looking for you if you get lost. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what's our next move? First thing tomorrow morning, we go pay a visit to the resident Iatromancer. Iatromancer? A rare breed of specialized semiomancer. They are charged with mending people's wounds and treating their ailments. And we're paying this person a visit because they likely know where Midas is? Yes, it is likely, but... But... Never mind, it matters not. What matters, though, is getting some much-needed rest. about that it's quite all right you're not hurt are you oh I'm fine never seen you here before 
But if you're feeling under the weather, don't hesitate to drop by the infirmary. The Iatromancer there is one of the best in the business, so you'll be in good hands. All right, gotta run. That was strange. I know what happened. You were probably making one of your faces, and she assumed you were on death's door. Perhaps I was. Were you and her highness not such a handful, though, I wouldn't have to make any face. Ooh, hear that? Sounds like he's bad-mouthing you. Only because you goad him. Reap what you have sown by yourself. Keep me out of it. Ah, it's an inn. Nice. Let's go inside. I finished my meal and was getting ready to set off in an excellent mood. But then I was attacked by a massive swarm of insects. What to do? Oh! You folks could hold your own against them, I'm sure. Could I trouble you to get rid of those nasty bugs? I'd be truly grateful. Why do those insects ignore everyone else and just go for me all the time? Can I help you? Anyone home? I want to play Esoa. I've got to play. Have to. Well, hello there, youngster. Mining town can offer you some respite on your journey. Good night. All right. Now, how do we find this so called Iatromancer? Inquire of the townsfolk. I can think of no other way. Huh. I suppose you're right. Maybe one of them knows something about Chloe, too. Oh, travelers! Welcome to Delric Village. Is this your first visit? I see. So you want to know where the infirmary is? Head west from here and you'll come to a large hill. The uh, infirmary is just up the slope. Are you feeling all right? If not, I'm certain Dr. Marcus can cure what ails you. Give the doc my regards when you see him. So, the guy you're looking for is at the infirmary, or whatever? Apparently so. It looks as though the infirmary is located farther up on the hill. Let us make for the west side of the village. Welcome! Thanks.
Much appreciated. Stop by. Thanks. General awareness confirmed. This is so a craze too. Isn't that a game for kids? Here we are, Marquis's infirmary. Uh, perhaps he is out. I bumped into last night. Hey, this girl, the gifted Yatromancer you were talking about? I... I very much doubt that. Wow, talk about rude. You come in here and call me bad at my job? That, that was not my intent. I simply meant that you are not who we have come to see. We have traveled quite the distance to employ the services of one Marcus Eason. Oh, you're here for the doctor. Sorry. My name's Nina. I'm an apprentice Iatromancer, and by extension, Dr. Izen's assistant. A pleasure. So then, I assume he's the one who needs to see a doctor. As I have said, I am fine. I'm sure you've come a long way, but the doctor can't see you. The thing is, he's not even in right now. He left for the mines to collect some samples for his research. By the sound of it, he probably won't be back anytime soon. Dr. Eason! What's the matter? Ah, Nina! 
Fiends have appeared from the mines to the east. There are many wounded. We need you. Now! Wait, the mines? That's where the doctor said he was going. Um, uh, how many people have been injured? Do you know? I don't know. Tons. I wasn't gonna stop and count. We got your back on this, Nina. Round up all the supplies we can. No time to be picky. All right. Sounds good. And thanks for the support. I mean it. Nina, take us to the abandoned mine. Okay, you got it. Right this way. Not good, not good. We need to hurry. Maester Marcus, are you all right? Think it's poison? Can't feel my legs. Siphon the venom out! <sighs> I didn't know it'd be this bad. All right, people, got an atromancer here. And she brought medicine. Okay, first I gotta figure out what exactly is wrong with them. Next, need to find a place where I can lay everything out. Then... Oh, oh, come back! Someone do something! Damn, just can't catch a break, huh? Albert, Leticia, Duma, you ready to throw down? Of course. This shall not take long. They will Prepare yourselves for battle! For my own understanding, do you often see these monsters around here? No. I I've never seen anything like them in my life. Now that you mention it, have you even met this doctor before? I have. Nina's pretty busy, so I guess that leaves us three to get him out. You mean the three people who have no clue how to navigate these tunnels? We might not, but this little puppy will. Once we log our route, that way, we can at least get back out. Then it is decided. Into the depths we go. So be it. However, these mines will be teeming with fiends. By failing to prepare, we prepare for death. Let's go find the dock. Do not let your zeal lead you to injury. Huh. Looks like there's a hill back there we can climb. Let's check it out. It appears there are enemies below. Let us proceed. We are nearing the entrance to the mines. We must eliminate them here. Right. Mitigating damage to the village is paramount. Black 
neutralized. Destroy. Emergency protocols. Alright, looks like we finally made it. It out in the open. Ray, this enemy is clearly unlike the others. What's the plan? Should we take it out? Combat is not always the best strategy. Consider retreat as a viable option as well. Insufficient output. Danger. Unable to continue combat. Assault warning. Energy left positional tactics insufficient output. Had I only trained harder. We appear to have lost them. Target sighted.
Get ahead. Prepare for the worst. Position <laughs> in effect. Huge crystals. It is a wonder crystals this large yet remain in the mines. Should we try back? Maybe it'll break. Hey, are we sure the Doc is really down here? We must trust that he is, and continue onward for now. Considering the We're being overwhelmed! Against these numbers, one wrong move and it's lights out. Destroy. Keep vision in your hand, unable to perform blind side. Neutralized. are supposed to to be abandoned but a great many crystals yet remain this does not bode well let us venture deeper
Threat detected ahead. Understand. This nest has had time to develop and no monsters have attacked? How is that possible? I'd say ask that thing, but looks like it ain't in the mood. Indeed. We've cut, them to cut ourselves a path. Well aware. Danger. Not my intention. Woo! Destroy. 
that monstrosity their mother these eggs would spell the town's doom upon hatching should probably get rid of them asap might want to tell the townspeople too afterwards huh oh uh, uh. dr Ezen. oh there you are buddy good thing we got to you before the hatchlings could I haven't been this tired in forever. You gotta take better care of yourselves, people. Rest assured, they appreciate your efforts. And we can appreciate that the doctor's wounds were not serious. Only because you were there to help him. I'll make sure he hears about your great deed when he wakes up. Wait. I just realized something. I still don't even know any of your names. Not like we really had time for introductions anyway. My name's Raymond. But you can call me Ray. Everyone else does. I am Albert. And I am Leticia. So we have Raymond, or Ray, then there's Albert, and last but not least, Leticia. Okay, I think I got it. As soon as he wakes up, I'll send a missive to the inn where you're staying. Again, I can't thank you enough for saving his life. We shall be waiting with bated breath. Come on, girl, we saved a ton of lives today. They'll probably erect a statue of us in the middle of town or something. So cheer up, okay? Okay. Pardon me, but I have a message for you from someone named Nina. It says that Dr. Eason has regained consciousness and you may visit whenever. That is wonderful news. Thank you for telling us. Well, 
Now that he's awake, let's go see the guy. Hmm. to Doc Eason's on the double. Yes. Uh, the infirmary should be located on the west side, if I recall correctly. Anyone home? than experience. I do.
Anyone home? Good morning, everyone. The doctor's been waiting for you. Please, go on in. I cannot say I expected you to save me. Nonetheless, I'm glad you're in good health, Leticia. I too am glad to see you well, Marcus. Huh? Wait a second. Do you two know each other? And that makes you... Albert Bergholm. It's been quite some time, Marcus. That it has. I barely recognized you. And you, good sir, must be Raymond. I cannot thank you enough for saving the people of our fair town. Think nothing of it. Seeing you in good spirits is thanks enough. And so, Lady Leticia, to what do I owe the pleasure? I have come in search of my dispel greed and thought you might know his whereabouts. Hmm. What business do you have with him, if I may ask? I wish him to accompany me to the capital. A threat looms over the kingdom, and without his assistance, we shall succumb to it. My lady, I assume you are privy to the true cause of his resignation? I believe the royal family and its advisors took umbrage with his methods. Then you understand why I cannot in good conscience reveal his whereabouts. Nothing can change that. Nothing at all. Are you certain? Perhaps if your motivation differed, so would my answer. Marcus... I ask you take your leave. And if you would be so kind, refrain from calling upon me henceforth. Oh. <sighs> huh. What the hell happened between you three? Had to be something, the way he was acting. Nina? So, uh, Leticia, you're not just some page from the capital, are you? I don't think I've ever heard the doctor speak so deferentially to anyone in my life. The two of you also seem to know each other. Do you know Uncle Midas, too? Uncle Midas? At the very least, you have to know that Dr. Eason was one of Osirius' three wise men, just like Uncle Midas. So the doc's, like, famous or something? And suppose I do. Then you might be interested in this. My full name is Nina DeForge. DeForge? Would you happen to mean the same DeForge as... I do. My father, who served alongside Midas and Dr. Eason as one of the three wise men, is none other than... Filberto DeForge. So, what do you say? Can someone like little old me join you? Uh, maybe the street's not the best place for this. We can talk at my house. It's just on the other side of the inn. It's just down the hill from the infirmary. Probably not a conversation to have in the street. My house isn't far from here. Let's head there. Here we are. Sorry, it's kind of a mess. Please, make yourselves at home. She's researching Helgar's disease? If I may, where is Maester DeForge? He passed away seven years ago. He did? Yes, and ever since. Dr. Eason has been my guardian and my teacher. He taught me all I know about iatromancy. So you didn't learn anything from your dad? He did leave me a lot of documents, but no, he never taught me anything himself. 
And to be fair, I never even thought to ask. I had zero idea how important he or the doctor was before he died. What the devil are you doing here? An accomplished semiomancer has died, and I wish to pay my respects. The deceased does not wish you to, so please take your leave. Yes, I suppose you are right. He wouldn't want to see my face. <gasps> you must be Filberto's daughter. I can see both him and Amalia in you. You have the face of a semiomancer. Perhaps she does, but Filberto did not wish for her to walk the same path. Hence, I raise her as my own. If Filberto is watching us from beyond, I am sure your words have put any fears he had to rest. I will leave you to grieve. Laticia, Albert, let us away. <sighs> I heard the name Leticia before. Nina. Let me be honest with you, Your Highness. There's something I've wanted to do for a long time. I know it's presumptuous to ask, but if you promise to help me achieve it, then I promise to help you in return. I'll try and persuade the doc to tell you where Midas is. You will? Of course. I mean, it's not like you did anything wrong. Your family may have been at odds with him, but you've saved both him and this town. You are obviously a good person. Hey, uh, I remember the doctor saying something about if our motivation was different, his answer would be two. So, maybe we could work with that? I think that ship has sailed. Either way, now doesn't seem like the best time. No matter what we say, he's not going to listen to us. Ah! Ray, you mind coming with me to the infirmary? Alone? To do what, though? Just the usual work is all. Come on, let's go. Uh, okay. No questions now. Let's just get to the infirmary. Once we're there, follow my lead, okay? This part is on. Anyone home? Dr. Eason! Dr. Eason! Just letting you know that I'm going to Rythel to buy tinctures and stuff! By yourself at this hour? I think not. Oh, I'm not going by myself. I'll have three capable bodyguards with me at all times, right? Uh, right. Three, yeah. Excuse Right. Guess we'll be going now. Oh, no, you won't! Nice one. <laughs> All right, that should buy us some time. We'd better get to the other two before the doctor thinks to look for them. Hey, you might want to think about getting out of here! And soon! The dog's on his way as we speak! Pardon? Have... have we a destination? Place called Rythel, apparently. Going there to get meds. To to get medicine. Whatever, who cares? Let's just go. Unless you want to face the doctor's wrath, then be my guest. Don't worry, Dad. I got this. You'll see. Right. Now all that's left is to make it out of this place without getting caught. This part is off. From some shopping. Yes. <laughs> 
Osarian royal family too? Nah, I'm just a humble transporter. I was carrying some cargo for a client when I was attacked by thieves. And then my ship was destroyed, I got separated from my crew, and these two graciously helped me out of a tight spot. By the way, where exactly is this rifle place anyway? It lies to the northeast. From here, we need only travel eastward until the coastline comes into view. Gotcha. Now that you mention it, it's been a long time since I've seen a real ocean. until someone tells me. I see. Well, I'm certainly no expert either. But if there's anything you want to know, I'll do my best to fill you in. Awesome. That'd be a huge help. Go! 
Don't get cocky. Energy levels destroyed. Ocean breeze feels great. Looks like our path splits two ways here. We will arrive in Rifle regardless of which we choose. However, the route adjacent to the ocean is short. If Mr. Mark is waiting on us, we have not the time to sightsee. You're right. Let's handle our business quickly. Get back as soon as we can. Let's do what Nina came here to do. So it's a port. Ray? I ain't gonna break our promise or anything. I was just thinking. Might be a ship bound for where Chloe touched down, you know? I see. We should make for the pier. If any fairies have successfully made the crossing, they shall be there. How about you, Nina? You cool with going to the port? Of course. I needed to go there anyway, so no complaints here. Thanks.
place always this dead? Shouldn't be. To my knowledge, it's always busted. Maybe this warrants an investigation? Why are the Fairy Staccato still out of commission? I can't run a business like this. You're trying to hightail it to the capital too, huh? Well, I've got bad news for you. The Vale Empire's got it locked down with their warships, and they're not withdrawing them anytime soon. You are kidding me! If I were, prices wouldn't be through the roof. I can barely put food on the table myself. <sighs> Maybe those rumors about a war brewing weren't so far-fetched after all. Just forget Kato and the capital even exist. You'll sleep better at night. Guess the laws of supply and demand apply no matter what planet you're on. Distro goes down and prices go up. Speaking of which, we came here to buy stuff, right? Are we even gonna be able to do that? Not actually sure. I didn't think shipping routes would be closed when we left, so we might be in trouble. Mind if I hit the infirmary now? It's right around here, and I don't want to risk missing out. Oh, you cannot be serious! There aren't any ships running? What's the holdup? When are they gonna set sail again? I honestly couldn't tell you. Regular service has been temporarily suspended due to the appearance of the Imperial warships. What? Temporarily suspended? Anything you can do? I can't do much if the ships don't set sail. Ooh, I got the best idea. You need to sneak into the Imperial capital. Huh? What? You gotta bust in there and knock some sense into somebody. The Emperor, whoever. Then the Emperor will stop sending out its warships and you guys can resume service, right? <laughs> That's a good one. Do I look like I'm joking? Because I'm not. At all. <laughs> Please, I told you! Regular service is suspended! Ugh. He was useless, anyway. Ugh. But what am I supposed to do if their stupid ships are too chicken to set sail? You're gonna have to think of something, old Welch. A most eccentric young woman, for lack of a better word. Yeah, you can say that again. Hey, looks like she might have dropped something. Oh, a ring. I believe this symbol represents the Vineyards, a well-known merchant family in Delric. Delric Village, huh? Well, since we found it, I guess we ought to return it. Talk about a rabble rouser, eh? Guess we ought to try and hand this back whenever we're in Delric, though.
afternoon. Is Dr. Vanell here? If it isn't little Nina. I heard those monsters were quite the handful. Wait, you did? How? When goods aren't coming in, your ears tend to perk up at news that might affect your bottom line. So then your stock is low, huh? I've got enough for the time being. Hold on a moment. I'll get you the usual. I don't want to be rude, but if all we're doing is picking up some drugs, remind me why you wanted us to tag along? Sorry, that's not the real reason. There's something I want Leticia to see. Sorry for the wait. Why the long face, Nina? If it's not too much trouble, can we see the patient? Uh, his illness is quite advanced. Just don't get too close. I'll make sure not to. If it's all right, I'd like to show you all something. Is he afflicted with... Yes, Helgar's disease. It's claimed the lives of 20 people already, and shows no signs of slowing down. That many? Leticia, if you don't mind, could I come with you to the capital? I need to visit the Semiomancy Consortium. What exactly is that? The main institution where semiomantic research is conducted. It has the best facilities in the kingdom. That goal I was talking about? It's to cure Helgars. And to do that, I'll need to learn a lot more about Iatromancy. Please, I just want to rid the world of the disease that killed my father. The rub is, would Maester Marcus approve of that? If he doesn't, I'll never learn enough about it, and more people will die. I can't let this disease spread any further than it already has. Dr. Ethan and I can only do so much by ourselves. I understand your concern, but that's not why we're here. We're here to convince the doctor to disclose Maester Felgreed's whereabouts. I personally have no issue with escorting you to the Consortium. However, were that to irreparably sour your relationship with Dr. Eason, it would defeat the whole purpose of this endeavor. I don't know. Call it a gut feeling, but I seriously doubt Marcus is that stubborn of a person. Do you? Anywho, let's head to Delric. Taking detours isn't gonna earn us any favors with him. Fair enough. It's not as if we gain anything by staying in Rifle. Uh, uh, Albert! Uh, pardon the indiscretion, but no need to worry. I can stand by my... Uh. Yikes, he's burning up. This is bad. Dr. Vanell, we need you to look at someone right away. Please! How is he? Well enough to be discharged tomorrow morning. A little fatigued is all, apparently. <sighs> Good to hear. The doctor also suggested we have Maester Eason look at him once we return to Delric. Weird. Guess Nina was right about Albert looking sick then. Indeed. This ordeal has taken its toll on me as well. Let us return to our lodgings. is near the fountain at the top of the hill, if I recall correctly. Sweet! Wanna play a round of a soa? Aw, that's My bed's starting to get a little axe beak feathers would work great. Axe beaks Anyone home? Oh, welcome. The harbor lights are quite lovely come nightfall. Rest well. Okay, now that we're all here, let's go pick up Albert. The clinic was just down the hill on the left, yeah?
thank you all for looking after me, and sorry to have been such a burden, especially to you, Nina. You absolutely sure you're okay? I am. You shan't see me on my knees again. Bluster if you want. You will not weasel out of your trip to Dr. Eason's. Of course. Perish the thought. Okay then, let's get on getting back to Delric. Elric Village was southwest of here, wasn't it? That is correct. We may begin by traveling south until we are able to see the ocean. Got it. I am so sorry, Elbaird. Despite being by your side all this time, I am ashamed that I was oblivious to your condition. Uh, please, Your Highness. There is no need to apologize. It was my decision not to tell you. And furthermore... Hey, I know you're probably both feeling guilty about me, but now isn't the time to beat yourselves up. Ray is right. It was a bit of a surprise, but we should be glad we caught it in time. sure we just keep going west from here, right? Yep, that's right. It's the same route, but it looks totally different when you come at it from the other side. Oh, you seem to be enjoying yourself, Ray. Yeah, wouldn't be an adventure without a little fun, am I right? What you are is a heedless dimwit. Just <laughs>
Is something the matter, Nina? You look somewhat dispirited. Oh, um... I guess I'm just worried Dr. Eason will be mad at me. You're doing this. Okay, first we hand over the drugs to Dr. Eason. That rowdy girl who dropped this ring in Rythel is supposedly a merchant or something in Delric, right? You know, now that I think of it, there was that place with the weird sign in town. Why do those insects ignore everyone else? The infirmary was on the west side of the village, on top of the hill. Let us make haste. Yeah. Nina! Here you go, Doctor. The, uh, medicine you asked for and stuff. Don't hear you go me, Missy. And what in the name of all that's holy are you doing here? Maester, do not be angry at Nina. She has only brought me here to see you as a patient. Uh, did I hear you right? Dr. Vanell examined me in Rifle. However, he suggested that I get a second opinion from you. These are for you. The referral and my medical records. I'll see what I can do. A prosthetic, huh? This lasted 14 years? Anyone else but Midas, and it would have fallen apart ages ago. But even he couldn't keep it from deteriorating. He created this prosthesis using semiomancy. It was designed to grow with its wearer, as would true flesh. Wait, so not only does it move like a normal arm, it grows like one too? How is that not the invention of the century? If only everyone were as elated as you upon its unveiling, things would have been quite different. Maester Eason. You may put your armor back on. I've seen all that I need to. I appreciate Vanell's referral, but I know little about this arm. Midas, on the other hand. All right, I'll tell you. Midas currently resides in the village of Ada. He's your only hope of fixing Albert's prosthesis. <sighs> Thank you so much. A word of caution, he is a peculiar one. It was he the Council directed their ire toward years ago. Persuading him will be no simple task. Nor will it dissuade us. Thank you again. I know you did not have to tell us. Any hiatromancer in my position would have. Wait, so, so um, does that mean we're leaving right now? Indeed. Time is of the essence, and Maester Felgreed is integral to our mission. We cannot afford to waste a moment. Oh, I, I guess that makes sense. Then, um, uh, how do I say this? Nina. Fret not. 
For I would be honored if you joined us. The more allies I have in this endeavor, the better. You heard the princess. Now see if the doc's cool with it. Uh, uh, okay, I will. So I guess, um, Leticia, I'll be with you in just a sec. <sighs> Dr. Eason, can I ask you something? Of course. What is it? We should give them some privacy. That we should. So, where is this, Ada? To the north of the Larkus region, at the summit of a perilously steep mountain. We should provision ourselves accordingly. As an added benefit, Nina will have the time she needs to settle her affairs. Works for me. Anyone home? Nina's probably done with her talk by now. Shall we return to the infirmary then? How'd it go? Good, he didn't even argue. I just told him I wanted to join the consortium, and he said fine. On one condition, that I don't embarrass the princess. How did you know that he would give his consent? I just know that's how parents are. They don't want their kids to experience the same hardships they did. But at the same time, part of them wants their kids to follow in their footsteps. It's in their blood. And I should know better than most. I followed in my father's. Obviously, the Maesters were pretty pissed at the royal family. Which probably accounts for at least one reason why your old man never mentioned anything about his past. Anyway, he still left you that mountain of research regardless. Just in case you ever decided to become an Iatromancer like him. Plus, Dr. Eason made you his apprentice. What I'm trying to say is, both of them are more than happy to support you in your decision. You think? <laughs> I guess they would have. Well, if it took us a trip to Rythel to convince the Doc, who knows what it'll take to convince Midas. So let's get going. Yeah. I'm off, Dad. See you around. Time to set out for Ada. To reach the village of Ada, we must traverse the Larkus Weald. So our first step is to travel towards the Larkus region. Threat detected ahead. <laughs> Oh, 
So we gotta go north from here. Yes, that is correct. You are really starting to be able to navigate our lands, Ray. Yeah, I think I'm starting to get the lay of the land. Threat <laughs> Enemies, dead ahead. Any position out there. Warning, energy level points low. of Ada lies beyond the Larkus Weald. Let us continue north from here. Your Highness, I beg your pardon. You have yet to pass through the Dalai Field and the Adali region proper. Are we not in need of respite at the Set Village? I'm fine. Are you in need of rest, Albert? Uh, I am... Uh, nay, I am quite all right. Should I require a brief rest? I shall suggest we do so. All right, but yeah, let us know any time if you need a break. Energy levels low. 
Much better I do. I shan't hold the others back. There is no better teacher than experience. Continuing on our current northbound course should lead us into the region of Adali. So you're saying we're almost there? Nay, I'm afraid this is nearly the beginning. We must conserve our strength, as the terrain will only become more arduous. Hmm, mountains. Ugh. Been a while since I climbed anything. Here's open it's not too steep. Sweet! Threat detected ahead.
Continuing north from here shall see us arriving in the Adali region. The northwest side is where those ruins were. I've never been to this side, though. This area is near where we first met Ray. Somehow it feels somewhat nostalgic already. Oh, so it was around here. Oh, you weren't kidding when you said perilous. One wrong step could indeed spell your doom. Nothing to stop you from plummeting to the bottom, so keep your way. <laughs> Should we just follow this path? Indeed. I believe the village of Ada lies to the east. Well then, I guess that's where we're headed. Let us proceed. I say we make camp here for the night. Man, we're still a long ways from Ada, aren't we? The climb too much for you? Hey, I'm not the one who collapsed in front of an infirmary. You sure you're up for this? I had plenty of time to convalesce. I can survive a leisurely hike through nature. Let's just hope you're right. It's freezing up here. I must say, I'm surprised you haven't asked about it. Oh, please. Everyone's got something they don't want to talk about. Besides, you seem like the kind of guy who'd get mad if someone asked him what he had for dinner. No way am I going to ask about such a touchy subject. Just what do you think I am? A uh, cranky killjoy? What did you... Shh, shh, not so loud. You're going to wake the others. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Raymond here. Who's this? It's Elena. How are you holding up down there? Elena? Oh, I knew it! I knew you were alive! Where are you now? Just outside the gravitational field of the planet you're on. Unfortunately, my pod sustained damage upon ejection, rendering the attitude control inoperable. I couldn't reset the system either. I've been controlling the craft manually. Hey, I trust you more than any autopilot system. More importantly though, send me your landing coordinates. This is an underdeveloped planet. I have no clue how long it'll take me to reach you, but I'll do everything I can to get there ASAP. Thank you, Ray. See you soon. Over and out. This is great news! So, she's 27 hours out, but where else she... <laughs> awesome! We're headed that way already. You're next, Chloe. I'm not leaving you behind. We're all going back to Vergold together. I think we can all agree we'd like to reach Ada by sundown, so the sooner we depart, the better. Finish line I see there? Whoa, whoa, holy crap. We have climbed seriously high up. The village of Ada is just beyond that bridge. Let us keep moving. What's up with this gate? Thought this was supposed to be a quiet mountain village, not a military stronghold. Um, does anyone else see that thing moving? That 
thing bears quite a resemblance to a cannon and is trained on us. Out of its way! We shall fail! You going to sleep mode? You're supposed to warn us about this stuff! This is a large skill by the never told me we'd have to lay siege to a castle. I do not take the destruction of my defenses lightly. Now state your purpose here. Having pillaged the capital, does the Empire now sick its hounds on the western frontier? How dare you think us Imperial dogs! Still your tongue, Albert. Huh? Forgive our trespass. We bear neither you nor this town ill will, Maester Felgreed. That's Midas? It is not without reason that we have appeared before you. Please, grant us audience. You may have grown, Leticia, but tell me, will you still throw a tantrum if I said no? I beg of you, Maester. We have a patient who Dr. Eason says only you are able to cure. A patient of Marcus's? <laughs> Very well. Open the gate. 
I care not how gifted and talented that man is. He has no right to disparage one of royal blood. His words may have been meant to wound, but he let slip that he still recognized me. I consider that a victory. And now the real battle awaits. Come. Come this way and be quick about it. You're much too wet What's the deal with the gate, man? Back. It's far more than that, as I'm sure you've now come to read. It's a security system designed to rebuff highwaymen and their ill. You sure you need it? Well, it seems safe enough to me. For now, yes, but it's only a matter of time until Osiris falls, and then even your most loyal knights will turn to outlawry. Maester, you do not mean that. Oh, but I do. I assume it's already begun, in fact. Why else would royal be back in the hinterlands if not to beg for help? Anyone home? Hello there. Anyone home? Welcome to our the machinery, maybe. Have a good day. Take a look about the village if you're interested in machinery. Love this place.
we're here. You two, wait outside. Uh, Maester. This isn't a show. They will only get in the way. Or are you so unmanned by a doctor, you need your mistress to hold your hand? Ah, uh, hate to interrupt, but I happen to be a semiomancer too. See? You won't even notice me. Promise. I just want to watch. Whatever tech you used for that arm could help a lot more people, you know? Fine, but not a word from you. You, Filberto's girl. You know your herbs? Uncle Midas, my name's Nina. Nina! Well, Nina, let's see whether or not you can follow orders. Bring me two sprigs of lavender and Artemis leaf each. Dried, not fresh. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I'm on it. And you? Raymond. Raymond, you're free to watch. But better keep that orb of yours in line. I'll do my best. You catch that, Duma? Be on your best behavior for the dock. What a rum thing. Now... So you collapsed in rifle? Experiencing any other symptoms? Keep this to yourself. For about a month's time, I've not been feeling quite myself. It was around then that I noticed a peculiar darkening of the skin at my shoulder. Hmm. Half a year. Then you will lose all function of your arm. What? I can craft a new prosthetic for you, but it will be of inferior make. Its performance will suffer as well. You have no choice but to change your lifestyle greatly, lad. And there's nothing to be done? There was, 14 years ago. Then, Maester, I have a favor I must ask of you. Unless it concerns your arm, you waste your breath. I have no patience for royalty or their dogs. <laughs> 14 years ago, huh? Well, what news? I have failed. My pleas for appeals fell on deaf ears. Uh, what do I care about that? I speak of your arm. Will it heal? Uh, oh, uh, right. Of course. He tells me I will lose all use of it within the year. But surely he can craft for you a new one, right? He may once have been able to, yes, but that was 14 years ago. <sighs> Highness! Maester Felgreed! I throw myself upon your mercy. I beg you, create a new prosthesis. You know my answer. I beseech you! Do me this one kindness, and I swear by all my forefathers that you shall never again have to see another of my line. Is that truly why you ventured into this backwater? To give your retainer a health check? I confess that was not my aim at first, but now... Now I am here for no other purpose than to see my dearest friend well at last. I entreat you, Maester. Help him. <sighs> the materials I'd need were lost to your kingdom 14 years ago. Nothing short of time travel can see that prosthetic of his made new. This cannot be. This is the best I can offer him now. I was warned that the arm might last into adulthood, so I prepared this just in case. With some adjustments, it should provide you with more than enough mobility to lead an ordinary life. But not one of knighthood. Still, that's a fancy piece of gadgetry. How's it powered? For no semiomancer, you're quite perceptive. Busted. It's plain to see there's no semiomantic connection between you and your orb, and yet still it heeds your command. 
I confess I've never seen anything like it. How does it work? That's the million fall question, isn't it? Sure would be great if you could help us answer it, though. You think I'll be cozened by such tricks? Come on, man. If this kingdom goes down, it's taking you with it. If Asarius' fate rests entirely on my shoulders, then they deserve what's coming. Uh, Maester! End of discussion. However, I have a responsibility to see to your arm, one I won't neglect. Anything beyond that is none of my concern. As you wish. No, Highness. I have witnessed firsthand how much this village has come to rely upon you. I cannot in good conscience deprive these people of your services. I ask only that you provide Albert with the care he so rightly deserves. Wow. Distress signal received. Distress signal received. Huh? Confirmed. Edith affiliated. Escape craft. Entering current orbit. Analyzing call signal. Executive officer, Elena, on board. Already? But how? Something's wrong. Who speaks? And what's that map? Not now. Elena? Elena, come in! Ray, my escape craft has just entered Aster 4's gravitational field. But the attitude control systems can't be operated manually. Deceleration is impossible. Here are my projected landing coordinates. Got it. See you soon. And stay safe, okay? I will certainly try. Over. Um, what the heck was that? Sorry, guys, but something came up. Gonna need to leave you for a bit. Over my dead body. This is serious. I'm aware. So why then think to go off alone? Ugh. Maester Felgreed, I'm afraid we must leave you for now. Albert and I have sworn to assist Ray in locating his companions. Where he goes, so must we. However, upon our return, I would ask that you tend to Albert's arm. Ray, let's hurry. Thanks. Coming in too hot. I'm sorry. She has landed in treacherous terrain. She is beyond our help. If she survived at all. Yeah, damn it! Come. Maester? You mean to get to that meteorite? Then follow me. Thanks, man. I owe you. You are good to help us, Maester. Thank you. I do this for my village, not for you. Uh-huh. Keep telling yourself that.
which I've improved. I've improved. Let's see just how much I've improved. Nothing can hinder my progress now. Nothing can hinder my progress now. Let's see just how much I've improved. Nothing can hinder my progress now. 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 Let's see just how much I've improved. Enjoy your respite. We'll be taking that. Pathetic. The meteorite likely fell near the Galka Shrine. It's not very far from the village. Come, this way. Set. Let's hurry over to Elena. We can leave through the western gate. Follow the side road until you reach the shrine. Be quick about it. Positional tactics in place. Structure in the center is the Galka Shrine. Let's see what awaits us inside. Back to the wall.
Elena could be in trouble. Let's go check out that shrine. Elena! Son of a... Elena! Need some assistance? Albert, take the other side. We three ought to suffice. Ready. <sighs> Status. Right leg and left arm has sustained heavy damage. Lateral circuitry offline in both right hand and left leg. Symbol drive is non-functional at the moment. Current power is being supplied from reserve energy source. In maintenance mode, I have, at most, 56 hours remaining. Advanced processing functions are also limited, preventing movement. Right. How can I help? Due to depleted energy levels, I will be unable to perform repairs myself. Furthermore, I can no longer salvage the parts I need from this damaged craft. Crap. So what are we supposed to do? Take me offline and destroy me. It is imperative that we prevent our technology from falling into the hands of anyone here. Are you crazy? What kind of captain would I be if I told my crew to start offing themselves? There's another way out of this. I know it. Of course. The equipment this life form requires to reconstruct itself can most likely be recovered from your downed escape pod. Well, you certainly pick very convenient times to start talking. I speak only when necessary, such as my programming. And thank you for deciding to pipe up now because you're absolutely right. My escape pods barely sustained any damage. Think that'd work for you, Elena? I don't see why not. So long as you can collect enough of what I need. I should be able to restore my motor control systems to previous output levels. Here. This should be everything. Thanks. You go into maintenance mode. Save your energy best you can. Just keep a comm channel open for me, got it? Understood. Ray, I take this to mean we are returning to the site of your ship? You mind? It's kind of out of the way. It may be, but we do not mind. We agreed to assist you in the search for your crew, and we intend to honor that agreement. Uh, wait. Don't know about you guys, but personally, I am super confused. I won't ask you to explain now, but you will tell us what's going on eventually, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. You said there was another meteorite not unlike this one, did you not? Huh? Yeah? Why? I should like to see it. Therefore, I shall be joining you. Oh, so now you're interested in what we're up to. How quickly we change our minds. What did you say? Oops. Guess this isn't the way out of the Adali region.
engagement. Ray, hold a moment. By the looks of it, someone has stolen the march on us. Friends of yours? Not sure. I don't think so. <clears throat> Who's there? Well, that certainly answers my question. Move it or lose it, jerks! We don't have time for this! Threat neutralized. So cool. Insufficient output. Warning. Energy levels low. Destroyed. Insufficient output neutralized. Retreat! Something fishy's going on. How were they able to control the pod like that? Come to think of it, how'd they even figure out it was here in the first place? Rather than contemplate unanswerable questions, I would advise that you focus instead on the expedient retrieval of the components the android requires. Hey, Elena. Can you hear me? Yes. We found the pod. Just tell us what you need and we'll get to cutting. Understood. First, remove the pilot seat. Behind it, you should find a panel. Open it. We get to dismantle it. Excellent. Glad someone's excited. I have never seen this level of craftsmanship. What tools could produce anything with such impressive detail? Uncle Midas, work now, ask later. Next, I will need you to obtain the parts necessary to replace my Symbo Drive unit. This will require the removal of the pod's generator. When it's removed, you will be unable to make any more long-range subspace communications. Roger that. Let me call my brother real quick then. 
See if I can't get him to hurry it up a little. Computer, get me Antonio Lawrence. Unable to establish connection. What? Fine, then try my dad. Get me Raul Lawrence. Unable to establish connection. Long range subspace communication may be unable to reach the Virgold system at this time. What the hell? Ray, listen. So long as you're stranded here, you can't afford to lose your lines of communication. My recovery will have to wait. Sorry, but my captain's intuition is telling me otherwise. We're getting you patched up, whether you like it or not. But... My brother's already on his way, plus Chloe's still out there. And how am I supposed to save her without you, huh? You gotta trust me on this one, okay? Everything will be fine. Understood. Using the parts you salvaged, you'll need to begin by repairing my circuitry, followed by both my arm and hand. At which point I should be recovered enough to repair the remainder of my body myself. Estimated time until completion, 72 hours. Uh, okay? That's about the time I expected it would take. Leticia, I know this kind of derails things. Would you cool to wait around? Of course. But Albert and I shall make the most of it. There is little doubt that many in the region witnessed the descent of Elena's craft. We will find out what they make of it. And we may discover the identity of those we caught snooping about your ship. I don't know. It is not without its dangers, I grant you. But if there are more of those men out there, it may affect Elena's chances at recovery. That's true, but it's a lot to ask. Where friends are concerned, it is a trifle. Count me in too! You guys will need a healer on hand in case Albert's arm starts acting up again, right? Your company would be a boon indeed. If my suspicions are correct and those men are with the Empire, then we will need all the help we can get. We will return to the shrine three days hence. Elena should be on her feet by then. Okay. Need to hurry back to Elena. Time isn't on our side here. Energy levels Back to the wall. Let's do it. Neutralized. Brace for a fight. Destroy.
Hey, you awake? Midas and I are here and ready to help. Just tell us where to start. I doubt I'll be much help, but I am at your service. Thank you. I suggest we begin by restoring the Simbo Drive. With that online, I'll be able to maintain power without relying on my limited battery supply. A portion of the main circuit has been damaged. Could you see that it's replaced with the part salvaged from your escape pod? On it. For your safety, I'll be shutting down. Bring me back online once you've finished. What? Did she just die? Uh, think of it more like a deep sleep. Alright, let's get to work. Hey, a little help with that? Oh, uh, right. Hopefully that did the trick. Let's bring her back. Good to see you again, Ray. Midas. The repairs you made were a success. Re-establishing Simbo Drive circuitry. Diverting power. Next, I must ask you to restore the use of my arms. But that should be the last step for you both. Once you're finished, I'll be able to repair myself without too much trouble. We're almost out of the woods now. Well now, you heard the lady. Come on, lad. Let's get to it. Just give me a sec. Today's been a lot. This is delicate work, Ray. Try to stay focused. Let's save what remains for tomorrow. You've been working without rest for a while now, and I'm worried that it's beginning to affect your efficiency. I thought we were in a hurry. Even the most skilled engineers need a solid rest every now and then. A point well made. My stomach incurs as well. I'm not sure what we would have done without your help. Spare me. We both know I'm only getting in the way. Though I did learn that you people truly aren't of this world. Since we're laying our cards on the table, what happened between you and the Crown? Their purblind highborns decided our work did not merit continuing. The Royals, fools that they are, took their side. And now you've got it out for Leticia? It's not the girl I dislike, but what she represents. To aid her is to aid the kingdom. So keep your nose out of Yikes, sorry, just asking. Warning. Hostile entity detected. What are you doing with that thing? Got a problem with my friend, huh? Any friend of it is an enemy of mine. And I won't let either of you consume another world. And I, I got suggest it. you leave well in Not until I crown you You think your tricks will deter me? Right, that's neutralized. Let you wrap it in this world, too. 
the hell are you even talking about, man? I cannot fall here. I'm not here. I'm trying! Progress detected. My limit. You're far more powerful than I had assumed. I was ill-prepared. You may have won today's bout, but know this. So long as you dare to remain here, you will have to contend with me. Get back here! Let him go. It's too dangerous. Elena's repairs also have yet to be finished. <sighs> What's going on? Who was that? Another time, lad. Now we must finish the girl's repairs, and fast. Ray, we have returned with ill tidings. Huh? Are you okay? You look terrible. Blame the weirdo who tried to bust in and destroy Elena before her repairs were done. What? With some giant purple-skinned asshole. Who the hell are the people on this rock with horns growing out of their heads? <gasps> you guys ran into one too! I would hardly call our foe a giant, but he most certainly had the skin and horn you describe. I think our days of taking it slow and steady are behind us. Perhaps, but for now you should sleep. You may not have another chance for a while. And you look ready to keel over. We shall stand watch for you. We are more than capable. Please, rest while you can. Yeah, that might be a good idea, actually. All right. You guys mind waking Midas up before I... Before I... <laughs> good night, Ray. Ray? Ray? It's time to get up. You're awake, finally. Morning to you too. How are you feeling? Self repairs are ongoing, but I'm at least able to operate at 70% capacity. I can move just fine now. Ah, oh, I slept through your first steps. Some captain I am. Midas was there for me, in your stead. Oh yeah? Thanks, man. Nonsense. Any doctor or inventor would do the same. Now that I've recovered, I can assist you. So, Captain, status report. Now, Chloe's down here. Likely on the other side of the kingdom. We're gonna find her. Leticia and the others have promised to help us out, thankfully. Thing is, I kinda had to promise them something in return. That I'd help cajole Midas into returning with them to the capital. Your efforts on that front will be in vain. Midas. Should my system see a marked drop in performance, for some reason or another, it would be helpful to have someone familiar with my schematics besides Ray nearby. That way, any problems that arise could be quickly dealt with. And if I say no? Then we would bid you farewell, and that would be that. Were I to require help on my journey, I would seek out a local semiomancer or engineer. <sighs> Enough, I'm coming. I've Albert's arm to consider, after all. <sighs> you will? But I'm only accompanying you lot for purely semiomantic reasons. I reserve the right to leave whensoever I wish. Appreciate it. Now, as for Chloe, any idea on how to begin our search? We have heard from reliable sources that Rythel's ports are meant to reopen in due course. And the quickest way to the easterly lands is by ship through the channel. Sounds like a plan. Come on, we got a boat with our name on it. Watch Take and a learn. break. Is the town of Rythel far from our current location? Yes, we must be Rythel is located in Delphia, the only one in the Larkus. We must have to the Garden Vision and the Larkus Vision.
Enemy. Get cocky. Prepare yourself, Vision. Out. Over here. Infinity. Yeah. I've weakened the target. Target acquired. First, we must go through the Adali region to the west. Position we are to run. Initiate emergency protocol. Prepare yourself. Warning. Neutralized. Prepare yourself. It's nowhere to run. Warning. Energy level low. It should be destroyed. Insufficient output. Don't be neutralized. By the way, didn't you guys get attacked by some weirdo the last time you passed through here? We did. Can't help but wonder, does he have something to do with the people who downed me and Chloe's pods? It's still too early to tell. Midas, can we be certain that no race of people resembling that man exists on this planet? No, not 100%. They could very well be natives of some part of the world. You know that? The continent that lies to the south of Osirius. Various and sundry races inhabit that realm, so it is not out of the question that one of them remains undiscovered. Now that you mention it, since Elena's pod flew over Nilbeth on the way in, maybe someone there saw it and decided to follow her to this continent. To that point, Nilbeth possesses technology and semi immunity that neither Osirius nor the Perhaps it's the old I think we're in luck. You know what they say. When ships come to dock, birds arrive by the flock. This must mean the fairies are up and running again. Like, just look at all those birds! I doubt a mere fleet of ships brought this many birds here. Ugh, oh, filthy pests! Maester, are you alright? Ugh, I'm fine. But nothing good would come from fraternizing with you royals. I think it's the other way around. It's karma for you being such a sourpuss. What was that? You gross! Get away from me! Hmm? What's up, Elena? Is something wrong? No. Ugh, the stench.
Am I crazy, or has the number of people on the streets taken a huge dive? It certainly has. There seem to be even fewer people than when we were last here. But why? Sorry to spring this on you all, but can we hit up Dr. Vanell's for a second? Got a really bad feeling about this. got some new items in stock. Why not have a look? Hey, I appreciate Many thanks. Thank you. Many thanks. You are, Nina. I'd love to know the same. It's been this way since the first fairy arrived from the east. Everyone, do not be alarmed, but I believe we should vacate the area as soon as possible. Why? This village might be experiencing an outbreak. If any of you, especially Ray, got infected, it could be fatal. Wait! But... but can't we...? Doctor, isn't there something you can do about this? Some medicine or semiomancy you can use. Uh, we have symbols to reduce fever and cough, but those merely treat the symptoms. They are not a cure for the malady. Let me get this straight. Ships brought this disease with them, right? Meaning it originated somewhere in the east. Thus, worst case scenario, the whole eastern half of the kingdom could become infected too. Therefore, if we just leave this disease to spread, it would still pose an immense risk to you and Chloe, at the very least. Understood. Just to be safe, however, everyone besides Nina should move as far away from this infirmary as possible. I also strongly encourage the use of face masks. Cloth will suffice if none are available. Gotcha. Dr. Vernell, Elena will provide help. Just fill her in on the details. Pardon me, uh, are you a doctor? No, but I have the skills and knowledge comparable to one. Also, it's impossible for me to become infected. I can safely examine the most ill of patients. This is ground zero, Ray. Take the others far away from here. Let's just hole up here for the day. I don't want to incur Elena's wrath. I'm curious as to what form that would take. I'm sure it would make for quite the spectacle. You're a braver man than I. At any rate, I must go. Some of us have to wash speculants from their raiment. All right, then. In the meantime, we should sit tight until we hear word from Nina and Elena. Can such flimsy cloth truly prevent us from contracting the illness? Not really, but it's still better than nothing. 
Plus, you're not just wearing one for your own health. If you ever get sick, it'll keep you from infecting other people. To some extent. I, I don't understand. How does the act of covering one's mouth and nose prevent the spread of disease? Oh, right. You're not really up on bacteria and viruses, are you? Would really like to ask Midas just how much people here know about that kind of thing, but... Where is he? Still getting his beauty sleep? Anyone home? Hey, Midas. The hell are you still in bed for? Time to get up and face the day. Ray, please. Not a step further. Huh? Contact Elena this instant. He could be in danger. Uh, okay. You got it. Elena, you busy right now? Looks like there's something wrong with Midas. His temperature is more than high enough to constitute a fever. Will he be alright? Still too early to say. We must rush to collect some samples, however. Those birds' feces. Ugh, why do we need that? Simple. Because it serves as a breeding ground for a specific type of bacteria. That bacteria causes Helgar's disease, or colloquially, the rot. The scourge ravaging this village is Helgar's disease? And Maester Felgreed? Leticia, remain calm. It may be a fatal disease for the people of this planet, but it can be eliminated. Is that really possible? Yes. I read through all the research in Nina's possession. Using that, we should be able to create an antibiotic. We cannot, however, fashion it out of thin air. I'll need multiple samples of the microbe. As it resides in birds' fecal matter, that's what we'll collect. Aren't you overlooking something? Rifle is a veritable aviary at this point. With this many birds here, isn't it already too late to save the town? At first glance, but there aren't many people infected. Why is unclear, but the samples will help elucidate that. Don't worry, I will do the actual collection. So where do we find these samples? The port? No, in the many roosts that have sprung up all over town. By observing their flight patterns, I discovered something. Each bird belongs to a distinct social group. If we investigate the nests of these groups, it should yield invaluable information. We've not a moment to lose. Taking over. collecting the sample. Let's proceed to the next roost. You rang?
finished collecting the sample. Let's proceed to the next roost. Leticia, Albert, is it just me or have we seen that somewhere before? No, we have. It's identical to what we saw in the mines. They possess morphological abnormalities. You said you've seen this species before? Yes, in the Delric mines. Right now, Midas' health is our top priority. The villagers can deal with this avian infestation themselves after we've found a cure. Indeed. believe we did, Nina. I must give you credit. Selecting the perfect herb from all of our options was no easy task. <laughs> well, after all, it is my specialty. You have a keen eye. I forgot I even had it stocked. What exactly is that circle? Do you see the white part of this plate? It's filled with bacteria, organisms that are so small they cannot be seen with the naked eye. It's these invisible organisms that have made your villagers fall ill. As for this circle, it's called a zone of inhibition. It forms around the site where you place your prospective antidote. The larger it is, the more effective your drug is at killing the bacteria. Meaning... If we give this drug to people, they won't be afflicted by the disease anymore? Not entirely correct. An antibiotic merely eliminates the cause of the disease. Whether or not the patient is able to recover depends on other factors. Regardless, it will still rid the world of Helgars, right? <laughs> That's quite the medicine. What's more, you don't even need iatromancy to create it. <laughs> uh, Elena? Ray, a moment, if you will. What did you want to talk about? Though we only used currently available methods to create it, simply by creating this antibiotic, we'll be exerting our influence over the planet's scientific progress, accelerating it considerably. Are you sure you want to do that? We've already come this far. Why are you talking like a Fed now? Because if these people don't know how to properly use the antibiotic, it could give birth to a more resilient strain. The civilizations on this planet have yet to industrialize. They're incapable of manufacturing other drugs to combat variants. They have no means of dealing with allergic reactions to the drug. To be blunt, these people's understanding of bacteriology is almost non-existent. Handing them a medication that could theoretically create more problems than it solves is risky at best and catastrophic at worst. 
So we should let him die? Ultimately, that is for you to decide. Then I choose what'll save the most people right now. Sure, it's possible I could be choosing wrong, but that's for the gods and history books to decide. All us mortals can do is think. Think how we can safely help these people. Think how to avoid your doomsday scenario. Understood. Morning, Uncle Midas. You feeling any better? Well enough, but I'm much too old to go through all that again. You should count your lucky stars since your quick recovery is pretty miraculous. I heard. It seems I was struck with the rot. I owe you two. It's all thanks to Nina. Her many years of diligent research are what paved the way for this discovery. Without her research, it would have been almost impossible to find the plant that contained the appropriate compound. Filberto would be pleased to hear that. <sighs> Thanks. Well, now that Midas is back to form, I say we're eastward bound. Uh, about that. I hate to put a damper on things, but after the disaster with the first one, they've stopped running the ferries again. Please tell me you're joking. At this rate, we're never going to be able to search for Chloe. If you've the stamina, I knew a way to Kato, and maybe her. Hmm? The trail leads from where we repaired Elena, and over the peak of Galcalemthus. A trail? There? It fell out of use over a century ago, so I'd be more surprised if you did know of it. Once we're over, we'll make for Mount Cotterinth. The herbs for your medicine can be found there. And I imagine the Kato Seaport will need said cure if we hope to see their ferry services return in a timely manner, yes? Then you will assist us. Thank you, Maester Felgreed. Stop. I'm only accompanying you because of Albert and Elena. And, I suppose, for the sake of Ada itself, it's not uncommon for the residents to visit flatland settlements. We should have the cure on hand in case one succumbs to the rot. Excuses, excuses. Silence, whelp. Now, unless anyone wants to experience what I did, I say we get moving. The start of a beautiful friendship. He's just not good at expressing himself, but he'll come around. I'm sure you and Albert can both sympathize with his plight. Huh? The hell's that mean? I think I might have an idea. Follow my lead. Taking over. Enjoy your respite. here that leads to the hallowed mount there is we head to the shore switching to attack <laughs> i've weakened the target prepare yourself for the top another day that seemed effective Well, 
Sure is imposing enough to be hallowed. Hence the shrine erected at its base. Compared to this, your climb to Ada was a morning constitutional. Noted. But if Osarians could scale this mountain a century ago, I see no reason why we can't. Might I remind you, Midas, you're still convalescing. And I heard Albert also fell ill at one point. Please exercise caution. Pardon me, but might it behoove us to pray for our safe passage? Not if you're in as much of a hurry as you say. If it's not too much trouble, I'd like to pray as well. Why? My pod crash landed in this shrine's sanctuary, leaving it in utter ruin. If a tutelar does preside over this mountain, I should apologize to it for my transgression. Isn't that right, Ray? As you wish. Losing one's footing here is likely certain death. Please, tread carefully so as not to slip and fall. Feel depleted. Clear the run. Correct. Do not warn me. And the bell levels low. Taking over. Leave it to me. You rat. Shall see to this. Leave it to me. Leave it to me. The position has been sufficient. Strike while the enemy is vulnerable. One. Energy levels low. Destroy. In 
Minutes of victory. See that? Eliminated. Taking over. Acquired something of note. Hostile. Suggest we make camp soon. Me? Insufficient opposition to damage. Automaton sleeps. She does, but why do you ask? I doubt you understand. This is clearly beyond your kin. After all I have seen, little would vex me about Rey or Elena. But you saw what should be her muscles and bones. Those were no human innards. I assumed it was similar to how we encountered the man with the horned pate. A new race, one with a drastically different anatomy. I see. In actuality, what is Elena? She's what we call an android. A highly advanced mechanical doll modeled after a human. Pardon me, I find that hard to fathom. Leticia, the operative phrase here is highly advanced. Remember my Lagomower in Ada? I do. Would that think to pray to a god? Hmm... Well, no. Neither would Elena. 
And yet she was able to sense the anxiety in your facial expression. Make a moral appeal to Raymond and coax us in what she calculated would be the right direction. That is a feat even some of us humans cannot perform. Raymond, I must ask. Though she may be a doll, there must be something special about her, no? If you want to know if she's special to me, then yes. But if you mean in general, no. Where I'm from, you bump into androids everywhere. Preposterous, but also enticing. All right, I've made up my mind. Hmm? I do not believe we have discussed my payment for repairing Elena. As compensation, you will take me back to your homeland with you. Just so you know, that's not really for me to decide, but I'll put in a good word for you. I am not asking. Yeah, yeah, I heard you. Don't worry, I'll do all I can. What wonders abound there? Leticia? Huh? Uh, please, pay me no mind. Then the matter is settled. Now, may we endeavor to complete these fool's errands? And may a certain royal retainer come to terms with his fate? <sighs> I am certain he shall. Just about. Now we descend to the south. Threat neutralized. Oh, <laughs> 
Wait! Positional tactic insufficient. Like a hot knife One. Energy Four. levels to low. infinity. Insufficient. <laughs> Should be descending the hallowed mount soon. Enemies up ahead! something of note. Acquired something of note. Target acquired. Alright. How do we assume this far? Let us continue to
Acquired something of note. I do. Can't wait to see how much better I do.
see I still have room for improvement. Reporting newly identified prowess. much farther, right? Correct. If we carry on east along the sea, we will eventually reach Kato. Presume. Indeed. It has grown into a lively town with a port for the Royal Navy. Finally, we can stop walking. Hey, is that... Looks like people from town are headed this way. Any clue who they are? Kato City Guard, I presume. Would you kindly fall back, your highness? Halt! Who goes there? And what business have you on this side of Mount Cotterinth? We mean no harm. We are but travelers wishing to return to the capital. Cotto has closed its gates to all outsiders. I strongly suggest you return from whence you came. Now be gone. What? But we just finished our descent. You can't send us right back. Be silent. Either return to the west, or return with us as prisoners. Lest you wish to rot in a cell, I suggest you leave now! Save your breath. The knights of this realm hear naught but the sound of their own voices. What was that? You didn't hear? I said the only weapon these pompous blowhards can wield is hot air. What, what do you think you're doing? Bastard! One does not impugn the city guard without consequence! Impudent knaves! You'll regret this! Guys, they're calling for backup. <sighs> Have we no recourse but to reveal that we're with the crown? Before that, Albert, do you not recognize that armor? I must admit, I never expected to see your face this far west. Uh, Theo! Commander? Well met, Sir Albert Bergholm. Stretching our legs with a jaunt over Galcolemthus, are we? Bergholm? The one from the King's Guard? Yes, the very same. Therefore, I believe an apology is in order. Please, forgive us! Water under the bridge. I must also apologize for my colleagues' uncouth behavior. <laughs> I merely showed them all the respect their station commands. As ill-humored and sharp-tongued as always, Mr. Feldry. <laughs> it's a wonder you deign to join hands with anyone at all. But enough small talk. Follow me. My compatriots did speak the truth about Cotter, you know. Please don't go about repeating this to anyone. The rot is taking root here. Do you know the cause of the outbreak in Cotto? A blackguard who is purposefully spreading the disease. Hence why these forces have been mobilized. Purposefully spreading? Correct. Just so happens that as the first townspeople fell ill, 
rumors of a young woman clad in strange garb began to circulate. Time for us to explore at our leave. Now, if you would all accompany me to my office. Now then, you two. Mind introducing yourselves? I believe I'm long overdue an introduction. Well, aren't you self-important? As I've explained before, we are in pursuit of a woman in peculiar garb. And to my eye, it would seem you bear some connection to her. Oh, and what if I did? Then I would take you in for questioning. I should have already done so the moment I laid eyes on you. You are too suspicious by half to keep the company of one such as her. Enough of this, cousin! Cousin? You overstep your bounds. You will treat these two with utmost civility. Someone feels strongly. Do you, Alby? Alby? In truth, we would not have made it nearly this far without their assistance. And can we leave that nickname in the past where it belongs? <laughs> Did not expect that. Even if you say they are to be trusted, who am I to believe otherwise? Hmm, I suppose a maester wouldn't tag along with just anyone. Speaking of your party, am I correct in assuming you're Maester de Forge's daughter? Whoa, you know who I am? I happen to be a member of the Kingsguard when His Majesty visited Delric for your father's funeral. Oh... Sorry to be blunt, but who are you exactly? I get that you know Albert and Leticia, but they've never mentioned you before. I am Theo Clemrath. Son of Duke Lambert Clemrath, brother to His Majesty the King, cousin to Princess Leticia. Clemrath? Wait, Theo, as in Commander Theo of the Assyrian Naval Forces? Uh, I'm so sorry! There's no need to be, I assure you. Any friend of Albi and Letty's is a friend of mine. However, I can't be friends with those whose names I don't yet know. So, would you care to rectify the situation? I am Raymond Lawrence. And I'm Elena. Well then, Ray, Elena. I think it's high time we got to talking. I'm sure there's much to discuss. If it weren't for Letty, I think you'd lost your minds. I know it's crazy, but that woman you're after could be one of my crewmates. And if it is, there's no way she's the source of the rot. 
though I'm inclined to believe you, our political situation with the Empire complicates matters. Residents of Baldar Citadel are evacuating in droves, seeking safe harbor in the capital and Kado. Many suspect that a number of Imperial spies have used this exodus to slip unseen into our lands. The People's Guard is up. Anything outside the norm is viewed askance. So the Commons have seen this woman, then? Eyewitness reports claim she was spotted near the tides. Soon after the encounter, the rot took hold here, to which many and more succumbed. As much as I would like to investigate further, I can't risk it. The mountains are far too dangerous. Is there truly not to be done? Yes, as it stands. We are severely shorthanded. You saw how I was the only one who responded to your commotion with the guards. Well, if you require helping hands... Then you're in luck! Cause you've come to the right people! We'll investigate for you. Of course. Theo... Nina and Elena have made the discovery of the century. They have found a cure for Helgar. What? Uh, and it just so happens the herbs we need can be found on that mountain. Commander, I know the place is dangerous, but could you allow us access to the Tynes? Please, cousin. How can I say no? It's not every day Letty thinks to use the word please with me. I would like to offer you something in return, though. Perhaps I can make some headway in the search for your comrade. So, what should I know about her? Well, her name's Chloe Cameras, and she'll probably be dressed like us. What sorcery is this? She's a jumpy one, so no wanted posters or anything like that, got it? As you wish. Likewise, refrain from pulling that trick again. Townspeople are on edge enough as it is. Despite her stalwart appearance, Letty is the princess of this kingdom. Keep her out of harm's way, will you? Let's try stopping by the infirmary. Thanks.
Most of the royalty in this kingdom are rather friendly. Commander Theo seems to be well liked by the city folk as well. If we're all set, then let's beat feet to Mount Cotterin. They said it was to the north. I seriously doubt the woman. Mount Cotterinth, hmm? It looms over the northern part of Cotterinth. Have you ever been, Uncle Midas? It is a veritable treasure trove for medicinal herbs. I have been there once or twice to forage for them. Hey there, adventurers. Have you ever seen a soul reaper? I keep seeing them in my dreams. They're scaring me. In my dreams, I see a snowy mountain. And in flood of them come from out of nowhere. Can you beat up the Reaper somehow? Please, help me. You believe me, don't you? Prep for engagement. Don't think they see us yet. Gotcha! Warning, energy levels low. There's a legend about these mountains, you know. Has to do with an enchantress and a prince. I'm listening. Yep. Is that all? You're telling me we're headed right for some type of cursed mountain? It's not really cursed, it's just a story to keep kids away. The mountains here are really dangerous. More dangerous than most. People have come up with all sorts of tall tales about them. Even so, the part about the miasma gives me pause. There may be poisonous flora releasing pollen, or fissures leaking volcanic gases. We should be careful. Okay, guys. The plant we're looking for is called Dill Whip, and... It only grows in dank, dark spaces. Areas that don't get up from Keep 
watch for any signs of that mysterious woman. If I were Dilwhip, this is where I'd want to be. Yo, Nina. Wait for us, okay? Doesn't look like the safest place to wander into alone. I'll be fine. A little darkness won't keep me away from my field work. <laughs> Warning. Mid-size hostile entity detected. Come. Oh, a little help? How? Save it. We got a monster to kill. Target oh. warning. The others run. Threat neutralized. Now, things are getting weird. Why the furrowed brow? Tis only a fiend's den, though it is a rather foul one, I grant you. This nest bears an uncanny resemblance to those we happened upon within the Delric Mines. The similarities seem more than coincidence. And a portion of Rythel's gull population was roosting in nearly identical conditions as well. Seriously? They're all dried up. The nest must have changed the acidity of the soil. I've rendered a map of the area. Let's speak with Theo when we return. Ask his contingent to exterminate the creatures. For now, we should continue our search. footprints, and of the human variety. Give me a moment. I can analyze them. Huh? Only one set. They came alone. The shoe size is similar to that of Leticia's. And considering the distance between each of them, they likely belong to a short female. You think it's Chloe? I can't tell just... <sighs> For the life of me... We are still on the mountain path. They may yet show themselves. You're right. I'm not ready to give up yet.
gonna get eaten here, are we? Warning, warning. Air pollutant concentration reaching abnormal levels. Huh? What now? Everyone, step away from this cave immediately. The air in here is filled with an airborne neurotoxin. It won't have any effect on me, but inhaling even a trace amount will cause instant paralysis. The legends are true. Is this the Enchantress's work? More likely, the fungi growing on that rock face is the source of the toxin. My guess is, they use their spores to incapacitate their prey, then feed off the resulting carcass. Dang. Who needs fiction when reality is this terrifying? The natural world is a far more dangerous place than most would care to admit. Unfortunately, humanity has a tendency to forget that. Well, I sure as hell won't. to attack preparation. Doesn't look like we're getting through here. Is there another path back there we could try? Uh, could be. Let's retrace our steps. Target sighted.
Enemies up ahead. Destroyed. Destroyed. Sweet! Initiate emergency protocols. See that? To infinity! Threat neutralized. Destroy. Peace box. Is the threat Threat neutralized. Acceleration warning. Peace Low. Detecting concentrations of nerve gas in the air. We should avoid passing through here. The beast really won't strike Thank you, Emma. That is not a blunder that we can afford to make. Please proceed behind me from now on.
This cavern is surprisingly deep. Threat detected ahead. Vision and calling people to perform blind fire. Destroy. Threat neutralized. Destroy. Firing. Threat neutralized. Firing. Assault warning. Energy levels low. Insufficient. No threats detected. Sweet! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Enemies up ahead. I heard you. <laughs> Looks like something's moving. Why 
Why are you staring at Duma like that? The, why are you not? They're... Someone has taken a great deal of time and effort to outfit this cave. And to very ill ends, by the look of things. Ill ends indeed. Alright, we're way past weird at this point. They're not making these things, are they? Warning. Firearm detected in immediate vicinity. Get down! Ray! Nina! Maester Felgreed! Find Confirming cover now! Confirming combat superiority. Engaging defense system. Nice one, Duma. Elena, know where they are? Target sighted. Sending coordinates. Duma, keep Leticia safe. I would strongly advise against deploying shields on non-combatants. Your strategic advantage may be compromised. Don't care about your advice. Protect Leticia. No, don't! It's too dangerous! Nowhere. There may be other passages elsewhere. Let's keep searching. Venture a guess and assume she is friends with the others. <sighs> Who the hell are you people? Now you ask. After you shoot us? Nuh-uh. We're the ones asking the questions, so out with it. Who are you people? We know you're not some enchantress. Unbelievable. How desperate are you to follow us all the way out here? The Colonel was right. There's no escaping you, is there? You escape us? You were the ones messing with my escape pod, don't forget. Think I would be easy to abduct? Blame your own misfortune that embroiled you in this. Now perish! Warning. Large hostile entity detected in vicinity. No kidding! If we all work together... Yeah! 
give it to me. Could that monstrosity remain concealed from us? Duma hasn't much in the way of sight. They will not speak a word until the enemy is closing in, I believe. There is a chance, then, that more of those beasts are lying in wait. Oh, I'm sure Theo will love to hear that. Hmm. What of that woman who attacked us, though? Who is she? Clearly another horned assailant. That does seem to be the case. Moreover... Their technology leads me to believe. They're off-worlders. What? Hmm? Hey, where's Nina? Uh -huh. Yes, where has she gone? Oh, hell yeah! Nina? Finally found you, you beautiful plants! Oh, and just look at you! Not a scratch on you! This tract of land is a veritable herb garden. Or an actual garden, even. So here we have a lab growing herbs needed to treat a fatal disease that, up until literally hours ago, had no known cure. How incredibly convenient. It seems your suspicions are correct. Delric, Rythel, and Kato. All of them with the words put to testing. These are orders. Testing? Delric is marked with a bug, Rythel a bird, and Kato, simples. This confirms without a shadow of a doubt what I feared all along. Someone means our kingdom harm. Then could it be? Yes, those horned knaves plot against us, at the Empire's directive. Sweet!
Thank you very much. Please come again. Thanks. See how much better I do. Nothing can hinder my progress now. Let's see just how much I've improved. Let's see just how much I've improved. Nothing can hinder my progress now. Nothing can hinder my progress now. Let's see just how much I've improved. Reporting newly identified prowess. Reporting newly identified prowess. Identified prowess. I see I still have room for improvement. I see I still have room for improvement. I see I still have room for improvement. most disturbing news. I assumed the Empire had its claws in our lands, but to think they had sunk so deep. We witnessed plain as day the sort of tests they mean to deploy. To be frank, a laboratory of that scale is not something one woman can conceal. What's more, her friends have been spotted in all corners of the kingdom. Meaning that someone on our side has allowed these Imperial agents to waltz right over our borders. Fantastic. At this rate, it would seem that even I myself will have to fall to my knees and supplicate Maester Felgreed. Can I ask, what's with Midas? Why is he so pig-headed about this? I get that something went down 14 years ago, but what? Dude's clearly got an axe to grind with you people, but after all we've been through, you'd think he'd have a change of heart by now. Can't imagine what happened if he's still pissed. Yes, well... This conversation is not one I feel comfortable being overheard. We cannot know who might be listening in. Sorry, I hate to interrupt, but do you have a second? Hmm? Oh, yes, of course. What is it? Commander Theo, I know you'll do your best, but I need you to understand just how valuable these symbols are. We found them growing in one spot and one spot only. Please, your men have to be very careful. We have to protect them, or we'll lose the cure forever. 
So many lives will be lost. You needn't worry. Trust me when I say I want to rid our lands of this illness just as much as you do. Those herbs are to be delivered to the Consortium, am I correct? Yes, Letizia promised to get me an audience. My men will see they are kept safe. You have my word. And in return, I assume you will discover a more efficient means by which to save our countrymen? Uh, yes, uh, of course! You can count on me, Commander! Though, Letty, I fear your arrival in the capital may not be well received. Your abrupt return after your equally sudden flight will likely raise eyebrows and wag tongues. To that end, perhaps it's best I accompany you. Back to Ascendros? Yes. Come to think of it, what you've uncovered is far too important to entrust to my men. What's more, my accompanying you will provide me the opportunity to answer Ray's question. Ah, I nearly forgot. Here. It is news from the capital. A woman by the name of Chloe Canaris, was it? Has been found, and is currently being held. Really? And you will never guess who supplied us with this piece of intelligence. Chancellor Neon himself. <gasps> Wait, what? I is that a bad thing, or...? Neon is a Chancellor and a Captain of the Kingsguard, charged with peacekeeping in the realm. At first, your friend was assumed to be a refugee from Baldar. Her curious garb and general confusion about the situation, however, well, it led our men to believe the worst. She was suspected of being a spy. What? You locked her up? I swear, you harm one hair on her head! Calm yourself. She will be released once we explain who she is. However, I will do the talking. The Chancellor may not listen to Albie or Letty. I appreciate it. I know you've got other stuff to deal with. Please think nothing of it. This gesture is a trifle compared to what you've done for us. Now then, when do we depart? Right now. Right now it is. As soon as we've made our preparations, we will shove off. Hmm. I don't see Albert around here. I should look for him. Albert. We should talk to him before we meet up with Theo. Not the look I'd expect from one who's about to reunite with a comrade. And where's your smile? This is what you wanted, isn't it? Returning home with your maester in tow? You seem ready for a funeral. Maester Felgreed's support is but one part of a much larger plan. This will be the first step of many. I feel you. Even with Chloe back, it doesn't mean we're any closer to home. Ray, about that, I've been meaning to ask this for some time. I already know where this is going, and the answers are resounding yes. Ray... We're in this together, right? I've got your back. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. Finally gonna meet up with Chloe. <sighs> Where the hell is everyone? Guess I'll wait for him at the gates. How inconsiderate. What's up, Elena? I have a proposal, though I'm sure you'll reject it. We should take our leave of Leticia and the others once we've secured Chloe. Is that some kind of joke? You're not really one for comedy. They're assisting us in rescuing Chloe in return for our help in seeing Midas to the Royal City. Which, in my opinion, they should be able to do on their own with Theo's aid. An unidentified developed planet holds some malevolent sway over Aster Four. Your safety, as well as Chloe's, could become compromised should we involve ourselves any further. 
I'm sure we'll be fine. Come on now. Ray. Antonio's gonna be swooping into the rescue any moment now. And besides, Nina's counting on you. <laughs> Do you really think we can just turn our backs on them now? I am only making a pragmatic recommendation as your first mate. I will defer to your judgment. Okay, drop the heady talk and don't worry. I'll know when we're in too deep. I hope you are right. Ray! Elena! Sorry for the wait! No worries. Shall we hit the old dusty trail? Yes, let's. Leave it to me! You rang? Threat detected ahead. I will take point. Acceleration in the efficient outfit. while we travel. protocols. is just beyond here. Well, well. Leave it to the daughter of Maester de Forge to have actually found a cure for Helgar's disease. Oh, um, it wasn't just me. I had tons of help from the others. And to be honest, we're gonna need everyone's help if we ever want to get rid of the disease for good. Oh, forgive me. 
I seem to have spoken out of turn. Oh, no, no, no. Don't worry about it. I'm just so happy we found a cure. But on the other hand, we're also on the brink of war, right? You have the right. I apologize. It's not your fault, Commander Theo. But I know world peace isn't just gonna happen because we discovered a treatment for Helgars. Then I suppose I must take it upon myself to restore order to the world, so that you might best distribute the cure. Leave that much to me. I know that to you, you are now safe. Sorry, loser. Destroyed. Threat Enemies. I'm always at the ready. I will take points. Warning. Energy levels low. Insufficient output. Destroy. Taking Warning. Energy threat neutralized. Destroy. Sir Theo, am I to understand that the Kingdom of Osirius and the Vale Empire are on the verge of war? Elena, if my comments on such matters were perchance overheard by others, it would be taken as public record. Well, what can you say? The situation is... delicate. The Empire is going to great lengths to exert pressure on Osirius. Even now, they encroach by land and sea. I'm sure that's the extent someone of your station would be able to disclose. Well, is there any possibility of war breaking out at our current destination? Do you truly think a Knight Commander of Royal Blood such as I would deign to suggest the Royal City be in any danger? Forget it, Elena. We'll find out for ourselves soon enough anyway. Right. I was just curious. Please excuse me. You've nothing to apologize for, or worry about. I don't intend on allowing harm to come to any friend of Letty's. Sorry about that. She's a huge worrywart. And a caring ally too, it would seem. Take good care of her. What a beautiful city. At a cursory glance, it is not too late to turn back. After all the effort it took to get here? I understand you, Maester Felgreed. But I will defer to Ray's judgment. As is your wont, there is work to be done. Let us make haste to the Royal Palace. We should not keep Where Chancellor Neon waiting. Right. is to the north. We should head there. I can't believe how huge it is! <laughs> the 
royal palace. It's even more imposing up close. Neon is waiting for us inside. Come. Wow. I can't believe all these people know Leticia. It goes to show how close the crown is to its people. Yes, she does enjoy some popularity. Will she show? Princess Leticia! I appreciate the warm reception, Neon. When I heard of your little excursion from Commander Theo, my heart stopped. Whatever were you thinking, Sir Albert? Her Highness had a very good reason. Did you truly think yourself solely capable of protecting the princess? A one-man army? Or... Calm yourself, Neon. We have brought Leticia back safely. And what's more, this recklessness on her part was not in vain. As of this moment, all she has accomplished is worrying me near to death! <sighs> this is precisely why I hate the royal palace. Where do you think you are off to? Somewhere I can give your arm a proper examination. Come when you are ready. Who in heavens is that man? How dare he speak in such a manner before royalty? He means no offense. That is Maester Midas Felgreed. Please show him the utmost respect. Midas... Uh, Midas Felgreed? Him? I apologize for my long absence from the royal palace, Neon. But I would ask a favor regarding the matter Commander Theo brought to your attention. Ah, uh, perhaps you speak of the prisoner we captured near Baldar. <sighs> huh. Might these be the strange companions I've heard the princess has been traveling with? Without the aid of these two, my journey would have been all the more arduous. The kingdom owes them a debt of gratitude. Very well, Princess Leticia. I will send word to notify the general of your safe return. No need. Let us first arrange a meeting that these two may be swiftly reunited with their ally. But your highness... Uh... I was led to understand that none were aware of my absence prior to Commander Theo's report, yes? Surely news of my return can be delayed. <sighs> I see. Very well, Princess. It may yet take some time, however, as the prisoner is currently being held in the Baldar Citadel. You must arrange for her immediate release. I understand your urgency, but I cannot make any immediate promises that the prisoner will be set free. We can discuss the matter further. If you would follow me to the Council Chamber. I am impressed you had the wherewithal not to speak up back there. Well, I know Leticia and Theo will keep their promise. If I had butted in, it likely would have just complicated matters. I will have to admit, I was worried you were on the verge of opening your mouth. Anything I might have said would have paled in comparison to how she handled it. Are those stairs across from the garden the ones we're looking for? Indeed. They lead up to the second floor. Father will not be joining us? Oh, have you not heard? His Majesty is leading the frontline defensive at Baldar at the behest of Captain Bertrand. He is where? Isn't it a big risk having your king on the front lines? The royal standard is on display above the Baldar Basilica to indicate His Majesty's presence. It serves as a warning. The Imperials know there will be a reckoning if they attack now. Nothing set in stone. But can we turn this all around with Midas' help? I mean, he was one of the three wise men. Do not speak as if years of history and tension can be undone in a single night. 
Breaking our current formation just for Maester Midas would serve as nothing more than an invitation for the Empire to commence their attack. Letty, tell me something. What exactly is it you intend to ask of Midas in the first place? If you are considering playing at the idea of forming a band of semiomancers, I am in vehement opposition. Furthermore, we have no sufficient proof that this ragtag band that follows you are not, in actuality, Imperial spies. They are nothing of the sort, I assure you. I believe both you and Her Highness speak true, Sir Albert. But it is not I who needs convincing. His Majesty's brother, Duke Clemrav, currently presides over the royal city. I will not have free reign under my father's orders. Ray, Helena, I cannot guarantee your safety. You must understand, my hands are tied until the tensions at Baldar ease. I hear where you're coming from, but you're talking like the war's already begun. What would you know? Well, if left unchecked, spies could run amok, raise cities to the ground. But if espionage on the home front was such a chief concern, why would the king be sent to the front lines? <laughs> a harsh criticism. Sounds like you've assumed from the start that everything Leticia's doing is a waste of time. What's wrong with a princess fighting tooth and nail to do what's best for her kingdom? Neon, if permitted by my father, I am sure the general could be convinced. Or even your lord father, cousin Theo. What? Consider the situation. I doubt it will be easy to entreat my father concerning a prisoner of war or the sudden return of Maester Midas. It would be best if I spoke with him directly. Wait, your highness. Baldar would be thrown into a disarray if you were to venture there now. This is of the highest import for the future of the kingdom. Do not worry. I will not disrupt a thing. No one shall be the wiser of my presence. <sighs> Say something, Sir Albert? Commander Theo? When her highness speaks thusly, there is no changing her mind. Just so. Currently, a permit is required for all who would enter Baldar. Come, grant her passage, Neon. Who knows what she may do if you choose not to. Very well. But do be careful. The situation at Baldar may very well erupt into chaos at a moment's notice. Thank you, Neon, Cousin Theo. Apologies, everyone, but I will not be accompanying you to Baldar. After all, Kato still needs someone to defend it. We understand. Thank you, cousin. Letty, if you sense any danger, turn back immediately. And that goes for Ray and the others as well. We will, rest assured. And Albi, please continue to watch over Letty for me. I'll do what I can. You sound as if you've given up already. I suppose you're my only hope then, Ray. I'll see what I can do. Have <laughs> I no one to count on? Ray, let us pay Maester Midas a visit. He is like as not to be in the Semiomancy Consortium. Neomancy Consortium is located on the east side after departing the palace. Commander. Family Neomancy Consortium is on the east side of the plaza. Uncle Midas is waiting for us there. To the east of here, you shall see the Semiomancy Consortium. I wonder what... So it was you who showed it to Leticia. I admit it. How could I not? I shared in her anguish. If our knights are to face the Imperials, we will have need of them. Do not suffer children their foolish dreams. You are why I find myself here. 
Mm-hmm. Maester Midas, Director Melthea. Ah, I am relieved to see you return in good health, Princess Leticia. And who are you? I am Melthea, the director here at the Osseria Semiomancy Consortium. A pleasure to meet you. Midas was just telling me of the pleasant journey you all had together. So, how did talks go with that twit Neon? Well... Um, so now we're heading straight for Baldar. And for what? I said I would support Albert and Elena. But I will rescind that promise if you intend to risk your lives so meaninglessly. Our good friend Chloe is being held captive in Baldar. We have to get to her. You understand, this is not up for debate. Hmm. I will not prostrate myself before the king. Go, return with your friend. I shall await here. Thanks, Midas. <laughs> you seem to understand Maester Midas quite well. Uh... Let us speak of the matter upon your return. <sighs> you have places to go and people to free. I truly pray time is on your side, Raymond. Let us make haste to Baldar. We have not the time to dawdle here any longer. Anyone home? Come in, come in. Thanks.
Thanks. From proficient. I am still far from proficient. straight south through the Osarius Plains, we will eventually arrive at Baldar Citadel. Baldar Citadel? lost as long as we follow the road south, right? Correct. However, this area seems to be teeming with monsters, so we should keep our guard up.
say goodbye. Firing. Destroy. Firing. Let's get reckless. Insufficient. This will be the last. One for the ones. Is that Baldar? It really lives up to the whole Citadel bit, huh? Indeed. It is located on the border between nations, after all. We're almost there, y'all. Let's move. Albert Bergholm, Knight of the King's Guard and Bodyguard to Her Highness Leticia Osarius. We seek audience with Captain Bertrand, head of the Baldar forces. This is the permit entrusted us by Chancellor Neon Kazov, advisor to the Corps. Her Highness, <gasps> pray forgive me. Pardon the mistrust. You may enter the Citadel as you please. His Royal Majesty awaits you at the stronghold within the Basilica. Much obliged. Let us make for the Basilica at once, Your Highness. So that's the Vale Empire. Why do they arm themselves? Why do they fight? Was that Duma? Piping up out of nowhere again. Are you really telling me you can't tell what they're gearing up for, Duma? Warfare between the same species would cause a massive decline in their respective population. What purpose could such fighting serve? I wonder the same myself, Duma. Is not the sky over Asarius the same shade as that over Vale? Yeah, well, you can't change the world overnight. Let's keep our eyes on the prize for now. You are right. Princess Leticia. It has been some time, Captain Bertrand. Uh, where is my father? He awaits within. We have just concluded our usual strategy meeting. Sir Albert and the rest of your party may enter as well. Father, I am sorry to intrude. Pray forgive my long and selfish absence. <clears throat> ah, yes. Full glad am I to see you return, Leticia. I apologize for the distress my current whereabouts must have caused you. Might I entreat you to introduce me to your allies? Of course, Father. They have been invaluable companions on my journey. This is Sir Raymond. Lady Elena, and Lady Nina. 
Rise, friends. I owe you much for helping my... Ah, uh, might you be Filberto's daughter? You remember me, your majesty? As if one could forget. Is Marcus well? He is. Still alive and kicking. Father, there is aught I would report. Nina de Forge has discovered a cure for Helgar's disease. Can it be true? Well, um, not all by myself. I, uh... Got a lot of help from Dad, uh, my father, Dr. Marcus, Ray, and Elena. I have also brought Maester Midas Felgreed to the royal city. Midas has come back? We may have no assurance of his cooperation, but the Maester's return, Lady Nina's discovery of the cure for Helgar's, and the safe passage of both myself and Albert to the royal city. All would not have been possible without the help of Sir Raymond and Lady Elena. Hmm. Is that so? Thank you for going to such lengths to aid my daughter. Ah, uh, no prob. Ray. Pray forgive him, your majesty. You are too generous. Father, if you would truly thank these two, I beseech you. Raymond's friend, Chloe Canaris, is being held here in Baldar. She was imprisoned under suspicion of acting as an Imperial agent. Please grant her release. I will see to it she is released immediately. Bertrand. Leticia has brought us a veritable mountain of good tidings. Full glad am I to hear it. Hmm. What will you all do from here on? We do not intend to impose any longer than we already have. We shall return to the royal city as soon as Chloe is released. Night is nearly fallen, so it might be best to depart come morning. Allow us to see to your sleeping arrangements. Assuming the worst were to happen... Wouldn't civilians like ourselves only get in the way? Imperial spies walk among us. And they may be watching Leticia's every move, even now as we speak. Broad daylight will certainly prove a boon, if that be the case. I see. And yes, your friend has been in captivity for some time. It may not be wise to exert her too quickly. Besides, this reunion is long in coming. I'm sure you have much to discuss. Your concern is greatly appreciated. We will do as you say. Captain Bertrand, please inform the guards to release Chloe at once. And see to it that Leticia and her friends have a place to rest their heads. Right away, Your Majesty. Shall we await at the dungeon, then? I dare say the matter should resolve quickly if I accompany you. How oh, exquisite! I sure hope Chloe's okay. Take heart. We do not mistreat our prisoners here in Baldar. Doing so might only serve as reason for the Empire to come to their rescue with all fury. So you're telling me Chloe might have landed in a lot worse, if not for the war? It is only a short distance west of here. Your companion is being held in the barracks dungeon. Hang in there, Chloe. She is being held in the cell on the end. She is. Chloe! No way! It can't be. Ray? Is that really you? It's me, all right. Good to see you safe, Chloe. Ray! Ray! <laughs> Thank goodness. I. I 
I never thought that I would get out of here. You're safe now. Everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> See? Already back to normal. So, your communicator and all your devices broke? Yeah. yeah. The, the pod's computer and, and electronics were all fried when the pulse hit. And the pod itself sank into the sea. I... I really thought I was done for. Then... I'm just glad you're all right now. And don't worry. I'm in contact with my brother. Help is on the way. Antonio's coming to save us? You betcha. And you're stuck with me till then. Okay. <laughs> ah, is that Chloe? Indeed it is. I am truly relieved to see her none the worse for wear. Oh, I see. So this is who Ray was searching for this entire time. Is something the matter? N no nothing at all. Captain, please release Chloe at once. Yes, Your Highness. Her language is unknown to us, so communication has been difficult. That should be of no further concern. With Ray or I around, you should be able to understand her just fine. Hey, uh, now that you mention it, how are you and Ray speaking our language if you came from the sky? Well, there are a number of reasons. Sorry for the imposition, Nina. But would you kindly assist me in examining Chloe? Oh, of course. Leave it to me. I shall lead you to the inn, if you would come with me. I'm so glad to see you guys. <laughs> Dry your eyes. You're with us now. Let's go to the inn and get some rest. Pardon us. Welcome. Was indeed fruitful. rooms for you on the second floor. Please feel free to use this chamber. If there is aught you require, know that you need only ask. We appreciate the hospitality, Captain Bertrand. All right, Chloe. Here we go. Let's make sure you're in tip-top shape. 
Um, okay. Hi there. I'm Nina. I'm a good friend of Ray's and Elena's, and an Iatromancer of this kingdom. So don't you worry. Nice to meet you, Nina. Thank you, Leticia. We never would have found Chloe without you. I... I truly did not do all that much. If it weren't for you and Albert, we wouldn't even know Chloe was in Baldar. I can't thank either of you enough. <laughs> it is unnerving to hear such sincerity coming from well, you. Well, Albert, even I can be sincere when I need to be. And don't worry. We still intend on helping however we can with Midas. You aren't getting us out of your hair that easily. Um, in that case, may I speak with you about something, Ray? Most definitely. Hey, Albert. Albert, might I ask you to assist Elena and Nina? Of course, Your Highness. Please try not to wander off too far. Please heed what Her Highness has to say. What? Thank you, Albert. So, what is it you want to talk about? Not just yet. Let us converse once we reach the east end of the Citadel. Uh, okay. end of the citadel. I think I remember seeing a path to the northeast. I'll head there. advice or something. Eh, guess I won't know till I get there. What's up with this place? Nothing is up, as you say. Please, follow me. Are we there yet? We've been hiking for ages. It has not been that long. We are almost there. Just don't take us anywhere that's gonna piss off Albert. <laughs> you are not the one who need fear his wrath. Uh, it's not just Albert I'm worried about. If your father found out, he might put Chloe back into custody. Come now. Father would never. We are near. Target sighted. Sweet! Wow, what a view. Indeed. I love coming here. Huh. Are we on Vale Empire soil? When I was old enough to understand the words of my elders, the kingdom of Osarius and the Vale Empire were already at odds. Every time I come here, I would always wonder why. Why must the same people under the same sky always be fighting one another? If it makes you feel any better, uh, even people living above this sky are constantly fighting. What a great shame. <sighs> the royal family of Osirius and the imperial line of Vale were once tied together by marriage. Theo's mother's sister, his aunt, was empress and wife to Emperor Buldor. 
the current ruler of Vale. Wow. Really? When Helgar's disease enveloped this world 15 years ago, she became afflicted and eventually died. And it was then that relations between my kingdom and the Empire began to sour. I see. When she fell ill, the Empire requested an Iatromancer be dispatched from Osarius. The Empire had very few Semiomancers, but the Kingdom refused. We cited the unstable situation on our home soil as an excuse. Why are you telling me all this now? I did not wish to keep it secret. That kind of honesty could come back to haunt you. If our journey is to be enjoyable, I must be open with you. It really is a nice view. Indeed. We should return before Albert and the others grow worried. Sleep. I should go to the end. should be just south of the Basilica. Time for bed. Now that I know Chloe's safe, it's a real weight off my shoulders. Maybe I'll sleep better tonight. Chloe's examination seems to be finished. Shall you retire? Hmm. What's that sound? Ray! Ray! Wake up, please! Detecting multiple hostile threats. Secure the perimeter. Secure the perimeter. That's artillery fire. The Baldar Citadel is taking fire from the Vale Empire. Your Highness, we are under attack from the Empire. <sighs> Your Highness! How can this be? What the hell is going on? Are you gonna be okay down there? I believe Baldar's defenses should be well prepared. Albert! Ray! Let us find Nina, Elena, and Chloe with utmost haste! It is not safe! We must leave Baldar at once! What do you mean? With our few number, we have no possibility to sway the tide of this battle. And as shameful... As dispiriting as it may be, our duty precedes us. We must avoid the crown princess of the kingdom being killed or captured by the Empire. Your Highness, I'm... Letizia. The assurance of my safety should bring solace to the captain and father. I will not tempt Vale with our kingdom on a platter. Let us depart.
What happened? Who gave the order to fire upon them? I do not know. It is unclear which unit launched the attack, but it seems the naval battalion in the harbor has already deployed. Perhaps there was some miscommunication. Foolishness! Father! Patricia! It would seem things have taken an ill turn. I am relieved to see you all unharmed. What is the situation on the battlefield? We fare poorly. Our strategic councils have prepared us for this. The situation will be under control ere long. Uh, Your Majesty, the lower level gates have been breached. What? Already? What is the front line command post doing? outclass our own to such degree. It should be impossible for their fire to reach us from that range. Ray, this could have something to do with our horned assailants. Oh, great. Are those bastards helping the Empire develop new technology? They may not be so directly involved. But if beings from a developed planet have formed some allyship with Vale, they could have easily improved their warships and artillery in short order. Damn. It's meddling purple. Ray, Elena, what do you make of the situation? Leticia, if we want to keep you safe, we need to make tracks. And fast. We don't stand a chance against the enemy's firepower. Upon weighing the defensive armaments I observed here yesterday, against what the Empire has on hand. It is only a matter of time until Baldar falls. Father! Captain! We must retreat at once! What are you saying? You would have us abandon Baldar? That is precisely what I am saying. We have not a moment to lose. Your Majesty, the Imperial forces are much more powerful than we had anticipated. Please understand, their strength is likely bolstered by interlopers from the sky as well. We stand no chance. Interlopers from the sky? What madness do you speak of? We've witnessed unbelievable power throughout our travels. Incredible power from those beyond the sky! Ray and the others are from an advanced civilization far superior to that of the Vale Empire. Please, you must heed my words. Confound it. to the royal city immediately right away pray leave the troops in my care your majesty you and the princess should make for Asendros with all haste I am sorry for this Bertrand do not fall this day my men await you outside sir Abbard See that His Majesty and the Princess arrive safely back at the Royal City. Understood, sir. May fortune smile upon you, Captain Bertrand. Forgive me. I never thought it would come to this. Don't worry. It's all part of the job. Nina, you take the rear with His Majesty and Leticia. Chloe, stick with me and don't stray. Got you! Uh, okay! Let us be off. Thank you. 
rang? They made it this far? Emergency protocols. Now that you spoke true, never in my life have I laid eyes upon such fearsome arms. Don't talk. I'll seal the wound right away. What? What the heck is that thing? Bertrand Corps, shield his majesty! What's this? Just look for a second. 
Majesty's steed! It can no longer carry him. Duma! Why didn't you stay with the King and Chloe? I determined that focusing on the defense of this organism would result in a significantly decreased mortality rate. W what the hell are you even saying? I acted in the interest of protecting the organism's King and Chloe. A great number of the more combat-viable Bertrand Corps had ceased all vital function. Therefore, protecting two organisms that cannot contribute to the survival of the majority. You must go, Leticia. As long as you yet live, the royal family will not fall. I will not leave go you. Go quickly now. The blame lies with me. For failing to defend Baldar. For underestimating the strength of our enemy. No, your majesty! Stand up! You need to keep walking! We have to get closer to the royal city! All due respect, but if we stand here and argue, we're all toast. Ray! Look! Duma, protect the king and Chloe. It is the best way to boost our odds of survival. Promise! Analyzing command. Rewriting. Approved. A new program has been issued. I will be your opponent. the power to do this, why didn't you do this earlier? If you had, Bertrand's soldiers wouldn't have had to die. Hostile threat detected. Again? Incalculable hostile readings approach from the north. Initiate emergency measures. Did you say... Uh, from the north? It must be. Attack! Show not a shred of mercy to those who tread unbidden on royal land. Do not let them leave alive. Lord Uncle! The Imperial forces need not be feared. Onward! Your Majesty, Princess Leticia, are you alright? General Canis! We came with all haste as soon as we heard the news that Baldar had fallen. I am relieved we made it in time. General Canis! Captain Bertrand is heading the rear guard at Baldar. Please, you must help them. Calm yourself, Sir Albert. Duke Clemrath is already seeing to their aid. Commander Theo is also leading a fleet of warships to engage the Imperial Navy. Pardon me, news. All right, are we gonna be okay here? Ray, it seems that way. Please, this way, Your Majesty. We have a steed prepared for you. Know your place, child. Duke Clemrath's personal Iatromancer will see to His Majesty's recovery. Hmm. We may have been better off without their aid.
glad to see you unharmed. Theo is father. Do not worry yourself. His majesty is being treated by most capable hands as we speak. Bertrand also managed to return to us. The Imperial Assault did not gain them much purchase. Yet... so many were lost. <sighs> yes, indeed. We must needs discuss the path forward. Pray join us in the Council Chamber, Letty. Let us make for the Council Chamber. However did it come to this? Anyone home? Come in, come in, my own. Thanks. Thanks. Some children. Thank goodness the fighting hasn't reached the capital. Oh, thank goodness indeed. However, we do not know how long it will stay that way until we have a better understanding of the situation. For now, we should make for the palace. Welcome to our stop. We offer the finest hospital. Enjoyed your stay. I'll be back. Council chamber is on the second floor. The Baldar Citadel has fallen into the indecent hands of the Empire. How will you take responsibility for this? Our defense was doomed from the start. The Imperials far outmatched us. 
Yet we were able to rout their pursuing forces without issue. The weapons the Imperials used were beyond anything we could have imagined. Why, then, do reports indicate our forces made the first move? Were you all so eager for glory you were willing to die for it? Save the reprimands for later. We must first hear more of these Imperial weapons. I must say, the cannons outfitted on those Imperial warships were assuredly unlike anything we have dealt with before. They command all manner of monstrous abominations. And their soldiers were armed with weapons that fired shards of iron. Is that all? Mere trifles by the sound of it. Do you doubt Her Highness's words, General Canis? You forget yourself. Here is one of the stones fired from their contraptions. It penetrated a knight's armor, killing him instantly. It is plain to see the Empire's armaments have undergone a drastic change. Lacking as we are in sufficient field analysis, crushing defeat is all but certain should we suffer another attack. Then we shall bring the fight to them. Let us wrest Baldar back from their grasp. We shall not let them have the upper hand. That will only lead to more unnecessary deaths. For the time being, we had best wait for His Majesty to recover. Until then, you should all focus on healing your own wounds. Oh, I am relieved to see you all safe. We have much to discuss, though this may not be the most suitable place for it. Please come to the Consortium. Maester Midas has been worried sick about you. The Semiomancy Consortium was just east after leaving the palace, wasn't it? Yep. I wonder what Director Malthea wants to say. I am rather astounded to hear Maester Midas worried after us. Midas isn't cold-hearted. He's just unable to express himself properly. You're giving him way too much credit, if you ask me. So, you return in one piece, with an ally in tow, no less. Yeah, this is Chloe. Chloe? Meet our good pal, Midas. Uh, <clears throat> nice to meet you. Well, perhaps you should have accompanied them if you were so worried after Sir Albert and Lady Elena. Tripe, I am come only to fix Albert's arm, nothing more. Huh, a shame that. I suppose we will only discuss what could have been. Oh? The Empire clearly had the advantage over us at Baldar. We cannot win this fight without taking the upper hand. Director Malthea, is it time? Yes, Princess Leticia. I think it is high time the Maester heard your reason for departing Asendras from the first. Please, this way, everyone. Is this... a sleigh? No way that's a sleigh. Maybe a boat? No, Ray. This machinery... Director Malthea, is this... some kind of aircraft? Yes, very perceptive. It is an apparatus that will allow semiomancers to soar through the skies. 
I created this prototype based on a theorized design devised by Maester Midas. From how I see it, this would revolutionize the war effort. Midas truly has a gift. Twas not but a foolish 14-year-old dream. What if I told you that dream was on the verge of actualization? Do what you will with my dusty old notion. I am come only to... See to Sir Albert's arm. Yes, yes, I am aware. Then I suppose it would not interest you to know that the final material needed to complete the Folga lies on Nilbeth? What? Maester Midas once attempted to make the Folga fly using ancient floating semiomancy. But the output was never enough to move them more than a stone's throw. We have recently discovered a catalyst that can greatly increase their distance and time spent airborne. It is called Levitas Ore and can only be found in the Nilbeth Ancient Coil, in the lands of the Trathin. If you jest, I shall show you no quarter. Um, have you ever known me to make light of semiomantic research? Fine, I will go. Maester Midas. But I thought you were only here for Albert's arm. I wouldn't want to get your hopes up too high, Leticia. When do we leave? Oh, what? Good. You should make for the seaport of Kado at once. I've arranged for a transport. Let us meet at the harbor. All right, let's get this show on the road. Hold on, Ray. I think I'll be staying in the Royal City. Huh? Chloe needs rest. Her imprisonment and our retreat from Baldar has surely left her exhausted. Besides that, you'll be taking a ship from Kato to Nilbeth. If we were to run afoul of the Imperial Navy, the risk to non-combatants on open water would be too great. Elena, you speak wisely. If I stay, I can keep you updated on the situation here, via my device. Of which Chloe has none, lest you forget. She will need time to learn the language and the culture of this land. Chloe's a quick learner. She should pick it up in no time at all. Yeah, you're right. Take care of her. <sighs> it will be much harder to gather the right materials without you there, Elena. Hmm. I would also beseech her to stay. I fear what my lord uncle and the others may do. I would find some comfort in knowing what they are planning. Please, do feel free to make use of the consortium however you see fit during your stay in Ascendros. That's very kind of you, Director Melthia. I have some concerns regarding those Imperial armaments. Any data you can share from the last battle would be appreciated. But of course. Meet me in the harbor in Kado. I will accompany you on the voyage.
if I must. better I do. You rang? <laughs> Director Melfia should be awaiting our arrival. Let us make for the seaport on the eastern side of town. Theo. Well, well. Fancy meeting you lot here. We must cross the Straits of Kado in order to reach the continent of Nilbeth. 
Commander Theo has agreed to help us. So, the Imperial Navy's been trawling around even before Baldar fell? That is not all, I fear. The reports say the Imperials drawing near Kato were scouts. It seems they plan to invade Nilbath. They what? Ah! Don't scare me like that! I... Uh... Come. We should depart at once. I only pray the Imperial forces are not too on edge following the battle at Baldar. Right. Appreciate it, Theo. I, for one, am not certain what the situation is like in Nilbeth. Make sure you are ready ere we depart. Ready to set sail? Right then, let's set sail. You know, you mentioned there was no diplomacy between Osarius and Nilbeth. Wouldn't that mean we're about to land illegally on their shores? It would seem so. Wait, 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 uh, what do you mean, it would seem so? What if they think we're invading? Too. That is precisely the reason why we need Maester Midas here. My time's not to be wasted. What's eating you? All this talking can be done later. The most important thing is for us to make for the Trathan settlement. So, Ray, take care of Letty, would you? Uh, what's the deal? Um, well... Even should you all desire to take your leave of Nilbeth, certain complications may impede my ability to stay near. The Imperial Navy may happen upon us, for instance. Don't sweat a thing. I've been up to my neck in complications since I landed on this planet. Ray, keep her safe. All right then. The Trathan settlement lies just south. So, uh, what kind of people are the Trathan, Althea? A race gifted in semiomancy, who possess corporeal forms that are quite different than our own. The Trathan can propagate their kind sexually and asexually through fission of their osseous cores. They are one of the most powerful species on Nilbath. Wow. So, did Uncle Midas have some sort of previous connection with them? Hmm. He's been acting strange ever since we decided to come to Nilbeth. Hmm. We will most likely get answers once we meet the Traffin. Hmm? Something got you anxious, Albert? No, Okay, what is going on with everybody? Follow me of survival dropping. Oh, 
Signatures detected. Initiate emergency measures. That sound. It's Imperial gunfire. Looks like we've got company. What the? Life-threatening activity detected nearby. Individual contact with its source is not recommended. <gasps> what a most advantageous orb! I should love to study it. Now's not the time. After Midas! Malkia! Could it be? More of them! Don't get caught! Huh? We must focus on the battle at hand! You things of the Warning. Energy levels low. Are you all right, Malkia? Midas, is that truly you? In the flesh. Thank goodness you're safe. You jumped in so quickly. I assumed you were another Imperial lackey. My apologies. No need. Do not fret, Midas. Full glad am I to see you. Hmm. Age has certainly not been kind to you. Yet you remain unchanged, just as last I saw you. You flatter me, but I have changed in my own way over these years. By the way, your companions are peering in this direction with some confusion. <laughs> it would seem they have the wrong idea. Mm, forget them. The less they know, the better. <laughs> that will not do, Midas. I am certain your friends would like to hear the whole story. I see some familiar faces. <laughs> Human children really do grow up in the blink of an eye. It has been some time, Princess Leticia. I am... Deeply honored you would remember me, Lady Malkia. You have grown into a beautiful woman. And the boy has grown into a fine young man. <laughs> Welcome to Nilbeth. Boy? I am alive and well thanks to you, Lady Malkia. That is all well and good, but you do not appear to be in the best of health. See right through me. I could sense the osseous core I separated with 14 years ago. But I never imagined Midas would be with it. Osseous core? Oh. So, was that the material used to replace Albert's arm all those years ago? Welcome, Midas, Princess Leticia, and your brave young companions. I am Malkia Trathan. I am the leader of the Trathan tribe, the native peoples of Nilbeth. Follow me. I will lead you back to our village. We can discuss more there. Why didn't you mention you were friends with their leader from the start? I was not expecting to see her, much less be shown such hospitality. Oh, why not? 
She seems so... nice. And what's up with her and Midas? Seems like there's something going on between them. <sighs> ah, there lies the reason. I assumed she might not have the highest opinion of the Osarian royal family. Is she involved with the feud between Osarius and the wise men? Neither Midas nor Princess Leticia informed you of the events from 14 years ago? Uh, not everything. I myself am still attempting to calmly discern who is at fault. Welcome. This is our village, and our bastion against the Imperial forces. I see. For what reason is the Empire invading Nilbeth? We can Be discuss sure such matters in my first. home. Visit at your leisure. I'll inform the villagers of your presence. Make yourselves at home. You by any chance from another continent? Then check out our exotic goods for sale. Quite dangerous, right? Thanks. Here. Malkia's room is deeper in. I'll take a look around the settlement, then head there. Looks like there's a side door I can go out from. They live in these ancient ruins? This place gives me weird vibes. I should probably head over to Malkia's. The southern room, I think. Care to take a rest? Feel free to use this. Sleep tight. Don't let the monsters bite. <laughs> Just kidding. They never leave the coil. You slept well. Come back any time. I'll be back. Now then, let us start with what brings you to Nilbeth. To fight back against the Vale Empire. With your blessing, we hope to mine the Levitas ore found deep within the Nilbeth ancient coil. The ore will ultimately serve as an indispensable catalyst. Catalyst, you say? Hmm, I see. Oh, so you intend to use the Folga? <gasps> you know of the Folga? Of course I do. Midas promised we Malkia. would- Malkia! <laughs> what are you shouting for, man? <laughs> the Folga, you see. Was an idea Midas thought up while with Marcus, Filberto, and I 14 years ago. Dad and Dr. Ethan too? Lady Malkia was involved in the invention of the Folga? This is the first I have heard of it. In a manner of speaking, I was. 
Am I wrong to say so, Midas? Yes, I would not have met you otherwise. Mayhap. The ancient coil is Nilbath's most sacred ground. If we would allow outsiders to dig within, I would impose one condition. Anything you ask? I would ask for your assistance in routing the Imperial threat that encroaches on the Ancient Coil and our home. Excavation may prove difficult with the Empire so close at hand, besides. Ugh, did we stand a chance? Baldar was no match for them at all. The royal city of Nilbeth has not sent aid due to the small number of Imperial soldiers. The villagers tell me the enemy has but a single warship. So, we'll be fine, right? If we cannot rout this small a force, then I fear for our return home. I am counting on you all. Let us make our move when ready. I will be joining you, so do call on me once you have made the necessary preparations. We'll be clashing with the Imperial forces. Gotta make sure we're ready for them. teacher than experience.
shan't hold the others back. Hmm. Midas and Malkia. Something definitely happened between them. Huh. Have you made ready? Then let us be off. The enemy may be few in number, but take caution. Do you know where the brutes dwell? I do. We shall patrol their invasion route and destroy them one by one. A simple strategy. We have also received reports that the enemy commander is present during their invasion effort. Ah, if we take the commander down, we can send them packing easy. Just so. Boy, I will not overstep my bounds, but take care. Understood. Let us be off then. We shall show these foolish Imperials what we are capable of. First, we must head outside.
It seems my time has come. Multiple enemies detected. Firearms identified. Secure the perimeter. A most useful orb, if not somewhat annoying. Yeah, sorry about that. Duma doesn't listen to anyone. The Imperial soldiers are over there. Huh? Uh, what is it, Ray? It's those guys again. No, it's nothing. Sorry. Our aim is not to take life. But do not hesitate. Forward. We've only just put ourselves in path. I will lead us to victory. Sorry, Sorry. there's energy levels. Oh, I can't take out the ground. Keep it the good job. Let's go. Destroy. Gain efficient output. Right. Not yet. Now, on to the next. Right. Sweet! There they are. Our next target. Right. This area has been cleared. Let us make for the next one. <laughs> My, how you have grown into quite the reliable princess. Let us keep moving. Is everyone prepared? Right behind you. Imperials are everywhere. Desperately no back on your foot. So let's kick every last one of their asses out of here. Then you're gone. Warning. Energy levels low. Where'd I go? Destroy. What's so tough now? I have grown somewhat used to their firearms. Oh, in a good way or a bad way? You are all far more skilled than I imagined. Such prowess is a rarity, even among the warriors of Trathen. We might consider a surprise attack on the Imperial warship. That should drive them back from whence they came. Lady Malkia, please return to the settlement. We are under attack. What? A large number of Imperials. Their commander is on a, a rampage. Never have I witnessed such brutality. Return with all haste, now!
No, this can't be. What have they done? Well, well. I was not expecting you back so soon, Lady Trathen. You wretch. Ray, this is the same man who attacked us in Rythal after Elena came down. <sighs> You're right! No mistake in that horn and pale skin! He was an Imperial officer. Well, if it isn't the peons who are looking into meteorites and Helgar's disease in Rythal. My apologies for not introducing myself before. I am called Gaston Gauthier. Do my eyes deceive me? Or is that a Duma with you? <gasps> Who are you, really? If you recognize Duma, then you must not be from this planet. I could certainly ask you the same. Or ask why you're staring at me so bitterly, for that matter. Are we not allies? You have a Duma with you, after all. I would never dream of allying myself with one who would commit such atrocities. Nor will we waste any more words on a general of the Vale Empire. You will not lay another finger on the Trathen people. As you wish. Just don't expect me to hold back. I will not go as easy on you as I did at our first meeting. Do your worst. Detecting unforeseen hostile threat. Secure the perimeter. Stay Having a Duma around isn't doing me any favors. Still your tongue, lest you desire another trouncing. Thank you. I think I'd rather call it a day. See you again, Duma. And here's hoping we all have a more worthwhile chat next time. No doubt about it. He's just like the guy we met when repairing Elena and the woman on Mount Cotterant. They're humanoids from a developed planet. And this Gaston? He isn't shy about using their technology here either. In any case, we have repelled their offensive. I doubt they will return anytime soon. Raymond, Princess Leticia, you have my gratitude. You've become strong in your own right, boy. I appreciate your words. However, I seem to grow weary. Let us get you some well-deserved rest. I would welcome you all back into my home. Sounds good to me. He knew about Duma. Who the hell is he? Ray? Uh, yeah, sorry. It's nothing. Let's hurry to Malkia's room.
stock up on items. You by any chance? Thanks. Now. Before we begin mining for Levitas Ore, there is one thing I would ask. Something else? I thought we already chased off the Empire. This is serious. It takes significant strength to excavate the ore, but many of the villagers are wounded. We are not in the best shape ourselves. Especially you, boy. These 14 long years must have been difficult. The creaking of my old Osseus core due to our close proximity must not be helping matters. Uh, no, I am fine. Do not hold in the pain any longer. There is no need. What? Midas and I have discussed it. I will bestow upon you a new Osseus core. A renewed arm should allow you to resume your duties. Oh, well, Baird! Uh, are... are... are you certain? Consider it a fitting reward for a hero who saved my people. Midas also keeps bringing up that if we do not repair your arm, he would be at the whim of the royal family forevermore. Hmm. <sighs> Oh, that's great, Albert. Now you can go on being a knight? I, I, I can hardly believe it. Thank you. Thank you. The implantation procedure should only take one night. Let us all rest in anticipation of our journey for the Levitas Ore come the morrow. The main issue was discerning whether we could procure another Osseus core from Malkia. With her help, we cannot fail. Rest assured. Hmm? I feel incredibly moved to be able to witness this procedure once again. <sighs> I... I can continue my nightly duties. I can still fight. They're essentially extending your lifespan. You speak true. Now I can repay Her Highness for all the worry I've caused her. Leticia's not here, by the way. Where'd she get to? I do not doubt there is much running through her mind. If... If Her Highness should speak to you, I beg you, heed her words. Hey, what's this all of a sudden? You've been acting weird lately. Her Highness holds trust in you. Despite this trust, there were matters she could not share. Perhaps now, such conversation is possible. Yeah, I got it. And if I don't do as you say, you'd probably end up a pain in my ass anyways. 
Shall we begin the procedure? Yes, my lady. All right. I'd better find Leticia. Where the hell is Leticia? Did she go outside somewhere? Leticia? Hey. Ray. I hope Albert's arm gets patched up all right. I'm certain it will. Ahem. Uh Ray. Yeah? If I may, let me share a story from my past. Albert lost his left arm 14 years ago. Back then, I used to drag Albert and cousin Theo around, causing them much annoyance. That day was just like any other. I was playing in an isolated area of the castle, a place I fancied my own secret bastion. It was then an unfortunate accident befell me. The decrepit castle walls, long since fallen into disrepair, came falling from above. Yet I was unharmed. The one who shielded me. It was Maester Midas and Lady Malkia who saved Albert's life. But their actions served as the catalyst for the three wise men's exile from the kingdom. Some decried the transplanting of limbs between species as a vile, evil, unforgivable act. Maester Midas suffered much, but so too did Maesters Marcus, Filberto, and Lady Malkia. They were all brought before the court to answer for their blasphemous deed. And it was my lord uncle who spearheaded their persecution. The decisive act that sealed their fate was when father acquiesced to the claims. Father had no choice but to submit to my lord uncle's power, given his relation to the late Empress of Vale. Maester Midas was spared the mark of treason, but ultimately banished. Lady Malkia's studies at the Semiomancy Consortium were ended, our relations with Nilbeth severed. And Maester Marcus and Filberto followed Maester Midas into the hinterlands. No wonder Midas gets so heated. Actually, I'm kind of surprised you even thought of asking Midas for help. I inquired Director Melthia about the Folga. With it, I knew I could protect the kingdom. I beseeched Albert for his help, asked Cousin Theo to assist with arrangements. And then, Ray, I met you. Nah, I haven't done a thing. After we met, I began to think that everything will be fine. That things will work out. I have never been so excited for the days to come. Thank you for listening to my overlong story. Shall we head back?
how Albert is holding up. Let's take a peek inside the operating room. Seems the procedure may still take some time. You had best rest while you can. Off to bed then. Procedure went well then. Indeed. Behold, Your Highness. So, feeling ready to get back at it? Naturally. <laughs> Let us not keep Theo waiting. You said it. Let's make tracks. How fare you this morning, Lady Malkia? Better, after hearing the Imperial troops have left our shore. Now is the time to descend into the coil. Is it that deep? The ancient coil is sacred ground for semiomancers. It is suitably deep. Losing one's way would prove fatal. Their kind do not go astray. Their strange tools create detailed cartographs. Then, there is no reason to worry. Shall we depart? Are you coming with us, Lady Malkia? As leader of the Trathen, it would be unspeakable to not join you on our sacred grounds. There is an entrance into the coil within the village. I will meet you there after informing my people. The entrance to the ruins was through Malkia's room, wasn't it? We should get down there once we're ready. You rang? Good morning, Albert. You're looking much better. Thank you. I feel strong enough to move mountains. I'm relieved the procedure went well. But I am afraid I come bearing ill tidings.
What is it? What happened to His Royal Majesty? The wounds he sustained in Baldar have worsened, leaving him bedridden. Sinister activity has also been observed around Baldar. Neon wishes for the immediate return of Her Highness. Theo has already left Kato for the Royal City. The ship that approaches is one sent by Neon. You should go, Leticia. Now? Look, your people are calling for you in their time of need. It's them you've been fighting for all along, right? If the king has truly fallen, nothing will prevent Lambert from doing whatsoever he pleases. He may even impede our work on the Folga. I'll keep Elena updated on our situation with this. We can handle the rest here. Very well. I leave the retrieval of the Levitas Ore in your hands. No problem. And Albert, you'll be going with her, right? Of course. I leave the rest here to you. Should any trouble arise, I shall inform Elena with all haste. I'll stay behind. If I left and Ray or the others got sick or hurt, they'd be in trouble. As shall I, as an authority on Levitas Or. I await good tidings in the Royal City. Yeah, we will see you soon. Exploring ancient ruins like this. Glad you think so, because it's about to get grimy and gloomy. No problem. Don't forget, I grew up in a mining town. A little field work like this, it's nothing to me. Oh, okay, right. Well, uh, don't get too worked up either way. My gut told me there'd be monsters there. And it was right. What difference does the love that have survived the hunt below? Have they cut it all the way? Gotcha! Warning. Energy levels low. Insufficient output. Blast neutralized. Warning. Energy levels low. Race for a fight. Just like that drop in is a fishing We're destroyed. One energy level What was that? Likely a trap to deter would-be intruders. We should be wary of not only enemies, but tread carefully as well. Ah, it's so scary! 
Yeah, let's try not to fall. Here. I know not the exact locations of Levitas or deposits. We have no choice but to search thoroughly where we descend. Sweet! Target sighted. Initiate emergency protocol.
Preparations complete. A wise choice. Fine. Anyone need help? Leave it to me. are just like the ones we saw at the shrine on Gelkalemthus. The records of all sites in the world engraved with such symbols can be traced all the way back to the ancient coil. Nina, your pendant. What? Whoa. Where did you get that? My dad gave it to me. I just assumed it was a good luck charm for our Atromancers. Do you know what it is, Uncle Midas? I am no Iatromancer. That is a question better asked of Marcus on your return to Delric. Hmm. Does this mean Dad and Dr. Eason have been here before? The three wise men have all visited this place. So, Nina, you are Filberto's daughter. Is he in good health? He passed away seven years ago. I see. Once the realm is at peace, there is something of your father's I would return to you. You are always welcome amongst the Trathen, Nina de Forge. Thank you, Lady Malkia. opens up a bit here. Let's see what this place has in store for us.
Can't wait to see how much better I do. Here we go, here we go, here we go! again this looks like an iatric symbol but different somehow um have you ever seen anything like this where you come from there's a practice called symbology back home it's a lot like semiomancy you know i feel like i've seen something just like this a long time ago what symbology um well Basically, it's the technology that allows Elena to operate. Symbology? Wow! I wonder if we'll ever be able to make people from symbols one day? Don't get any wild ideas, okay? Yeah, I know, I know. What good is any technology we haven't developed ourselves? I just wish I could visit your world, Ray. See what it's really like. Don't get your hopes up. Oh, there are plenty already. There's so many traps down here, it's making my head spin. This place is sacred. It is not meant to be easily accessible. We are being tested to see if we are worthy. Then to get to the Levitas Ore, we'll just have to get past these trials one by one. Here we are. This is Levitas Ore. Oh, how pretty! Is this what we need to take back? If we hope to get any use out of the Folga, a deposit this minuscule will not serve in the slightest. Well, we'll just need to find a bigger vein then. Let's go. Indeed. Malkia, um, did you say something to Midas? I did not. Mayhap there is aught on his mind.
<sighs> we managed to cross safely. We must remain vigilant as we delve deeper. Like this? Get ready to fight, everyone. Thank God. I got it. Like this? Let's do it! All right. Like this?
No, there's more to explore ahead of us. Cool. So this is the real path then, huh? All right, let's do this. Let's do it! dwells in the depths. Here it comes! You hardly do need to be. Unable to continue combat. Incoming. 
incoming. Accelerator neutralized. Dearly. Whoa, Lady Malkia, is this all Levitas ore? Even I did not realize such a rich deposit existed. Hmm. If we mine this, we should easily procure the amount Melthia has envisioned for the Folga. Great! Let's head back and let her know right away. Ray, you've recorded a map of our route here, right? Uh... Huh? Nina, what's wrong? Hmm... There's another symbol there. Where? Detecting large symbol reaction. Detecting large symbol reaction. Uh, do we have to fight something else? No hostile entities detected. Detecting large symbol reaction. It's reacting to Nina's pendant. Does it hold some hidden danger? It doesn't feel dangerous. But this light sure is strange. If it is of no great import, let us accomplish what we set out to do. We should return to the surface. Malthea and I must sort out our excavation plan. Hang back! I got you! Yeah. Yeah. Let's well. get up close and personal! Destroy! Threat neutralized. Warning! Energy levels low. We're safe.
We just found a motherload of Levitas ore. It was even enough to please Midas. Well done. Let us begin the excavation process straight away. I will oversee the excavation. It requires care. I shall have some of my own assist. Now, all that's left is to load it on our ship and head home. Got that right. Perfect timing. Leticia must have just gotten back. What's the latest, Elena? Ray, we have an emergency. Get up, Chloe. You have to follow Captain Bertrand. Quickly now. <gasps> Elena! Hey, whoa, what the hell's going on over there? I'm not completely sure myself, but something big is happening in the Royal City. Ray, Captain Bertrand just found us, and... Quickly now! My men will lead the way. The Royal City is currently on lockdown. It's chaos, Ray. Be careful when you return. Signing off. Hey! Elena! Elena! Did something happen? Something's going on in the Royal City. What? Are Leticia and the others all right? I... Uh, I'm not really sure. <sighs> Raymond! Nina! Something is not right. Malthea! What is it? A new ship has appeared on the shore, but I know not what to make of it. It is General Canis. He is ordering us to halt the excavation of Levitas or and surrender. Surrender? What does he mean by that? I have no idea. Whatever he intends, we had best head back to the settlement. Let's go, Ray. There you are, Director Melfia. I see you have brought Raymond Lawrence and Midas Felgreed. Then why must you impede our excavation of Levitas Ore? Did you learn to whine like that during your exile in the wild, Kerr? What? For the crimes of bringing Her Highness to the active war zone at Baldar, endangering her life, and for commandeering the King's personal navy, you lot stand accused of conspiring with Nilbeth to overthrow Osarius. What madness does he speak of? Have you no shame in your prattle of barren truths, Canis? Silence! Relent or be slain, you and these barbarians of Nilbeth. <laughs> I think it is plain who the barbarians are here. You shall regret those words. Have at them! Kill them all! Sent you. Why come hither with such poisonous intent against the Trathan? What reason have I to tell the likes of you? I know of many experiences in this world far worse than death. <laughs> you lot will never make it back to the royal city anyway. What's that? Osirius will have a new ruler. Duke Clemrath has likely already crowned himself king. What in heavens are you talking about? Long has our kingdom trailed behind the ever-forward march of the Vale Empire, but no more. I have always thought you lot were foolish, but never this much so. What have you done with Leticia? Certainly even you can imagine what might become of the whelp of the erstwhile ruler. Elena. What is it, Ray? Elena's just gone offline. Her signal's been completely cut off. Elena... Damn it, Elena! Could she have suffered some damage? No. If she was hurt, she'd send a status report immediately. I think she was forced to shut down. Though I'm not sure why. 
Princess Leticia and the boy must be in danger. We gotta get back. Sorry, Malkia, but we'll need to leave the digging to you. Stay calm. You have no ship to bear you home. We'll just use the ship these jerks showed up on. I doubt threats will coerce them into taking us back. Damn it! We have to get back somehow. <laughs> Why not fly back on this ridiculous airborne contraption I hear you have conceived? As if such impossible dreams could come to fruition. I will not suffer fools to... You dare to laugh at dreams, yet you cannot even perceive reality. Midas, what will become of the Folga now? It will likely be disposed of, never to be completed. That I will not allow. I suppose I have no choice but to use my secret art and send you back to Ascendros. You can do that? I would prefer not to, as it drains heavily from my vitality, but we have little choice otherwise. Listen well. If I am to do this, you must complete the Folga. It's a promise. What should we do? Call on me once you are well prepared. Once you depart, there shall be no return. Be ready for anything. Thanks. Ready to depart? Right then, let us gather the others. I shall open the way. You may appear anywhere in Ascendros, and there is no telling what may occur ere you arrive. Be on guard. Not hold for long! Quickly, jump through! Uh, we have to go in there? I, I hope it's safe. Melthia, take care of matters here. Understood. Right then. Forward! In the heavens? Whoa. You guys look like you're in a bit of a jam. Hal Baird! Chloe! Are you all right? I... It was Theo. He betrayed us. And Nayon. He was the one who coaxed the Duke into staging a coup d'etat. Nayon is an agent of the Empire. Are you serious? If not is done, her Highness and His Majesty will be executed! Boy, you will never let that come to pass. This old misfortune now serves as savior, both to you and your kingdom. Come, rise from your despair. You were born for knighthood, boy. Yes, my lady. No way! How could Theo do this? I cannot hope to fathom as to why. It might behoove us to fathom some and discover his reasoning. 
Definitely. How are you holding up, Chloe? Uh, I'm all right. But Leticia was suffering so much, I could hardly look at her. Neither could Theo. All right, everybody, here's the plan. Let's go help Leticia and the King. And we gotta find Elena, too. Agreed. Of course, we needs make a silent approach, lest we raise the alarm and endanger Leticia and Elena. Do we still have time? I am certain a grand stage will be set for the execution, to signify the change in authority. I should much like to be in attendance. Target sighted. Perhaps they are privy to the whereabouts of Her Highness. Sweet! close will only see us captured. We must distance ourselves. You are now safe in the key emergency protocols. Hang back. I got it. Destroy. Target sighted. Get it together, man. This is far from over. But why must we fight our own brethren? This was meant to be a bloodless conflict. What are you doing here? You haven't come to rescue her all alone, have you? Not alone!
What have you say for yourself? Few of all people should be bothered least by the fall of the royal family. The fact, then, that I find this whole ruse to be utter lunacy should give you pause. Those three with the horns, they call themselves the Veer. As long as the Empire wields their power, the kingdom is doomed. My father was forced on this path because the Empire's strength is bolstered by their technology. You saw their otherworldly contraptions at Baldar, did you not? If we know of our enemy, there is no fight we cannot win. You know not what you speak of! Their strength is... Like something from another world? Huh. Got it. You. If only you never came, Letty would have been with Albi, safe and secure in Ada. Her life would have been spared. You fool! If Letty heard of a coup in the kingdom, do you truly believe she would have just cowered in safety? <clears throat> Leave it be, Albert. His difference to your years led to this conflict of allegiance between Leticia and his father. It was never meant to be as pure as the two of you. <clears throat> We're on our way to rescue Leticia, and we would sure appreciate your help. Are you asking me to betray you again? Damn it, Theo. If you're the same man I've looked up to all these years, you know what must be done. I'm no match for you, Albi. I do not believe news of my detainment has spread. If I accompany you, none will suspect a thing. You got a plan in mind? I can guide you to the execution site. Or rather, Albi should be able to guide you. You must go and save Letty. I will work to free Bertrand, and round up those knights who are not party to the coup. Alright, Theo, now you're talking. Any chance you know where Elena is? Don't tell me she's been. I am sorry. Neon used some strange bomb on her. She stopped drawing breath. I fear that... What the hell, man? Uh, don't freak me out like that. Come again? <laughs> if she's just powered down, all we need to do is boot her back up. It'll be okay. In other words, Elena is definitely still alive. Truthfully? Anyway... Let's get moving to that passageway. We can make our way there from the northeast. Come. Huh. Is Castle Asarius filled with secret escape routes or something? This one is an old maintenance tower. About earlier, can we truly say whether Elena yet lives? She's okay. All we need to do is just boot her back up. She's essentially just lost consciousness. She fell from the sky, her limbs were destroyed, and now she has lost all faculties. Could she be well? That leads back into town. The execution grounds are in the opposite direction. Remember to where this lets out? Above the spire in the castle square. That's as close as you can get to Letty and His Majesty. Bertrand and I shall lead a charge. Be ready and await our distraction. 
Afterwards, I will leave the rest to you. Now, leave Bertrand's liberation to me. You all should get to the execution site as swiftly as possible. It's okay. I know Theo's not lying. Very well. The passage has fallen into further disrepair since our youth. Be careful in there. Elena! So she was shut down. They would burn them at the stake? I see many Knights of Vale have come to marvel at the cruel spectacle as well. They will not see us from this distance. We are further than imagined. Can't you throw your chakram at them, Albert? Even had I the range to reach, it would not save all three of them. We have no choice but to charge in. The odds of survival against so many are bleak. Such action is not recommended. Yeah, we know that. But we can't just sit here and do nothing. There is no time to mull this over. Letty! She has resolved to die. No! Good people of Osirius, I understand the frustrations of you many who know so little. But know that the current royal family has done nothing to stop the spread of Helgar's disease. Even now, as sickness spreads rampantly across our land, they would thrust us into war with the Vale Empire. The royal family has no regard for the hardships of their loyal subjects. We can suffer their covetous thirst for war not a moment longer. As of this day, the kingdom of Osirius is no more. The lands we stand upon are to be reborn anew as the glorious United Empire of Vale. We can no longer sacrifice our loyal knights and subjects to their war machine. Pray tell, are a single one of you aware who struck the first blow at Baltar? It was none other than the forces under the command of King Osirius himself. His Excellency, Emperor Baldor, has called for reconciliation between our nations. Yet Princess Leticia refuses his offer, as does her father, the King. If we stand by and allow them to rule, then we do not but fan the flames of war, sentencing countless of our own to needless death. By our actions here today, we bring peace. Damn it, I can't believe this! Though the odds be against us, we must act. Confound it! Nothing good ever comes from involvement with the royal family. <gasps> Wait! Theo! Today marks the dawn of a new dynasty headed by Duke Lumbert Clamrath. The past must burn! Stay your hand! Father, Chancellor Neon, I beseech you, leave the execution of His Majesty and Princess Leticia to me! <sighs> you bastards! I will not allow any of you to lay another finger on my little sister! Quite the valor! He is outnumbered. He will soon be overwhelmed. Okay, it's now or never. I'm gonna use the crowd to get to Elena. Wait, Ray! Is it possible for me to wake her up? What? It'll be too late by the time we reach her. But what if I fly in with Duma from here? From this far away? That's nuts! Not if we use this. In the hands of a skilled semiomancer, this ore is a catalyst for levitation. Are you up to the task? I'll do my best. Okay, Ray? Right. You've got this. Slap this on the back of Elena's head for three seconds. That's it. Duma, you stick close to Nina. Understood. Leave it to me. 
by half. Your Majesty, are you all right? What? Yes. <sighs> Quit gawking! Kill them! Sir, we're under attack! What? Charge! Captain Birch? All right, let's join the party. Neon, what are you two doing? Colonel Valange! Could that be? Oh, yep. Looks like this bastard's another one of the Veer helping the Empire. You stay out of this! The princess's life is mine! Prepare to withdraw. Neon has lost control. Understood, Colonel. Wait! You would truly abandon us to this chaos? <laughs> you and the boy can see yourselves out of this mess. Blast it! We cannot let them get away! That is true. However, I doubt these two will simply let us pass. The orchestrators of the coup shall not be permitted to flee! Silence your tongue! You believe I shall sit idly by and let some pampered princess thwart my plans? Stay sharp, Once and for all. For you, horny face. Hey, 
Leon, lay down your arms. Just what happened here? Looks like you've had a time of it. There were a few bumps we didn't account for. Well, you're the one who has to give the Emperor the bad news. Hey, what is this, coffee hour? Do you think you're actually gonna get away? Pardon me. We actually will be getting away this easily. This is not over yet. We have much to deal with here. Princess Leticia, I have shamed my name and post by allowing this. You have not to apologize for, Captain. Without your help, we could have never stopped Neon's plot. That may be true, but this bedlam hasn't recovered in the slightest. Gosh, Uncle Midas, always so quick to be a downer. But he speaks the truth. Should the Empire come calling, we will not last the night. We lack soldiers, officers, barely not on hand. Theo did help save Leticia's life. Can't you lighten his punishment? He was in league with the enemy and harmed the royal family. I doubt many men should like to serve under his ilk. It was Theo and Neon who conspired at the laboratory on Mount Cotterinth as well. He is beyond pardon. That fool! Only our team from the Semiomancy Consortium is left uncrippled by this battle. If we have Semiomancers, what about using the Fulga? It was originally designed to be used by Semiomancers, right? Out of the question. Now isn't the time to be so stubborn. We do not have adequate time. You trust the Empire to sit idle while we sail a ship to Nilbeth? Retrieve the Levitas Ore, then return to construct a full Falga Battalion to be combat-ready? How much time do you suppose that might take? I do not state this lightly. It will take three months at the very least just to get the number of Falga at hand airborne and ready for combat. Impossible, then. If Baldar moves to attack, we would not last three days. Leticia, tell me. What are these Folga you all now speak of? It is merely a foolish old dream. Pay it no heed. No. I truly feel it would be beneficial for Father and Captain Bertrand to see it. Director Malthea? <sighs> Very well, then. Please, let us all continue this conversation at the Semiomancy Consortium.
go, here we go. Can't wait to see how much better I do. Can't wait to see how much better I do. What is this? The Folga. Ships built for semiomancers to sail through the skies. It sails not waters, but winds? When did you build such a thing? And Leticia, you knew of this? I did. Forgive me. If only I had properly lent you my ear then. I pity any who would bet the future of their kingdom on this. The Falga was not conceived to be a weapon. It is useless. My people in Nilbath should be ready to transport the Levitas ore by now. The ship from Canis's attack yet remains. If we take one ship from Kado, we can return with two. Who will commandeer the other vessel? Leave that to me. It should prove simple to oversee those efforts upon my return to Nilbath. The danger is too great. You need not oblige yourself to the kingdom to such a... If I disregard the danger facing Osirius now, the Empire's fangs will sink into Nilbath ere long. I am not one to slink away in fear while my allies are in peril. You would forgive an old man his misdeeds and blunders? Your Majesty may not be the panacea to soothe this ailing world, but you recognize that a kingdom is its people. Your Majesty, you did all you could at the time. You should suffer no guilt over having not done enough. But know that I will seek recompense for our efforts. Starting with the restoration of Midas's good name. 
Uh, all that. Withstanding our one obstacle is modulation of the converter. How long might it take to calibrate it to run even at minimum efficiency? A beautiful, if unrefined, piece of machinery. What a joy it would be to fly this through a sky full of stars. Again, you... Will you allow me to help protect the skies of this land? This world shouldn't have to suffer the spread of the Empire's dark influence any longer. What do you intend? Excuse me, Nina. May I see that ore? This would work, and withstand use in the mechanism. We just need a demonstration of its simple energy output. I would expect proper calibration time to take ten days at most. You continue to baffle me. Okay, great. Even if that's possible, how do we buy ten days worth of time? Well, while I was yet captive, Neon made me a proposal. Have you gone quite mad, Leticia? Out of the question! Is there another option left us, Father? No, but... The Imperial family of Vale wishes for me to join in matrimony with the Crown Prince, Gerard. I believe I may grant their request. Y you mean you're gonna get married? Indeed. I do not doubt preparations for a ceremony binding the heirs of our kingdoms should buy us ample time. Captain Bertrand, please send an envoy to the Imperial forces at Baldar. Let them know that Leticia Osarius would be overjoyed to accept the proposal of marriage to Crown Prince Gerard Eel Vale. I've been meaning to ask, did Theo really say something about Veer? Apparently, that is what those beings with the horns and sickly pallor call themselves. There's a planet in the Pangalactic Federation with the same name. You tell me the Feds are in cahoots with the Empire? We can't say for certain yet. At this time, we only know that those three are involved at the very least. Maybe... they're in the same situation we are? You think they also became stranded on this planet somehow? But found sanctuary with the Empire instead? At this point, all we can do is field conjecture. I shall see what I can uncover there while the wedding preparations are underway. I highly doubt the Empire will allow you to roam about freely. That matter aside, you know not of the world of stars above. What if me and Elena went disguised as your attendants? Neon would be on to our ruse immediately. What if I went along with her? What? As far as Neon and the Veer know, I'm just a deviceless former prisoner of war who doesn't know a thing about this world. Are you sure, Chloe? They won't suspect a thing if I'm the only one with you, right? Please, let me return all the kindness you've shown Ray and Elena. Very well. You have my full trust. <laughs> Seriously? How will you inform us of what you find out? There will be no need for any remote relay. The Fulga will embark on its maiden flight to recover both Chloe and myself. We can then use the intelligence Chloe and I return with to put a decisive end to the Empire. Everyone, I hope to have you all at my side in the fight to come. Hail, Crown Prince Gerard! Brave soldiers of Asarius, mark this day. For here we take our first steps beyond our nation's troubled history and into a future made radiant by peace.
I am Leticia Osarius. The launch. I will send an envoy to inform you when the date of the ceremony is decided. Hail, Her Highness Princess Leticia! Let us be off, Chloe. Yes, my lady. Watch your backs out there. How did it go? I feel somewhat fatigued. Please excuse me. It's because the so-called prince wasn't all that charming in reality. I'm worried about Leticia, and I hope Chloe will be all right too. We need to trust him. That, and do our damnedest to get the Fulga in the air so it's not all for nothing. We head to the consortium together. Maybe we can help out. We should probably go see the king and Bertrand. Let them know how it went. We're all in this together from here on out. That'd be my guess. Either in the throne room or the council chamber. Let's make our way there then. their business as usual, despite the fact we almost saw the end of the royal family and this nation. Their princess is putting her life on the line for them as we speak. They're not about to wallow in fear just yet. I'd say that shows that leading by example works a treat. Come on then, let's head to the palace. The king and Bertrand are probably on the second floor. Better check out the throne room.
Target sighted. Can we make up for those soldiers lost by calling back our forces in Kato? Marching our men too hard will lower morale and put the princess's plan in jeopardy. You speak true. I apologize for the foolish suggestion. Get some rest, my boy. A knight's service requires him to be rested and add attention. I shall feel no calm unless I keep active. Raymond, Nina, you two have my endless thanks. Nah, I, I mean, no, your highness. Please don't go thanking me. This was all Let Leticia's idea. Come now, speak freely. I am confronted by the realization I have not half the decisiveness or courage of mine own daughter. A miserable king like myself is long overdue for retirement, it would seem. Please don't say such a thing, your majesty. Do not mistake me. I will see this battle to its end. But when such an end comes, I see no reason to hold the throne from Leticia for a moment more. If I were to ask for but one thing, it would be that those she can trust, those like yourselves, might stand by her side come that day. Sure. Ought to see how things with the Polgar are coming along anyway. I want to check in on Uncle Midas and everyone. This is a simplified version of a standard generator. By improving its intake precision, we should at least double its energy efficiency. Developing wholly new components is no trivial task. Hmm. I see you're really going at it. Is there anything I can do to help out? Our work here will be highly specialized, so no. You too, Nina. I'm sorry, but the cure for Helgar's disease will have to wait. I understand. If there's anything we can do to help, just let us know. I'll contact you both through Ray's device if anything comes up. I gotta tell you, 
I never expected Midas to hop on board and help like this. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Uncle Midas definitely wasn't into the idea at first. But then Malkia gave him a talk. These young folk are fighting for their lives. Pull your head out of your posterior and help them! You infuriate me to no end. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I wish I could have seen that. You're mean. Anyway, now we're the only ones with nothing to do. Yeah, and it doesn't sound like there'll be much to do. At least until Malkia comes back with the ore. Wanna go for a walk? Yeah, sure. Why not? Hmm? Beg your pardon, but the captain would like to see you both. Pray hasten to the throne room. Uh, understood! Wonder why? An Imperial envoy has just brought word as to where and when Princess Leticia and Prince Gerard are to be wed. In seven days' time at Baldar Basilica. Seven days? This wedding is for their own crown prince as well. Surely that is not ample time to prepare. According to their messenger, peace cannot wait. As farcical as the intent, this betrothal is meant to both symbolize and solidify the peace between our nations. My bet is they know full well we're working on borrowed time. So, what do we do now? Elena said we need at least ten days to finish. Wait, wait, but... but it's not like they know about the Volga yet, do they? No, they do not. Warn Midas and the others of our situation. I'll go let them know. Hey, Bertrand. You would see things kept as Lady Nina says, yes? Bingo. If word gets out about the Fulga, we're as good as done for. I can only work to bolster our security and keep matters secret. But you have my word. I will do my best. Now we won't be able to rely on anyone else for even the smallest of tasks. The fact it is of highest secrecy changes not. Let us hasten to the Consortium. Right then. Better hurry and get word to everyone back at the Consortium. Quite the conundrum. All that I expected. Let's speed up our work as much as we can. We need to keep things discreet, too. So whatever little odd jobs you need, don't be shy. And lay it on us. We will, but do not expect to get a wink of sleep from today on. Wasn't planning on it. Esther happened here. Everyone lost steam pretty early on. <sighs> Did they now? Well, might I borrow sirs Albert and Raymond and Lady Nina? Of course. It would appear the Imperial Navy may have caught wind of the ship Lady Malkia took to Nilveth. You're kidding! Word from Kato is... they've spotted a number of Imperial ships. We really don't have time for this. What's our next move? 
If the forces of Baldar truly intend to advance upon Kato or Nilbef, we must discern the movement of the Imperial forces stationed there. Precisely. We must be ready to face the worst. We cannot risk sending anyone to Baldar who might worsen the situation. Would you lend your aid? Let's go! We're the only ones who can deal with this right now! Well, it's not like we can just pop in and have a look around, right? I bet they're in lockdown. I may have a notion. In the meanwhile, let us make for Baldar. We shall ascertain what their naval forces are up to. Baldar's off on the southern side, right? Yes, through the southern gate and across the Osirius Plains. I'm going to study so <laughs> we should be ready for a fight, yeah? Without question. We may not be fighting our way inside, but there is no telling what trouble we might encounter nonetheless. Let's head for the southern gate once we're good to go, then. They're gonna let us waltz right through the front door. So, what's your plan? We shall encroach from on high, east of Baldar. A bird's eye view should tell us all. Huh. Are you referring to... to the mill. There is no better teacher than experience. All is grist to the mill. All is grist to the mill. There is no better teacher than experience. All is grist to the mill. All is grist to the mill. Destroy. 
Really, a way to that hill from over here? There is indeed. Come, it is further ahead. You know this place, Ray? Yeah. Last time I was inside Baldar, though. This point offers vantage over all of Baldar. appears to be no major activity. Hmm. No warships are patrolling offshore, and the soldiers are not hurriedly preparing for battle. Maybe Bertrand was all worked up over nothing. That Lady Malkia's ship ran afoul of an Imperial patrol, I do not doubt. But the Empire must not deem it strategically important to deploy its ships to Nilbeth. I guess from their point of view, if they make a slight blunder and it starts a war with Nilbeth, then they wouldn't be able to focus on the fight against Osirius. They'll still be on high alert, though. I just hope that doesn't hold up the little rock shipment we're waiting on. We must hold our trust in Lady Malkia and the Royal Navy. Let us return. We need to report our findings to Captain Bertrand. For further excursions, we must return with news of Baldar post haste. Right, to the royal city then.
captain is likely waiting in the council chamber on the second floor of the... Once we've gotten everything taken care of, we should talk with Bertrand and take some time to rest up. As it may, we should advise all civilian ships in Kato and Rife to refrain from setting sail. You have done excellent work. Lady Elena and Maester Midas are still hard at their research. I have been given orders to ask that you rest adequately upon your return, if you would. Malkia! Back already? <laughs> that sure was fast. The Levitas ore was ready to load on our arrival, allowing us to sail back through the night. But the ore yet remains in Kado. I hastened back alone. Why? I heard from the boy upon our return to Kado that Midas has been working non-stop with no rest. Time is of the essence, I am well aware, but his results will be abysmal if he does not sleep. I've just given Midas a stern talking to, and shall be taking over his duties while he gets some shut-eye. You can handle it? This would not be my first time doing so. Besides, I understand Levitasor better than anyone else. Ain't that the truth. All right, then. I hear the boy alone has been charged with transporting the ore. Do help him as much as you can. I dare say he could use the assistance. You got it. I'll head out to Kato with Nina now. Oh, quit being such a baby. Ugh, cut me some slack, will ya? You saw that ore, right? Me, Albert, and Bertrand carried it all to the Consortium ourselves. I can hardly even feel my arms anymore. Those two are doing just fine, by the way. Maybe you need more exercise. They're lifelong soldiers. I'm just some regular old guy, okay? <laughs> Never met a civilian like you before, Ray. I'm helping out with the ore refinement from today. I entrust the heavy lifting to you. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. Ugh. Our worst fears have been realized. We have uncovered an Imperial spy among our men. How do you manage that? We have made the discovery as we gathered intel on those involved in the coup, and those wounded during the withdrawal from Baldar. Luckily, it seems to be someone with no knowledge of the Falga. Theo's father and Neon must have snuck them in. Speaking of which, where is Theo and his dad now? Locked away in the dungeon. Good. Today is when we start the calibration of the Falga in earnest, but there's no knowing for sure if we'll reach the number we need. I'd like to pull some solid info on the Empire from him if I could. Ah. Very well, then. I shall inform my men to grant you passage. The dungeon guard should be somewhere on the northwestern side of the ground floor. But now our princess. We should be able to get to the dungeon from the northwestern side of the palace. Let's go see what Theo and Lambert have to say. I'm 
guessing Theo's further ahead. Initiate emergency protocols. Hang back. I got you. Detected. Prep for engagement. Greetings, Ray. Now, what brings you here? So, you hear how Leticia's getting hitched? Hitched? Yeah. Her and the Empire's Prince Gerard are getting married. What? Letty accepted their proposal? To buy us the time we need to flip the tables. Unlike your father there, our little princess hasn't given up this fight. Naught can be done to stand against the menace the Virians pose. To defy them would be madness. I wanted to ask you something. You and Theo know all sorts of stuff about the Empire, yeah? Don't suppose you've ever seen anyone else there that looks like Valange, Gaston, or Lola? I have not. Their celestial ship carried only the three of them but was large enough to house three or four warships. Uh-huh. That's all, then? Are you so oblivious? A vessel larger than imagining, able to float in the sky and fire endless volleys of light. I have seen the trifling guns they carry, able to turn boulders to dust and pierce through iron. How can one... Resist the Empire after witnessing such... Yeah, ain't the first time I've witnessed it. What? Thanks. It's all I needed. I'll be back if I think of anything else. Huh. We might need to play our hand a little better. I should talk with Captain Bertrand. Flying without a trial! Such drivel! The Fulga must be a secret. When we consider the quandary facing Princess Leticia and Chloe, we have no surplus of time on our hands. With the immense power at the Empire's disposal, our top priority should be getting the results we need. Don't worry. 
With my simulation data, we shouldn't have any need for an actual test run. I designed the Falga. How will I know its limits without a field trial? I can provide guidance via screen. I promise it will output stable performance, even on the maiden voyage, even in poor weather conditions. That's all empty theory. A test is necessary to be certain of actual flight. Do whatever you want. Just do something. Today alone, I've got to service 20 Volga. None of your blathering matters if there's no damn Volga to fly. <sighs> Knowing they were built by you and checked by Elena is all the guarantee I need. Unless you want to tell me your theories or Elena's simulations are anything but perfect. I'm left with no choice. But I shall run a trial if the chance presents itself. You certainly know how to handle Midas. I take no pride in it. You want us to have Duke Lambert attend the royal wedding? Get not so loud, Cap. The idea seems right madness. What is your aim? Your Majesty, we can assume they'll have Neon and Valange there. The Duke will be our bluff. He was the leader of the National Forces, so having him there will leave them second-guessing our military might. If we allow the Duke to participate at such an important national event, it'll make it seem like his traitorous forces are holding up better than expected. And what it will also do... Is lead our foes to believe we've no choice but to rely on the very man who plotted against us. Hmm. Exactly. The more they make light of us, the more impact the Falga should have. And how might things be progressing? Let's just say, uh, there's a reason why I want us to use every option we have. Bertrand. <sighs> say no more, your highness. We are out of time. Uh, wait! Surely you can spare a few moments. We are nearly ready. His Majesty and the Corps have already left for Baldar. The ceremony is less than half a day away. Even were the Folga completed, no time would be left to coordinate with our ground forces. There's no choice. You cannot give up on us. Elena and the others haven't. We don't have time for tests, and your Semiomancers aren't up to par. Using those things now would be asking for trouble. The Folga could never have been finished in the time allotted. However, this fact does not change our mission. We shall see the wedding disrupted, her highness safely rescued, and Baldar wrested back from the Empire's grasp. Let us build up the number of Falka for the final confrontation with the Empire. <sighs> our top priority for this operation is the safe return of her highness. Theo, Raymond, and I shall enter first and conceal ourselves near the Basilica. Once her escort allows us an opportune moment, we will surround Her Highness and work with the attending Bertrand Corps to extract her from the ceremony hall. This was my idea. It's risky for sure, I know. But we need people who know the situation on the ground over there. The King and Captain Bertrand both agree. If such is His Majesty's wish. Sorry to do this to you. Give Midas and them our best. <sighs> Very well. But please, be careful out there. Our aim is the hill to the east of Baldar. We can enter the Citadel from there. We leave at once, you two.
Anyone home? We have some... Thanks. on the same side now, so let's just forego all the nonsense and work like a team, okay? I appreciate your offer to travel together. Let us wait no longer. I trust you remember the location of that knoll? Of course I do. Nothing could take it from my memory. We can reach it from the path to the southeast. as it ever was. Quite true. Let us make our way atop it. Alright. Looks clear. Let's slip in before we lose the cover of night. Theo. You should know. I do. Should my sentence be execution at your hands, I accept my fate. But... I swear on my life, I shall never again betray Letty or any of our allies. I place my trust in your words. Hey, come now. Do not trust me again so easily. It makes me nervous. 
No. I believe you. But I shall strike you down just as swift should my faith be misplaced. That I swear on my life. I know you will. I would ask you to share what you have said here with Letty herself. That much I can promise. Let us make for Baldar. to be our move. We may perhaps blend in with the throng, but security is out of force. Yeah. Here we are. Wait, let me slip in from above and open it. Come on then, Duma. We gotta get up on that roof. We too shall continue our search for somewhere we might enter. We'll rejoin you later then, Ray. place that way is gonna lead is straight into a dungeon cell. Maybe I could get there with Duma's help. is a conveniently open window that I could get in through there with Dumas. Is the Volga ready, Elena? Connection established. Do you copy? Does this device belong to Raymond Lawrence, captain of the Edis, outbound from the planet of Vergold? Huh? This ain't no Vergoldian code. Who is this? Pardon the sudden contact. This is the first officer of the Pangalactic Federation vessel Astoria, Mario the L. Astoria? You've got some nerve. Please allow me to explain. We are currently en route to rescue the crew of the Edis. <laughs> rescue? I've got a record of you destroying the Edis, and a freighter's worth of evidence of you breaching your own UB3. Once I'm off this rock, you are done for. You hear me? Wait, who is in violation of the UP3? Explain yourself, please. What is going on? I ain't looking for help from someone who shot me down in the first place. I've already made contact with Vergold and got some actual help on the way. Thanks for wasting my time. Over. Wait, we still have to. <sighs> like I'm not busy enough. Come on, Ray. Gotta get back to the gang quick. Stairs, huh? Can't hurt to see what's down there. Sweet! Come on, this way. And you are certain about this? Yeah, have some faith. Is Ott a miss? Ott sure is. Yeah, forget about it. I found a place for us to hide out. Come on. Right. Let's 
make our way upstairs and look for somewhere to hide out. Back there looks like a good spot, eh? And one which grants us vantage over the interior of the Basilica as well. <laughs> I hid myself away for entire nights in places like this as a youth. <sighs> hey, Raymond. <sighs> what is it? You are shouldering a fair amount of pressure. Do not think you are alone. Rely upon us, should the need come. Sure, yeah. When the time comes. I see Neon is quite in shock to see my father in attendance. He is not of our concern. Where is her highness? She's today's star. We're just gonna have her out there on display. Today, on this finest day, it is an honor to gather here with you all as we witness history in the making. Our world has long been split in two, but today the Vale Empire and the Kingdom of Osirius at last come together as one. What the hell is that? Scorpio. Scorpio what? Gerard Euville, Leticia Osirius, as of this very moment, the two of you stand as the makers of history, new rulers of our world. Step forth. Raymond, no word as of yet? Nope. And we're out of time. Looks like we'll be putting on a show, fellas. Come on. Elena! Outside. A new beginning! For a fleeting moment. I was not so averse to the idea of our marriage. <sighs> but I cannot love one who would forfeit their own wedding ceremony to some foul plot. Now, let us join our allies in the fray. 
Lady, why have you returned? Huh. Excitement has always followed you from the days of our youth, cousin. Where's the Emperor? <clears throat> We've lost him. Their numbers are too vast. And Prince Gerard? I am jealous. There are those who would lay their lives down for you. And in such numbers. For me come none. A pitiful man, such as myself could never truly deserve your love. Oh, you poor little thing. The Emperor has already been evacuated. Let's get you to safety too. Leave me be! This is too much already. Oh, stop being such a petulant brat. Ax your age! Lola, you take care of the rest. Very well. We'll have a discussion about the device upon their return. Yes, yes. Hmm, dissent amongst their ranks. I'm so sorry you had to see that. I commend you for carrying out such a cunning plan, despite the limits of this world's technology. But I come, under order of the Emperor. We'll be taking Princess Leticia into our custody. We are past such foolishness. This battle shall rage on until only the victor is left standing. Then expect no mercy from us. As long as we keep you alive, it doesn't matter what happens to your friends.
underestimated you. Is that the best we can do? Confound it. Father! Fool! Why have you come here? The battle has been decided. The Imperial forces are on the retreat. Most of their warships off the coast were driven away by our Fulga battalion. Victory is ours. Midas. I am sorry to have forced your Fulga into battle. And for much else. Ready to reconcile, then. <sighs> we can discuss this after our return. Yes, and discuss we shall. These are the Virians you spoke of? Albert, feel. Seize them. There is much I might ask of them. <laughs> This... isn't over! I am Lieutenant Mariel L. Kenny of the Pangalactic Federation. The two of you are under arrest for violation of the Underdeveloped Planet Preservation Pact. I know that voice. A friend of yours? Yeah, real good friend. She's from the Astoria. The one that destroyed my ship. What? You're trying to take out the Virians in order to cover your tracks, are you? That is not true. We only... Behind you, Raymond! Neon, the battle is over. Surrender now. Is that your idea of a joke? Your Majesty. Because this is far from over. You can have Baldar back. One little fortress means nothing. We are not defeated yet. Theo! Look at what your selfish betrayal has cost us. After you and your father were promised glory under the Empire. Death and allowing such a thing come to pass. Then die. <laughs> Why? What would possess you to protect me? I am sorry, my boy. I should have known your anguish. <laughs> I ought to have done this from the start. Let us take our leave, Neon. Damn it! Get back here! Father! Father! His vitals are fading fast. Without a med pod, he might not make it. Father! Open your eyes! Please! I have yet to atone for my betrayal to you! Hold. We still have much to discuss back home. My good friends. I... I am sorry. <laughs> Radio your sick bay. Listen to me. That ship of yours knows what's going on down here. Get that man into a med pod, now! I, I can't! The underdeveloped planet protect- It's your Federation tech that's about to kill this underdeveloped planet's king! <sighs> We've got an android here recording this entire situation! I dare you to let him die! I'll rip apart the Federation piece by piece till there's not a damn thing left! Fine. I get it.
This is Marielle. Akizuki, do you read? I am requesting a med pod transfer here. Stat. It is for the elderly man lying near me. Father! Don't worry, Leticia. The king is gonna be okay. Do you truly mean it? You bet. Now let me introduce you to our savior who's gonna see to it. A golden child of the Pan-Galactic Federation, and apparently a regular UP3 rule breaker, Lieutenant Marielle Kenny. I've got a lot of questions, and you've got the answers. Understood. Please commence transfer. Father... Leticia... Oh... Oh... Oh, Father... Oh, thank goodness... Majesty truly well now? Yes, there is no longer any cause for concern. Indeed, my body has made that much very apparent. Why, I feel as if my entire being has been cleansed. Lambert, now I too have seen it. A glimpse of the realm of stars. I see. If these fellows were our foes... <laughs> I would surely have lost my nerve much, much earlier than you. Brother. While inside that contraption, I overheard one of your subordinates state... ...that in saving my life, you may have violated the laws of your world. It was the Pangalactic Federation that violated the laws of your kingdom first. That place. A boat which sails among the stars. Uh, I should love to see its interior at least once. Pardon me, your highness. But please, you must rest for now. Hmm. Leticia Burton. If you would be so kind as to take things from here, I believe I will take Lady Mario's advice. Yes. But father, I... Be at ease. I shall remain beside your father. Maester... We have much to discuss. Including what comes next as well. I understand. Thank you, Maester Midas. Hmm. All right. Maybe that's our cue to have our own little talk. Okay, then. Let me contact my ship and have it prepare for transfer. Hey, Bertrand. Is there somewhere around here we could borrow for a bit while we talk? But... but that means the people of this planet could overhear us. Give me a break. A Kenny getting all stiff over some treaty? Or did you forget that this is all on account of you using us for target practice? So be it. Mariel to Akizuki. I'm going to speak with Captain Raymond and some of the local populace for a moment. Yes, I understand. However, please hold your position. Thank you for waiting, shall we? Let us make our way to the council chamber. Right. Yes. Thank you. Sweet!
The truth is, I have no idea why Bennett the Astoria's captain opened fire. It's... it's a mystery to me. Is that your idea of a joke? Lieutenant Kenny, Captain Raymond's point about treaty violations stands. I should inform you. I will be making a record of this planet, and everything stated between us here. If you are unable or unwilling to speak candidly, this discussion will likely become unpleasant. I am well aware of that. Um, am I correct in assuming you're an android? Yes, I am an Arnold Robotics model E014297. Her name's Elena. I have heard that the androids made by Arnold Robotics on Vergold are among the finest in the galaxy. Elena, I swear to you that all I speak here is absolutely true. Including the fact that I came here to help. What is this bull? Ray. Lieutenant Kenny, I logged an unnatural delay between the second and third barrage just before the Edis was downed by the Astoria. Can you please explain what caused this? The truth is... Captain, we can be in contact range of the Virgold registered merchant vessel Edis in three minutes. Good work. Activate cloaking device. 60 seconds after activation, warp out and prepare to attack. Captain, please wait. May I remind you, cloaking is for emergency situations only. It is also prohibited during warp for the safety of other vessels. And I'm saying this is an emergency situation. Or perhaps you elite officers can't follow orders without explaining each little law they're based upon. No, it's just that we have no reason to fire upon a ship from planet Virgold, especially without warning. Even if they were hostile, attacking without warning is a violation of Article 32. Cloak has been activated, Captain. Now exiting warp. Wait! Lieutenant Kenny, I didn't hear you repeat the Captain's orders. Upon exiting warp, prepare... prepare to attack. Now entering conventional space. One million kilometers to the Edis. Currently at one-fourth impulse. Excellent. Decloak at 500,000 kilometers. Arm the phase cannons. Fire the first barrage at 350,000 kilometers. Phase cannons? Do you intend to destroy them? Lieutenant Kenny, I didn't hear you repeat the order. Repeating the orders isn't merely for confirmation. It is also to allow for correction in the event of an order given in error. We have an issue. It appears the good lieutenant doesn't know what activities the Virgolians have been up to. Are you referring to their recent actions as an anti-Federation influence? Even then, attacking them unprovoked and without notice will only work to their benefit. Now within 350,000 kilometers of enemy vessel, Replace Lieutenant Kenny on tactical authority. Now. Fire the first barrage. Firing first barrage. No! Enemy shields efficiency holding at 60%. Arm proton torpedoes and launch in succession once we have a lock on them. Just make sure not to hit their engines. We're after the cargo they have stored there. I want it in one piece. We have a lock. Firing proton torpedoes. Enemy vessel shields holding at 20%. Captain. Their warp drive remains intact. They could still attempt escape maneuvers. Hurry with the next phase cannon barrage. I'd rather have them destroyed than let them get away. Captain, what you are doing is criminal. Upon my authority as first officer, I hereby relieve you of command. Very well. I do believe it's written in your beloved Federation laws that the consent of three senior officers is needed to relieve a captain of their command. 
Are there any among you that agree with Lieutenant Kenny? Wait, what? Lieutenant, you are hereby removed from duty for the crimes of disobeying an order and treason. Now off to the brig, Maria. Wake up, everyone! This is crazy! What's happened to you all? I see. That would certainly explain the delay before their third barrage. Hmm. In which case, Raymond, I do believe we owe Lieutenant Kenny some thanks. Sure. If her story's true. So what cargo was this Bennett guy after, anyway? Duma, most likely. That thing? Hmm. The three Virians appeared most interested in Duma as well. They, too, are part of your Federation, correct? What are you? But what I still don't get is why you're here now, Mariel. Weren't you sent to the brig? I was released as soon as we returned to base. My guess is the captain thought me a nuisance, but little more than that. So I borrowed a ship from the space station and escaped once I had the chance. What? I was hoping to recover the black box of the Edis. With it, I should be able to acquire proof of Captain Bennett's misconduct. I find it unlikely that a Federation base would overlook the departure of a borrowed vessel not within their flight plans. That's way worse than just disobeying orders. Why would you go so far? When I was little, my grandmother taught me the ins and outs of the Federation's core systems. I can infiltrate them pretty much as I please. I'm certain my use of the ship will go unnoticed for some time. And my grandfather had this to say to me. Trust in what you think is right. I know you've got what it takes to stick to your principles through thick and thin. Now... Go and apologize to the Edis's captain. Emerson T. Kenny. Quite the hero sending his granddaughter here with a stolen ship. That's not all. Some members of the crew who doubted the motives of Bennett and the Astoria also came along with me. The high-speed merchant vessel Akizuki is now currently monitoring my status from planetary orbit. You mean to say that your comrades are observing all this from some unseen location? Oh, um, yes. I know it might be discomforting, but it was a necessary precaution to ensure my safety. Uh, thank you for healing my father. On behalf of my kingdom, I offer you my sincerest gratitude. Oh, did I misunderstand in some way? Um, well, no, not exactly. I just wasn't expecting. Is it odd that I wish to express my thanks to those who saved the life of a loved one? Uh. Chloe, do you believe Mariel here is lying? No, Princess Leticia. I believe she is telling the truth. <laughs> Ray, you are within your rights to be angry about your vessel. Be that as it may, I find Lieutenant Kenny to be honest in her attempts to enact justice. <sighs> All of the crew, including myself, share the blame for not stopping the Astoria's attack upon your ship. You have my word that we will make the proper restitutions, Punish those responsible, and bring the truth to light. Captain Raymond. <sighs> Fine. If you do end up in a Federation courtroom for this, I suppose I can appear on your behalf as a witness. Thank you. 
Now, we know that Bennett is after Duma. And also that you, apparently, don't know why. Next question is, who the hell are these Virians? Well, I can't say for certain. However, those two I met were also being hunted by Captain Bennett, much like the Edis. They are military deserters from Veer, another Federation member planet. <sighs> deserters? So that's why there are no other Virians in the Empire. This is all according to Bennett, though, so I can't be sure how much of it is true. The only thing I know for certain is that they are acting unlawfully here on this planet. Violating the UP-3, huh? Yes, correct. I realize this is rude of me to ask, but will you help me apprehend them? <laughs> Why don't you just transfer them? That's impossible without transport trackers or communicators, as you know. <laughs> it would seem, then, that the interests of all present are in alignment. Yeah, we gotta charge into the Empire, take the Virians alive, and put an end to this war. Those three are the key to everything happening on this planet and up in space. I cannot permit the use of Akizuki's equipment, but I can assist, personally. Hmm. What's the matter? Oh, it's just that while I understand what Marielle is saying, there's still something that kind of bothers me. I got the impression that the Virians had truly sworn their loyalty to the Empire. Huh? It's not like we have to change our plan or anything. Just something to keep in mind, I guess? Your hunches often prove correct. We will be careful. Right. Now then, I think it best if we consult with Maester Midas and the others about how to proceed. Let us return to my father's chambers. Let us proceed to His Majesty's quarters. Indeed. Maester Midas and everyone are like to be present already. Sorry, but my answer is no. Is that so? Uh, what's up? Uh, would you mind waiting a moment longer? It was Leticia who ran about trying to complete the Folga while Melthia completed preparations. Raymond and the others helped along the way, and Malkia provided the stones. I simply showed up at the right time, hardly a praiseworthy accomplishment. And yet, it would not have reached completion without you. I must also make amends for not protecting you after you saved Albert. It does not befit a king to dwell on the past. Admit that what happened was beyond your control. Your softness is what enables Lambert to take advantage of you. Midas. And the war is not yet over. Regardless of the truth, the path this nation has followed for the past 14 years was set by the choice you made long ago. Grant me a seat now for my meritous deeds pertaining to the Falga, and you know full well that conflict will follow. Midas. You recognize the Falga is not a weapon of war. That alone is honor enough. <laughs> However, if you must absolutely insist on seeing me rewarded, grant me a Folga of my own once everything is settled. That is all I ask. No, two Folga. Why? If we live long enough, there may come a time where we wish to fly our separate ways, don't you think? No, one is enough. <laughs> Very well, it shall be done. What's so amusing? Oh, it is merely that I never thought I would live to see you make such a face. I agree. Blast you both. Ah, huh, 
don't think you have to worry anymore. <laughs> Father, Maester Midas, I must speak with you about what's to come. May I? Are you really gonna tag along? I can't imagine you've ever been in a real scuffle. Please don't underestimate me. My grandfather taught me how to shoot, and my grandmother instructed me in close quarters combat. A war on an underdeveloped planet doesn't frighten me. And another thing. Address me with a little more respect. Oh, got it, Marielle. But isn't assisting in a war about as big a violation of the UP3 as it gets? I am keeping my involvement to the bare minimum. I came with as little equipment as possible to reduce the impact the Federation's actions have upon this planet's historical trajectory. Not to mention that I came here alone. Just relax, okay? A whole lot happened, but we're gonna be fighting on the same side now. So let's try and keep things friendly, okay? I was just asking if she's ready. I don't think a Kenny would get cold feet over a little UP3 infraction. And how can I question your moxie after you went and stole a ship? If you doubt my resolve, then I'll convince you with my actions. <sighs> I am in no position to argue anyway. Pray, don't you think that was a little childish? Eh, as long as she's flashing around her Fed credentials, she deserves all she gets. Regardless, the war on this planet is nearing its end. We need to make sure we leave with no regrets. Not much time left till things are set to really pop off. I wonder what everyone else is up to. What's up? It would seem that we are nearing the end. Yeah. Ray, if I may, what is your home planet like? I guess it's a normal planet. I know not what you consider normal. It's just normal. What can I say? Hey, Leticia, tell me. What's the Kingdom of Osirius like? It is beautiful, vast, and normal. <laughs> <laughs> yep. For most people, normal is wonderful. Oh, why must you tease me so, Ray? I'm sorry for teasing you. To be perfectly honest, my mind is just focused on preparing for what needs to be done tomorrow. I pray tomorrow brings us victory. You said it. Guess I'd better get some shut-eye.
Have you completed your preparations, everyone? Yep. Hmm. <laughs> the Royal Army and Fulga unit have already reached the plains south of Baldar. We must make haste. Everyone, do remain alert. We now move to make our way through Baldar. The thought of its design was I, yes. Unbelievable. It's just so clearly far beyond the civilization level of this planet. You must be an engineer of great talent. <laughs> Your honeyed words will garner you not. <laughs> oh. Um, what was the composition of the poison Neon used on His Majesty? I'm sorry. But I can't share the details of the analysis. Uh, oh, right, because of that preservation pack or whatever. Okay, then. Can you tell me something else? Was the poison something that only those variants could use? Or was it from the stars? No, though I'm unsure if it exists on this planet. But it was a substance widely available throughout the galaxy. Thank you so much! Oh, great! That means one day even I can learn to cure it! I noticed that you did not seem perturbed by my appearance, Maria. Uh, what do you mean? The people of Osirius and Vale are not familiar with the sight of Wee Trathen. Most, well look quite shocked upon encountering me for the first time. Though not the majority, many races in the galaxy have appearances similar to your own. So, there is no reason why I should find you especially surprising. Finally, we can get through this place without all the sneaking around. here ever wanted to be caught up in this war. We gotta put all this to an end for their sake, too. That no time left to waste now. Better head for the Vale Empire once we're set to go. Find Bertrand and his men posted outside the gateway to Baldar. Best head there first. Don't get caught. Wait, Let's get him close and personal. Down. Stay where you are. begins once we have made our way to the Imperial capital, Theo. See to it you are not exhausted before we arrive. I need not be reminded. I could make no graver sin in this moment. Looks like you know how to take care of yourself well enough. Of 
course I do. I didn't come along just to try him. Is the battle already underway? It is. The Folga Battalion has begun its assault. Shall we fall back? No, no! I'm not leaving until this whole thing is over with. Not after they tried to execute Leticia. Not after all the trouble they brought. It's me here now. Insufficient output. Except for the General awareness confirmed. Updating system. Improvements in general awareness confirmed. Updating system. Improvements in general awareness confirmed. Been awaiting you, Your Highness. Status report. No major resistance from the Imperial capital. Our forces are in place. We storm the city on your order, Your Highness. As planned, we will call off the vanguard in order to minimize casualties among non-combatants. Above all else, we must secure Emperor Bulldor, Prince Gerard, and the three with horns and pale skin. Aye. of Osirius, with me! We make our way now for Castle Vale. Expect the Imperial forces to work fiercely to stop us. We must stay alert and remain guarded. Out of my face! Come on! Oh, I 
starting to click. A little more practice couldn't hurt. Things are finally starting to click. Things are finally starting to click. Things are finally starting to click. This couldn't hurt. A little more practice couldn't hurt. Things are finally starting to click. A little more practice couldn't hurt. A little more practice couldn't hurt. Things are finally starting to click. A little more practice couldn't hurt. Starting to click. A little more practice couldn't hurt. A little more practice couldn't hurt. Things are finally starting to click. A little more practice couldn't hurt. Things are finally starting to click. Things are finally starting to click. Good to go. Let me at him. Waiting you. Aeon! I welcome you all. Emperor Baldor of the Vale Empire, your days as ruler are at an end. Your son will not be wed to our princess. That no longer matters. Even should the Empire fall this day, Princess Leticia will nevertheless become my daughter. What is he on about? And not only her. All of you before me now will soon become my beloved children. That does not sound like the last deluded words of a man backed into a corner. I agree. That is the response of someone with firm conviction in their words. Prince Gerard, the people have spoken. An accord between Osarius and Vale. Let there be peace between us. Princess Leticia, uh, I... Peace? <laughs> Still, you espouse such naivete. A kingdom and empire are incompatible. 
This will never change until one or the other is no more! Neon, what is it that has pushed you this far? Osarius ignored the plight of the Empire when the rot ravaged us 15 years ago. Even with just a few of your Iatromancers, my parents, my loving brothers and sisters, would still be with me this day! But Osarius is not solely to blame! Silence! Not only my family, but even our Empress Tatiana will find no clemency with me. As a lord, I must respect the fervor of one who displays such sorrow for my beloved. I ask you grant him opportunity for justice. Neon, why did he come to this? my heartfelt sympathy to this man who had yet to become my child. I am sure Neon would be most pleased. Wh what are you saying? Now, come face me, Princess Leticia. I shall be waiting on the throne. I eagerly await our next encounter. Door. Prince Gerard, there is no reason we must fight further. Princess Leticia. Well, that was our invitation. Let's go have a little chat with him, eh? <laughs> yes. Yes, I agree. I'm 
your attention. Let us make haste to the throne room. Emperor Bulldor is likely there. Let's go. Now then, Falange, Gaston, Lula. Our situation deteriorates by the moment. I assume you three must have some means of remedying this. Please allow us to handle this, Your Majesty. Princess Leticia is ultimately the heart of us serious. Take control of her, and all this can change. Besides, our ride will be coming soon. Lola, why the hesitation? We do not have the luxury of choice here. How did it come to this? God, you mean we gotta fight them too? Lola! Your Highness! If you harbor any doubts, there is always the option to talk this through. Fighting is not the only solution. Says the one that came charging in with a flying weapon. Lola! Lola! I know. Must we fight? We must. We're also going to need that special Duma if we are to enact the Emperor's vision. Uh, special Duma? Is there something different about this one? There are two areas in where I differ from other survey model Duma. First, I am designed to function autonomously, and I am thus severed from the network with other Duma. I have the capacity to act according to my own judgments. This mention of other Duma interests me, but what is the other difference? I am also a combat model. All of the abilities I have provided to you in battle thus far are not found in other Duma. These abilities have value as research. Normally, Duma share their data amongst each other via the network, and their choices are dependent upon decisions made within that network. We are the ones who should be utilizing the powers of that Duma. I have no intention of aiding you. If you understand Duma, then you already know this. Which means we have to take what we want. Now, enough talk. Prepare yourselves. We shall prepare! All for survival! Worse. Dog. 
thought about this situation. Ridiculous! Lola, please! Listen to me! Stop! Stop! Don't try to confuse me! There is a path through this that does not in... The violence! You're a fool! Long ago. You know that, dear princess? Violence will serve no purpose. Magnificent. A fine display of the strong wills that drive you. I do believe I should like to test through the Song of Steel just how well those fierce wills of yours hold up to my own. Emperor Baldor, why? Surely there is no need to fight any longer. I do this precisely because there is a need. The peace of our world demands it. Father, it is over. The Empire is... Gerard, this is merely the beginning. Call this an Empire though we may. In the end, it comes down to the strength of one man. Bear witness to this truth now! Is there no other way? Relinquish your fears. Prove that you can bring me to my knees. Promise me I'll keep cool. Accelerate! <laughs> Done, princess. I see that I alone had no chance to be a match for you. Do you see now, Valange? The princess? No, the people of this world are of strong roots indeed. We didn't foresee the inhabitants of this world being so formidable. Even without Duma's abilities, we stood no chance. Colonel Valange. The key is that Duma there. It's unlike any we've encountered, and far beyond our capabilities. We collected some valuable data. Where are you from, Duma? Just what do you all know about Duma? Scorpium. Engineered life forms. Scorpium. You are not familiar with them. They dwell amongst the stars. Wonderful beings capable of plucking all pain from this world and bringing about everlasting peace. As long as humanoids exist as they are now, their desired utopia will never exist. How simple. That's merely how you choose to see it. 
as an android from Vergald. What are you inferring? Perhaps it's best if you enlighten them yourself. Eh, Duma? Tell them your purpose and identity. Correct. Scorpium is an integration of artificial and organic life. The name refers to our cybernetic collective, which exists to seek out further evolution as a novel life form. I am a probe, created to survey and assess the suitability of organic candidates for integration. An integration of artificial and organic life? Is that possible? Compensating the failings of flesh within organic matter? Such a lure is not unusual. I presume this Scorpion simply works on a much grander scale. Like Elena, it sounds as if their goal is to force evolution's hand through technology. Incorrect. Our primary purpose for integrating cybernetic and organic life is a congruence that draws upon the strengths of both sides to the fullest. We do not seek evolution that extends along a course biased toward one side or the other. So you aren't just cyborgs then? No, the reverse in fact. It is not so much making an organic base more cybernetic, but Scorpium is rather making certain aspects of a cybernetic base more organic. Affirmative. The observations of the Arnold Robotics Android are astute, as expected. Wait, what? The base is cybernetic? The end morphological faculties may appear as such. However, it is also conscious as a life form. In other words, major philosophical differences emerge when the concepts that form the basis of self-awareness are derived from either organic or cybernetic. These present some drastic differences in outlook. I see. Your sense of self-consciousness as an artificial being has been of interest to me. Since Duma, or rather Scorpium, achieved such a state, they must now be seeking to further evolve themselves by integrating with humanoids. Wait, wait, hold up. I am completely lost here. These are some pretty tough concepts you're tossing around. So how is it that the Emperor is so familiar with this stuff that throws us spacemen for a loop? <laughs> Marielle, an unidentified vessel is approaching the Aster Sector at high speed. ETA to the system is 36 hours. What? Our escort, no doubt. Melange, Gaston. Yes. yes. Colonel? Gaston! What is this? Lola, thank you for all of your hard work. It was due to your efforts that we obtained such a marvelous specimen as the Emperor here. We are truly grateful. What? What are you saying, Gaston? Do you mean to say you're going back to Scorpium? Oh, come now, Lola. Surely you knew this from the beginning. Now, the Colonel and I must be going. We have to do our part to protect the Emperor. Gerard, I leave this Empire and world in your hands for the time being. Forge peace with Princess Leticia. And wait patiently for the inevitable return of your Lord. Father! Wait! You think you can escape? Please, I wouldn't try if I didn't think it possible. Pardon? Mario calling the Akizuki. Send me the trace coordinates of the two who just vanished. I'm sorry, but they've completely disappeared from sensors. We can't track them. No. What now? Another ship is approaching from the opposite direction. Looks like it should be here in 48 hours. I've identified the ship. It's the Aldus, a Vergoldian merchant vessel. It's Antonio. Marielle, how about opening up a proxy channel with your ship? Copy that. Marielle to the Akizuki. Please open a channel to the merchant vessel Aldus as soon as possible. Once the channel is open, patch it through to Captain Raymond's universal device. 
Understood. Whenever you're ready. This is Antonio Lawrence, captain of the Vergoldian vessel, the Aldous. Who am I? Antonio! It's me, Raymond! <laughs> Ray? I is that really you? Why are you using a Federation frequency? It's a long story, but I've teamed up with a Federation officer. There's a Federation ship in orbit around Aster IV, but they are not hostile. I need you to focus your attention on the unidentified ship coming in from your opposite direction. I'll be in touch again once things calm down. Over. Wait, Ray! What nonsense are you talking about? Now, I take it we don't have any leads on where the Emperor and his friends ran off to. No, I'm afraid not. In short... This means we've won? It... it most certainly does not feel that way. Guess I won't be seeing much more of Aster now that Antonio's almost here. Probably a good idea to tie up any loose ends before I head to the council chamber at the Basilica. Anyone home? Thanks. Anytime. Thanks.
see how much better I do. better I do. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Starting to click. I see I still have room for improvement. Proficiency acquired. My next work should exhibit my acquired mastery. I see I still have room for improvement. I see I still have room for improvement. I see I still have room for improvement. Reporting newly identified prowess. Reporting newly identified prowess. I see I still have room for improvement. I see I still have room for improvement. There is no better teacher than experience. Invigorating as the attainment of new knowledge. Not bad. Not bad at all. 
nothing so invigorating as the attainment of new knowledge. Anyone home? Welcome to our inn. The very pride of... We'll be safe behind you. Another piece? Love this place. Anyone home? Enjoy your respite. Hey there. Thanks. So Baldor fled. I find it hard to believe. But the reality is my father has abandoned the capital, and the powers of the throne have been transferred to me. Then... Neither I nor the citizens of the Empire ever wished for this war. If your kingdom were to offer peace, we would be most receptive. Prince Gerard, after your good mother was sent to be wed, the Kingdom and the Empire enjoyed amicable relations. I ask you now, 
Emperor Gerard, new sovereign of the Vale Empire. Can there be peace between us again? <laughs> that is all I could ever ask. Much quicker than expected. The unidentified vessel is apparently no less than three hours away from Astrofor's orbit. And the Aldous? They are 16 hours out. Unfortunately, the unidentified vessel also possesses speed on par with the Astoria. Depending on what they want, it may be dangerous to take our time here. <sighs> I was hoping we would have had a bit more time. do about Lola? Even if we apprehend her and take her with us, our own violations of military law rule out the prospect of a proper investigation. The Akizuki's purpose is to rescue the crew of the Edis. I'd prefer to postpone the arrest of any Virian deserters until we're properly prepared. Leticia, can you keep an eye on Lola in the meantime? Yes. There are a great many things we wish to ask her as well. Great, thank you. On behalf of the Federation, I sincerely apologize for this inconvenience. Oh, nice gesture. Uh, if only I could stick around a little longer, I could gather some intel from her. And take it back to Vergold as a nice souvenir. Sorry for rushing off like this. If you cannot take me with you, then perhaps I can ask that you not leave. It'd be hard to refuse if you did. Forgive me. I did not intend to impose upon you. And yet... Must you leave so abruptly? We have yet to even thank you. You saved my life took me in and helped me to survive on this world. Rescued my friends as well. <laughs> it wouldn't be fair of me to ask you for anything else. You have made the princess cry. Hmm. A man who brings a woman to tears is a vile man indeed. Leaving? Yes. Remaining on this world any longer will do nothing more than cause harm. I am hoping this is not farewell forever. No, no. We Vergoldians aren't bound by Federation laws. If I start missing you guys, I can come whenever I want. And if you call, I'll come running. Do not think of staying away too long. I dislike leaving my debts unpaid. Indeed, I formally command you to visit us again. I dare say your name shall never be forgotten in the kingdom of Osiris. Mariel to Akizuki. Requesting transport. Ray, I... No better hands for this nation to be in than yours. Ray. Goodbye, Leticia. Deck one. Bridge. Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, everyone? Well, there were a few crazy enough to join me in stealing a ship from a base. When you put it like that, it feels like a lot. 
Let me introduce everyone. This is Sayuri, handling the helm, communications, and analysis. Pleased to meet you all. You have a single officer in charge of three stations? And here we have Pike. He's in charge of weapons, and defense systems, and transfers, and deflectors. Pleasure. Wow. Nah, this is a merchant ship, so I don't actually do all of that at once. And finally, there's Kasim, who has engineering all to himself. Kasim? Hi there. One person in engineering? Oh, and I'm the provisional captain. The four of us are the crew of the Federation merchant vessel GFSS-12193, the Akizuki. So, everyone, meet Captain Raymond of the merchant vessel Edis and his officers, Elena and Chloe. Our first order of business will be leaving the Aster system and getting you all to the Aldis. Given the extraordinary circumstances and the fact that an unidentified ship is approaching, I'd like to ask for your help. Is it alright if you assume some of Sayuri and Pike's stations? Captain Raymond. What does that console on the captain's chair tell you? You sure you should be showing me this? Mm, all I can say is it's not much different from the merchant ships I know. Then why don't you try sitting there? Whoa, whoa, enough with the crazy talk. Look, you're the only one present with actual experience as a captain. I thought you were in the military! And I'm sure your crew might have some objections to taking orders from a non-Federation civilian. Oh no, not at all. On the contrary, it'd be very reassuring. The long and short of it is, the Akizuki is the first ship we've ever operated completely by ourselves. What now? I'm impressed you were able to steal a ship in the first place. I'm ashamed to admit it, but the truth is, we're in a little over our heads here. Can we lean upon those amazing skills that allowed your crew to escape the Astoria's attack alive? Oh man, I am never gonna hear the end of this if Dad finds out. All right, First Officer Marielle, let's contact the Aldis before we depart. Understood, Captain. Chloe? Roger that. I'll open a channel with the Aldus and two shakes of a lamb's tail. Aldus, this is communications officer Chloe Canaris aboard the Federation merchant vessel Akizuki. C Chloe? Chloe, is, is that you? You're on a Federation ship? It's been a while, Antonio. Ray and Elena are here too. The Federation Akizuki and her crew are on our side, and are lending us their support. Isn't that right, Ray? Yeah, this is Captain Raymond of the merchant vessel Akizuki. Yeah, we're all safe here, Antonio. Uh, I have no idea what the hell's going on, but I'm glad to hear you're all in one piece. We were able to recover the entire crew of the Eas. They're on their way back to Vergold. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. <sighs> Thank you, Antonio. Hold position in your current sector. We're gonna start heading your way. We have an unidentified vessel approaching the Aster system. And we don't want to have contact with other ships right now, for various reasons. Yeah, then I don't recommend coming this way. It's crawling with Federation vessels. Vergoldian Interstellar sent out a warning. Ah, <sighs> son of a... What do we do? We have no choice. Uh, Captain Antonio, I'm Mariel L. Kenny, first officer of the Akizuki. Kenny? Uh, now you're shitting me. The unidentified vessel's ETA in this sector is approximately two hours. For Raymond and the others, I ask that you do everything you can to reach us at maximum speed. Uh, understood, Lieutenant Kenny. We'll rush over there, scramble warp 11. Uh, no, make that point 12. See you in a bit, Ray. 
Over. It will take them ten hours to reach us. What shall we do, Captain? We play it by the book for now. Let's try to hail this unknown ship. It, is that wise? It's necessary if they're not sending out an ID signal. And we'll be showing them that we intend to follow the rules of interstellar travel. Sayuri. Understood. I'll try a long distance hail via subspace communication. Hmm. There's no response. I'm still not picking up an ID signal either. <laughs> Shy, are we? What's the combat loadout on this vessel? Well, we have four phase cannons, three layers of shields, no cloaking system, and a subspace warp engine. Let's pray they aren't hostile then. We'll play it by ear until they're 30 minutes away. Why not get some rest in the meantime? We have cabins for you on deck three. I'll contact you if something changes. You sure? I will stay here to support the others. You, go get some rest. All right then. I will gladly take you up on the generous offer. Wouldn't hurt to take a look around the ship, I guess. Wonder if Chloe's in her room. of a Federation ship. I hope we can get to the Aldus without any more mishaps. Captain Raymond, Miss Chloe, the unidentified ship is now 30 minutes away. Hopefully it's nothing to worry about. Status report. Unidentified vessel is 24 minutes away. Registration remains unknown. Aldous's ETA is 8 hours 20 minutes. Line up tactical and schematic displays. Map the unidentified ship's position on tactical and include their predicted course. Elena, I need you to perform Eclipse tactics as soon as they exit warp. Roger. Um, what exactly are Eclipse tactics again? The idea is, we will conceal our position from their sensors, using the shadow of Aster 4. You gotta know at least that much if you intend to stay up here. Uh, I only know it from lectures at the Academy. Ships need to adhere to an orbital trajectory in order to remain near planets. So it is impossible to maintain a fixed position within interstellar space. In short, by referencing the trajectory of the other ship and the size, rotation, and revolution of the planet, we make minute adjustments to our own orbital trajectory to ensure the planet is constantly between us and the other ship. Okay, so we'll never know each other's exact positions. Doesn't that mean we won't be able to fire on them? Exactly. It's a move not for attacking, you see, but for buying time. Unidentified ship is 15 minutes away and exiting warp. Unidentified ship reduced thrusters to one fourth thrust. It's here. Mariel, red alert. Sayuri, prepare to execute eclipse tactics. Elena, I want to get a look at this ship before we enter the planet's shadow. Switch the screen to max optical magnification. Unidentified ship, on screen. What the... this ship? It does not exist in my database. This is a Scorpium construct. So you're telling me this is a Scorpium ship? 
while there is no issue with considering it a Scorpion vessel for the sake of convenience. What appears to your eyes as a spaceship, all of it entirely, is in fact a single Scorpion cybernetic life form. So the ship is alive. I see. Quite fascinating. Henceforth, I will refer to the object as a Scorpion vessel. Captain, the Scorpion vessel has entered an oppositional orbit to our own. We can now only estimate its current orbital trajectory. Now it's a question of whether we can hold out long enough for Antonio to arrive. But it doesn't seem like we're what they're after, though. Its outward appearance gives no clue to its combat abilities. Speaking in terms of Pan-Galactic Federation vessels, its offensive capabilities are on par with a battleship. So we're outmatched. Great, let's hope it doesn't come to that. We, Scorpio, will never attack others without reason or without warning. Yeah, that's the same with humanoids. It just means if we get attacked, it'll be for some reason we don't know about. The Scorpion battleship is maintaining its opposing orbit. They are likely aware of us as well, so I believe it is safe to assume they do not mean to attack. And the Aldis is about eight hours away. Hopefully they continue to play nice. Hmm. In hindsight, maybe we should have just left this sector after all. If they don't intend to attack us, then can't we just go? The fact that our own long-distance sensors detected the Scorpion vessel means we cannot slip by undetected. What is the warp speed of this ship? 11 normal, 12 at maximum. If they're the equivalent of a battleship, getting into a game of cat and mouse will not go well for us. At any rate, our safest bet is to not provoke them for now. But it won't be long before they detect the Aldis approaching too. <sighs> this is going to be a long eight hours. Better to take rests in shifts. Elena, contact me immediately if that Scorpion ship so much as twitches. Roger. Hey, what are they up to? Captain, we are receiving a transmission from the surface. Please report to the bridge. From the surface? What's going on? Better get up to the bridge and check it out. What do you mean by surface? Putting it on screen. Ray! Leticia! Ray, I am so glad you are safe. You are facing off with a Scorpion ship, yes? What's going on? Leticia, why are you with Lola? We'll get to that later. Lola to the Akizuki. The Scorpion vessel is gaining altitude. It's begun to circle around while decreasing absolute speed. Decreasing absolute speed? You mean it is adopting an aggressive posture? We are still in the shadow of the planet, and cannot confirm this from our end. Tactical and schematic maps still display a predicted trajectory. Lola, can you send your schematics over to us? Already done. Thanks. There they are. Damn it. Cutting comms for now. Tactical and schematic maps updated. The Scorpion battleship will enter effective sensor range in three minutes. Already? Don't let your eyes off that enemy ship for a second. Enemy ship? Wait, are we that certain they mean to attack? Why would they suddenly break from the standoff? Man, what are they teaching you guys in the Federation these days? It's a textbook move. They took advantage of Eclipse Tactics' weakness. If they don't move, stay as they are and wait for us to approach them, they can continuously inch closer, and we won't notice until the very last second. It's a clear indicator of an attack. Hey, Duma, I thought you said they wouldn't come after us without a good reason. It is likely that reason to attack arose. This is no time for jokes! Where is the Aldis? ETA, three hours, twelve minutes. I figured as much. They knew. Guys, the Scorpion vessel is here.
Strike orbit. Course 120, mark 180. Roger. Raise defensive shields. Reroute full energy to the rear. Got it. Energy signatures indicate they are preparing to attack. They are using optical weaponry. Shields at 65%. Restoring them now. Damn. Over 30% from a single hit? That's definitely a battleship. There's no way we can survive until the Aldis gets here. Can we escape? Impossible. We must abandon ship. Ah, damn it! Sayuri, turn to course 210, Mark 90. Set the autopilot to enter a high orbital trajectory. Roger that. All set. Mariel, is he going to do what I think? Just follow Captain Raymond's orders. Okay, now all hands to the transfer chamber. We don't have much time. We should hurry. Pike, set the transfer to initiate as soon as we enter orbital trajectory. Um, where are we going? There must be a ship from where we last received transmissions from the surface. Put us down somewhere there. Well, this didn't last long. Sorry, Akizuki. Hooray! Hey, Leticia. We're safe, somehow. Far be it from me to interrupt this joyous reunion, but I've pinpointed the Emperor's location. They're still inside the Tyrannus. What? Wh what do you mean, the Emperor? There's a good chance that the Scorpion vessel that destroyed your ship just now is here to collect Colonel Valange and Gaston. And perhaps the Emperor. And what is Buldor hoping to accomplish aboard this strange ship? The Emperor knows of the Scorpion. Leaving them unaccounted for wouldn't be a good idea. Not for me, and not for Osarius. <laughs> Let us be off. There is no telling what they will do if we leave them unchecked. Got it. I'm with you. If they know something about that Scorpion ship, I definitely want to hear it. Okay. You will have to wait outside. The interior has been fortified by Colonel Valange and the others. Once we know it's safe, I'll have Raymond Lawrence contact you. Huh? Oh, yeah, gotcha. Understood. Ray, be careful. Let's make our way. The Colonel and the others seem to be down on the... Looks like this is gonna be its own maze of sorts. You sure we can get through here? I can. I was just in there anyway, so I'll lead the way. It would seem there are yet enemies in here. Best proceed carefully. Oh, my God. 
successfully installed. Detected ahead. system somewhere in the area. What's that now? Oh, you mean like an elevator. Just a cargo transporter. Tire of waiting. Sweet.
Let's use the turbo lift here. The Colonel and the rest should still be down on the lowest level. like they're here. I wonder what they could be up to. Ah, our visitors. Let them enter. Colonel. Gaston. Emperor. Uh, that's Valange and Gaston. Remarkable. To think that a single being could destroy a ship that sails the ocean of stars. <laughs> You're talking like you saw it with your own eyes. It's not like you commanded the attack. You may take it that way if you wish. Scorpium would not attack those unrelated to the network, at the request of those who have yet to be successfully integrated. What is this, Colonel? Why does the Emperor know so much of the Scorpion? A simple reason. Duma? Huh? That's a Duma too? Right. This particular Duma was dispatched to the planet Veer. It came with us when we fled our homeworld. anything about this. Colonel Gaston, explain yourselves! So, you want to integrate now, huh? Did those two whisper some sweet somethings into your ear? I found the Scorpium ideology espoused by Valange and Gaston to be most compelling. I realized with certitude that this is the future I sought. Therefore, I will have Duma examine the suitability of the races of this world. In good time, I shall have all inhabitants of this planet integrate with Scorpio. Princess Leticia, your wedding ceremony with Gerard was meant to serve as a glorious prelude to this. You mean to say that you attacked Osirius and Nilbeth to subjugate the world? and force the population of the entire planet into integration with Scorpium? Subjugate, force, what a lamentable misunderstanding. Integration is the path to transcendent evolution. It will guide the citizens of the Empire and the Kingdom to happiness. That is not possible. Not a single soul in Nilbeth would wish for such a thing. Regardless of whether they wish it or not, such a future is now their fate. Even as we speak, the Scorpion Sovereign is traversing this way to collect me. Sovereign? So cybernetic life forms have leaders like kings and emperors too? There is no leader rank corresponding with the term Sovereign within Scorpion. My special Duma. Have you considered that your understanding of Scorpion may not be all there is to know? Impossible. And yet this is another aspect of Scorpion. Am I not correct, Valange, Gaston? No. No! Lola, stay with us! What you speak of will never come to pass. Then your journey ends here. We cannot have you interfering with the Emperor any further. Amuse yourselves with them until the Sovereign arrives. As you wish. Don't let me 
down. Batting at maximum. Seeing you. Hey, don't they seem stronger than before? So, this is the might that comes from integrating with Scorpion. This is too much for one man to wield, Boldor. Why do you seek such power? Yes, too much power for one man. Your words strike true, for I, and eventually all who dwell on this world, will transcend the limits of a mortal, and obtain the power of the Divine. Power of the Divine? Baldor, are you...? It is time. They're transferring! Get back here! We shall meet again, my dear children. Damn it! <sighs> that you, Antonio? Ray, you okay? We're gonna be there within the hour. Got it. Contact me again once you arrive. Everyone is currently planet side. Copy that. Uh, I just got confirmation that the unidentified ship you mentioned broke orbit and entered subspace warp. What the hell happened? Yeah, I'll tell you later. Uh, understood. Anyway, just hang tight. Antonio out. Ray, will you not take me with you? You want to go after Boldor? Not quite. I wish to go forth and protect this kingdom. No, this entire planet. If Baldor means to integrate everyone on this world, then I cannot sit idly by as someone who claims this place as their home. Let's head back to the royal city for now. Ray! Look, I hear you. It's great that my brother's coming, but if I take you guys along with me now, everyone back at the castle would think I'd kidnapped you. And a certain someone is likely to make a fuss. And just who are you referring to? At any rate, better to sort things out properly before we leave. I understand. Ray, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, we're fine, Chloe. But, well, I don't really know where to start. For now, let's meet up outside the Tyrannus.
remember that. Enemies up ahead.
detected ahead. You got a visual on us, Ant? Great. Transfer us up in about three minutes from now. This is... I understand how determined you all are. But from our side, we really want to maintain good relations between His Majesty and Dr. Marcus. I understand. I will go and request their approval. Yeah. And when you're ready... All you need to do is press that button. Gather everyone who wants to go out into space, uh, choose some place discreet. Understood. I'll be waiting. Got it. Feels like I'm finally home. Yo, glad to see you're still in one piece. So, you finally gonna fill me in on what trouble you've got yourself in? And you wouldn't believe me if I did. I assume you four are the crew of that Federation ship. Why aren't uh, Miss Leticia and Mr. Albert here with you? Nah, don't tell me. I'm not gonna be able to properly thank the people who saved my little bro. This is Mariel, Sayuri, Pike, and Cassie. Everyone, this is my brother, Antonio Lawrence. Hello, I'm Lieutenant Mariel L. Kenny, first officer of the Pangalactic Federation vessel Astoria. Astoria? Wait, isn't that the ship that shot? Uh, 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 hold it, hold it, Ant. I'll explain all that later. For the time being, I could sure use some grub and a fresh pot of gel. Follow me, everybody. Uh, this is a pretty hard story to swallow all at once. <laughs> I'm honestly amazed all of you are still alive. All thanks to my friends. Coffee, how I've missed you. I still can't believe the Federation would sink this low. And now you're saying there are renegade ships just slinking around. This isn't some kind of smokescreen to attack Vergald, is it? No, of course not. But... Poking Mariel won't give up any useful answers. There's just too much we don't know. 
So let's just wait for my new friends, and then we can all go find out together. All go find out together, he says. <laughs> yeah, and about that. So you wanna let aboard Marielle and her feds and even these locals from Aster 4? To go chasing after this Baldor and that Scorpium thing. Are you saying you can't do it, Antonio? This is to pay back our debt of gratitude, as a Lawrence. I have no problem with that. However, Ray, I'm giving you command of the ship. This is a bit out of my league here. Should be a cinch for you, right? Since it operates the same as the Edis. Sounds good. And my hands will be full, so you explain things to Dad. <laughs> You're an ass. All right. I guess we're waiting until we hear from Leticia and the others. I'll get some rooms ready for you and your crew. Take it easy while you can. Better rest up after all that. I do wonder how Marielle and the rest are faring. But it does feel good to be back on a familiar ship for a change. Maybe I ought to head to the living quarters and catch some much needed sleep. Thanks. Thanks. About time for a rest. There's an incoming transmission. Please report to the bridge. Leticia and everyone must be ready now. 
Better head to the bridge and answer their call. Leticia, you ready to roll on your end? Ray? Well, we have assembled everyone. All right, I'll initiate the transfer. Get somewhere you won't be seen. Hey, Antonio, I want you to meet my friends. Let's go welcome the princess and the others in the transfer chamber. Welcome to my humble abode, your highness. Ray, this is your ship? <laughs> Not so different from the Tyrannus, huh? But it is so different. There are so many lights. Ah, well, this ship is up and running, I guess. Antonio, I give you Princess Leticia. I am Leticia Austerius. Thank you. Once again. A pleasure, Princess. I'm Antonio. Raymond, you've been traveling with such a stunning beauty this whole time? Oh, well... <laughs> All right, everyone. Let's make for the bridge. We'll be taking off soon. See that? There's your planet, Leticia. Aster 4. That is... our planet? Our world? To think all of our struggles have taken place in such a minuscule space makes one feel insignificant. Yes, but it is so very beautiful. No doubt about it. Right then. I suppose we'd best get going. Elena, Chloe, Miss Kenny. Roger. It's been so long. I'll, uh, do my best. We're counting on you, Aldous. Chloe, get us out of orbit. Keep thrusters at one-fourth power. Exiting orbital trajectory. Thrusters at one-fourth power. We have exited orbit. Now entering conventional space. All systems, green. Right then. I guess our first priority is to chase that ship carrying Boldor and the others. I hope you're not intending to engage them. The Aldous won't stand a chance. Oh, yes, Ray. Here. This is from Lola. It is a record of the battle between the Scorpion battleship and the Akizuki from the Tyrannus. She hopes it will prove useful. Much appreciated. Okay, let's get this analyzed quick. I have no intention of taking them head on. All right. If we compile this data first, we might at least be able to figure out where the hell that battleship is headed. Under normal circumstances, it would likely be their homeworld. It may be safe to assume they are returning there. No such location that would correspond with the concept of a homeworld exists within Scorpium. Is that so? Scorpium is a collective of life that forms a network which spans the galaxy, with enormous spaceships traveling between artificial colonies and space stations. Well, couldn't those be considered their home planet? No. In this particular instance, all the bases and ships are also part of the overall Scorpium life form. That is correct. Hmm. So, you got any idea which one of these massive life forms they might be headed to then? The man known as Gaston contained many factors that differ from the current state of the Scorpion. Thus, the accuracy of any predictions we make will be low. Hey, hey, okay. Are you really telling me we don't have any leads right out of the gate? I mean, can't we use our long-range sensors to pick up their trail? Yeah, they're already way out of range of our sensors. Ah, <sighs> for crying out loud. Uh, uh, what's that? Okay, take it easy. 
It's the sensors picking something up. It might even be them. Chloe? No, it's a Federation ship. They're approximately 36 hours away. A Federation ship. They may be coming to apprehend Sayuri and I. All right, it doesn't look like they're heading for Aster. Hmm. Want to test our luck and try to make contact? Hmm. Unlike the Astoria, they are making no effort to conceal themselves. At this distance, the Aldis should be able to outrun them as well. Not so sure about this. Chances are they picked up our signal already. It'd be more risky to just sit around and do nothing. Ant, patch a signal through open comms. Roger that. Opening a line of communication. Connection established. Putting them on screen. This is Captain Raymond Lawrence, aboard the Vergoldian transport vessel Aldus. State your name and affiliation. This is the Pan Galactic Federation battlecruiser, Bella Golf. And I am its captain, Curtis Aldrich. I never expected to meet a member of the Lawrence family in the middle of nowhere like this. It's an honor. Permit me to skip the formalities, Captain Curtis. What brings you out to this middle of nowhere? We're en route to our destination and in a hurry. Though I'm not about to share any more than that with the captain of an anti-Federation Bergoldian ship. Understandable. So I suppose it's just a coincidence that you happen to be heading in the same direction as the Scorpium ship that we happen to be tracking? You... how do you know of the Scorpium? We just recently engaged a Scorpium vessel, which had entered the Aster system. We've since determined that the ship was crewed by soldiers from the Federated planet of Veer. Captain Raymond, I think it may be best we exchange information. I should like to make contact with your ship. I must decline. You see, I was on board another ship, the Yetus, when it was taken out by an unlawful attack from a Federation battlecruiser not too long ago. Are you referring to the Astoria? I hear it was illicitly cloaked and attacked without warning. <laughs> oh, well, if you know about that, then I assume the Astoria must already be hung out to dry. Actually, they're currently on the run. What? <gasps> the Federation's most advanced ship has gone rogue? Our ship, on the other hand, is in no such state. Transmit our logs to Vergold if you like. We have nothing to hide. We make for the site of an emergency mission. Though, at present, we could use all the information on the Scorpium that we can get. Fine. Send us a rendezvous point. We'll give you an estimated time of arrival once we figure it out on our end. Much appreciated. Wishing you a safe voyage. Over and out. Coordinates for the rendezvous point received. Our ETA is 10 hours, 57 minutes. Ray? Uh, no. Captain. I think that we can trust him. I agree. We may gain some valuable information this way. Uh, you should be more worried about getting arrested. We have no reason to trust them or think that they have our best interests at heart. Arrested? Oh. Yes, I suppose you're right. Either way, we still have 11 hours until we know for sure. All right, everyone. Let's take breaks and shifts. Um, and uh, what of us? Right. <clears throat> Allow me this opportunity to give you all a tour of the ship. Raymond may be the captain now, but the Aldis is still my ship after all. Uh, understood. You have my thanks, Sir Antonio. Wonder what Antonio has everyone up to. He said he was gonna show everyone around, but never really said where. Guess I should drop by the common area first.
Hey. Hey. Did my brother behave on your tour? Antonio is much more of a gentleman than you. Aw, thank you. So, what do you think of the Aldis? How should I put it? It's incredible! Oh, every last bit of it's nothing short of incredible! Every aspect of life here is like another world. No, no, another dimension. It's all so astounding. I don't know where to begin. Let me say this. Preventing him from wandering off whenever I look elsewhere is proving quite a difficult task. I know full well that this journey will be difficult, but it is quite thrilling to think I will experience what was spoken of in Larkis for myself. Glad to hear it. You're welcome to wander and check everything out at your leisure. Any questions, feel free to ask Antonio or myself. On that note, Chloe? Yes, Captain. If you hear a voice come out of that, do what it asks, okay? Yes, understood. We've prepared rooms for each of you in the living quarters. Rest up as much as you can until we rendezvous with the Vela Gulf. I guess Theo was a no-show? Albert and I did ask him to come along, but he refused, citing the lack of laborers in post-war affairs, the need for negotiation with the Empire, and assisting Lola with the Tyrannus. He asked that I worry not of home, and to instead focus on my journey to the stars. Huh, understandable. Tough position. But... I'm sure working for the betterment of the kingdom will help him feel better, right? I think so too. We need to find out what Boldor is up to. Not just for Osirius and Vale, but for Theo as well. Agreed. I wonder what Marielle's up to. She was up on the bridge last I saw. Taking the crash course, I see. Uh, there's so much to learn. I'd like to at least get a little more familiar with the Aldus before we meet up with the Vela Gulf, so that I may be of some use if the situation turns bad. Don't push yourself too hard. You must be plenty tired as it is. I can't allow myself to be tired. I don't want this to be a repeat of the Edis. I have a duty to protect the Aldus as a soldier of the Federation. I feel you, but getting proper rest also falls under your responsibilities as an Aldis crew member. So take it easy. Captain's orders. Got it? I'll do my best. There's still so much Marielle and I both don't seem to know about this entire situation. It might be a good idea to see what Duma can tell me. Leticia and everyone should be in the common area. Hmm. I would like to know why you came aboard the Edis, Duma. We were dispatched to assess the integration suitability of Vergoldians. What the... So the shippers we were dealing with were Scorpium? Affirmative. But the client sure seemed like a human, from what I could tell at least. The Scorpium Collective takes many forms. Some may appear entirely cybernetic, others as cyborgs or androids. There are also those who are entirely organic in nature. Ah, great. It is freaking horrifying to know that we handled unknown cargo from unknown clients. So you're saying that if I succeeded in delivering you, all of Virgold would be Scorpium by now? Horrifying is an unfairly emotional evaluation. Integration with Scorpium is... I don't care what you think, all right? Based on what we've seen and heard about it, that's how I feel. Deal with it. 
we cannot refute this statement. If Scorpium is truly acting in violation of our principles, it would be in defiance of our very existence itself. Are you... confused? Do you even... get confused? We cannot deny this possibility. There is a need for us to learn the truth of these events in order to carry out our mission successfully. We shall cooperate as much as possible when necessary. Oh, I'll see to it that you shall. Don't worry about that. After all, you're different from the other Duma, aren't you? Five minutes to rendezvous point. Ray, the Vela Gulf is hailing us. Put him on screen. Right on schedule, I see. I'll be on board shortly for that information exchange we mentioned. You serious? A sign of good faith from us. After we rendezvous, we'll warp out for one minute. After the transfer, we'll immediately warp back in. Maintain your course. I've just sent the data. Data received. Huh. Looks to me like there's only one person in the transfer chamber. Not exactly thrilled about their terms, but seems we've got no choice. Understood. Maintaining course and confirming that of the Vela Gulf. Transfer will commence within one minute of exiting warp. Once Captain Curtis is aboard, we shall adopt a parallel course to the Vela Gulf. Captain's coming aboard? Uh, guess it's up to me to bid him welcome. Marielle, Leticia, come on with me. I'm not too savvy when it comes to Federation etiquette. Understood. Uh, I should go too? Yeah, all you gotta do is stand there. If there's three of us, it should deter Curtis from trying any funny stuff. Very well. Gotta admit, Captain, I wasn't expecting you to come along. It'll be easier for us to talk like this. Let's make this quick. The Vela Gulf is currently en route to the Manuk system. Captain, this emergency you mentioned. Are you Lieutenant Marielle Elkenny? There's a warrant out for your arrest, you know. I am aware of that and ready. We can explain all that and more in this intel exchange. First things first, though, can I offer you a cup of freshly brewed Terran coffee? Don't mind if I do. Goodness. To think such a thing took place in the Aster system. So, what is it that has you rushing off to the Manuk system? Manuk is currently under siege by a large fleet of Scorpium ships. Headquarters interprets it as a full-scale invasion. Ridiculous. That is impossible. I've been wondering about this. A Duma, I presume. You know about Duma? We've been gathering information on our end as well. The Duma are the ones proselytizing the Scorpion's integration ideology, correct? Affirmative. Scorpion is a being that seeks to evolve as a life form. Aggressive incursions are nothing more than an act that limits our evolutionary choices. It would seem the Scorpium are no monolithic entity. The faction currently attacking the Manuk system are known as the Centralists. Centralists? Ray, do you think...? Yep, Centralists. That's the name Boldor mentioned on the Tyrannus. The entirety of Scorpium is composed of individuals linked without partiality. A central being cannot exist within our system. And yet Manuk is under siege by Scorpium calling themselves Centralists. How did Headquarters come by this intel? You know, Captain, it hasn't been that long since I left the Astoria, yet there seems to be too much new information. Hmm. There must be some connection between the Scorpium and the Federation higher-ups. Fleet Headquarters, specifically. Your assumption is correct. 
A significant number of fleet officers have broken off from the chain of command. Most of them were in contact at some point with the Scorpium on the planet of Veer. Headquarters decided to launch a rescue effort in the Manuk system. It's unclear who's friend and who's foe within HQ, however. We may even be following a Scorpium directive. And even if that is the case, you can't just abandon them, huh? Captain Curtis, the Aldous is in possession of Scorpium data compiled by a soldier who escaped from Veer. We are currently pursuing the Scorpium ship that came to Aster 4. I'd like you to analyze that data and identify the ship in question once we reach the Manuk system. This is invaluable intel. We're in your debt. Yeah, no worries. Just reimburse me for the Yidus once this is all over and we'll be square. I'll see what I can do. Thank you for your time. I'll get back in contact as soon as we've identified the ship that you're after. We've exited warp. Commencing transfer. Please be careful. You as well. Vela Gulf has sent us a location. ETA to the Manuk system is 25 hours. Exactly six hours behind the Vela Gulf. Don't sweat about what he said. The larger an organization, the easier it is to corrupt. Captain, please don't make light of it. Even a single ship deviating from the chain of command is cause for alarm. If all of these ships are under the influence of Scorpium, then the risk to the entire galaxy is very real. I too find something strange about all this. What do you mean? Little Duma's reaction. I also felt that what Captain Curtis told us did not line up correctly with what we heard from Lola. She stated that the Scorpium invading her home were acting in such a way as to avoid detection. I did not get the impression that it was attacked outright in the same way as this Manuk location is being attacked now. I think Lola's hunch may be right about Scorpium having infiltrated the Federation undetected. But isn't Duma also a part of Scorpium? It must be hiding something. Little Duma always remains silent when they wish to be deceptive. When they do speak, it is generally free of falsehood. This is why their assertion that Scorpium does not invade must be true. Right, Duma? Correct. Duma's the only link we have to understanding the Scorpium. We analyze the data from the Tyrannus, but we still have almost no idea of who or what the Scorpium are. We won't learn much of anything until we confront them ourselves. As I discussed with Captain Curtis, it's most likely that the Scorpium faction attacking Manuk are in cahoots with the ship Boldor is on. The Vela Gulf has kindly agreed to help us track it down. I have detected other unidentified ships also approaching the Manuk system, where the Scorpium battleship is heading. However, support from the Federation is still far away. The Vela Gulf, Aldis, and Manuk fleet will have to handle this alone. So what you are implying is that it will be a difficult battle. That is correct. What will you do if Boldor is aboard that ship, and we find ourselves forced into combat with it? All I can say is that we should be ready for anything, even if it means taking them out. It would seem war is much the same here in the stars as it is in our world. Yep, you got that right. Which is exactly why I want you all to rest up before we reach the combat zone. I'd better get some rest too. 
damage here. The Vela Gulf has reached the Manuk system. They have made contact with what appear to be two Scorpion ships. They are engaging in battle. All available hands to the bridge. The battle's already underway. Better get to the bridge. Status report. The Manuk fleet has already suffered heavy losses. They only have three vessels deployed currently none of which have been able to attack effectively. Can you tell me, Ray, why is this Manuk fleet so inferior? Even up here in space, some folks have the technological leg up on others. Another Scorpion battleship is nearing the Manuk system. ETA, two hours, three minutes. How long until the Aldis arrives? Two hours, 11 minutes. However, we could become embroiled in battle at any time. I'm sure we'll be fine. Captain, update. We will arrive in the Manuk system in six minutes. The Vela Gulf has disabled one of the Scorpion vessels. They are currently in combat with two ships, including the one that arrived shortly before us. Way to go, Captain Curtis. Battleships sure are on a different level, aren't they? Captain, the Vela Gulf is hailing us. Putting on screen now. Vela Gulf to Aldous. We only have eight torpedoes left. Hardly enough to take out these last two ships. We're going to focus on stalling them. Can you cover us? You can count on it. We'll be pulling into your sector in three minutes. Much appreciated. Vela Gulf out. The two ships engaged with the Vela Gulf are now designated as Scorpion Ship Bravo and Scorpion Ship Charlie. Warp out directly into the orbital path between the Vela Gulf and Scorpion Ship Bravo. Trajectory set. Red alert. Deploy full defensive shields. Set to Omni. Load all six proton torpedo launchers. Arm the phase cannons. Red alert. All hands to battle stations. Shields at full. Proton torpedoes loaded. Phase cannons initialized. Everyone get to your seats and strap in. It's about to get bumpy. Currently maintaining distances of 500,000 kilometers with Bravo and 760,000 with Charlie. Fire three torpedoes at Bravo, and immediately reroute to course 6-0, mark zero. Proton torpedoes away. Impact in 11 minutes. The Vela Gulf has also launched a torpedo at Bravo. Charlie has just fired four torpedoes at us. Activate auto evasion. Activating auto evasion. Ah, it's shaking! Keep quiet. You might bite your tongue otherwise. Three of the torpedoes will miss, but one cannot be avoided. Brace for impact. been hit. Shields at 76%. Restoring them now. The, the rumbling is like an earthquake. We get any hits in? All three torpedoes failed to connect. How could they miss at that interval? What sort of ship is that? Damn it! Open a channel to the Vela Gulf! Channel open! Captain, follow this. Can you handle this? We'll make it work. Just go! Set phase cannons to fire simultaneously on both Bravo and Charlie. Program salvo bursts to fire automatically in 10 second intervals on these coordinates. Understood. Divert to course 270, mark 180. Match the movements of the Vela Gulf. Roger, Captain. I'll do my best. 
distance between Bravo and Charlie is 100,000 kilometers. Both ships are taking evasive action. Now, hit Bravo with all we've got! Two torpedoes have hit. Bravo has ceased turning. The Bella Gulf's attacks on Charlie also landed. Bullseye! Bravo and Charlie are on a collision course. Scorpion ships Bravo and Charlie have collided. Both battleships appear to have been immobilized. For now. Don't get out of your seat just yet, though. We don't know what's still out there. Captain, the Bella Gulf is hailing us. Excellent work, Captain Raymond. Thanks, but uh, it was the Vela Gulf that did all the heavy lifting. We just came in to steal the show. The real work starts now. What do you intend to do? We're gonna board one of the Scorpion ships with Duma and investigate inside. Understood. They may be quiet now, but you're likely to face some strong opposition. Be careful. For sure. And I trust you got our back if anything happens. Can you tell me which ship is the one that came from Aster? Is it Bravo or Charlie? Uh, don't tell me it was the ship that went down before we even got here. It is fortunate we have the data from Lola. Bravo is the one we seek. So we're boarding the Scorpion battleship. Yep, you got it. Let's make our way over there now. Transfer chamber. Oh, I simply wanted to try saying it. Did I do so correctly? And these? Portable optic deflectors. You can wear these to protect yourself from portable optical weaponry equivalent to a Federation phase gun. Hmm, I see. Wait, pray, what exactly does all that mean? It means that even if you're hit by a glowing gun, like the one Marielle was using, it won't kill you. But that's not a complete guarantee, so don't get too cocky. Note that it also offers defense from physical attacks, such as bullets or knives. Finally, please attach these magnetic soles to your footwear. You can switch them on and off by touching your heels. Indeed. Being free of gravity's shackles ought to be fun. Do not even think of wandering off. This. What? Why am I upside down? Everyone, please remain calm. Turn your feet toward that surface there and touch your heels. Uh, okay, like this. <sighs> so, this is the inside of a Scorpion ship, huh? Which means we're in the belly of a living creature. It certainly does have that appearance. Rather unnerving. Where could Boldor be on a ship like this? If he's even still alive. All these... They were on this ship. We must hurry. If more Scorpium arrive, there's no telling what could happen. Strange. This vessel is... What's up? Ray, I am picking up multiple life signs ahead. Many of the Scorpium do not possess detectable life signs. I suggest exercising caution. Look, we could probably get through there. Watch 
Watch and learn. Target acquired. In terms of external appearance, this vessel is not particularly. things aren't looking good for the Federation underbelly. This raises the likelihood that the centralist Scorpion... A dead end. We should search the area. Never know what useful stuff we might happen on. to me. Firing! 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 Firing!
be able to move this junk here with a little oomph. Hey, look. There seems to be some infighting. Ridiculous. Impossible. To deny something occurring in front of us? It doesn't match you. They also have Federation officer uniforms. <sighs> Must... Stay sharp. Stay where you are. Look. Accelerate. Of the Scorpion? Are you with Pan Galactic Federation pursuers fighting in this system? And what if we are? We are not your foe. We do not wish to fight either. I beg of you, do with me as you will. But please, save the rest. The rest? Letizia! Um, behind it! You are protecting these people? From other Scorpium? The Centralist must not be allowed to have them. These are refugees of war who have lost their homes. Please, you must help them. And why should we believe you? 
You mean to say that the Centralist Scorpion do in fact exist? Aha! Doom! This will make things easy. It is hard to accept, but it would appear we must acknowledge the existence of the Centralist faction. What is the matter? The Scorpium that refer to themselves as Centralists are in rebellion against the existing network. They are attacking those the existing network has deemed suitable and assimilating them by force. This vessel was headed for a Scorpium colony carrying those people behind me. However, the ones we took aboard on Aster 4 summoned the Centralists and... we were dragged into this conflict. You refer to Bulldor, Valange, and Gaston. Wait a minute. So those two Veer were Centralists all along? Though Centralists, they are still Scorpion. It is merely a difference of thinking. They initially sought rescue simply because they lacked the means of reaching space. We responded out of a desire to aid our comrades. And because of that, all these people are now embroiled in a war? It's unforgivable. But this one is Scorpium too. And it's assimilating a large number of innocents into its collective. Fate was fair, it seems. It appears you have deemed integration into Scorpio as something malevolent. You are saying it is not? At least in my case, it was a means of survival. I became one with Scorpio by my own choice and that of no one else. There are countless others, aside from myself, whose lives were saved by integration as well. Huh, well that was unexpected. Regardless, this vessel is doomed. I ask once more that you at least save these people behind me. I am going to put a stop to those who commandeered this ship. They are a danger to the Scorpium Network. What do you want to do? Let's help. We're able to reason with him. And he can tell us more about the Scorpion. Right? Please? Fine. So be it. You, uh, got a name, bud? Please, call me JJ. All right, JJ. We'll do all we can to help you out. But, in exchange, I want you to tell us everything about the Scorpion. Thank you. Whoa, whoa! I must paint a strange picture, bowing before you in this body. However, let this be proof that I remain still an individual, though I bear the form you now see. You have my heartfelt gratitude for saving the lives of my friends. Uh, what exactly is happening here? I was in charge of the... Thanks. I was in charge.
sorry that Thanks. We still got time before the ship goes down, yeah? We've got business to take care of a bit further in. I promise you we'll come back here. We've got a good priority. We've handled all the enemies in the area, so they should be safe here for the moment. Roger that. Very well. To the bridge. That's where you'll find them. What information do we have on those who took over the ship? Oh, well, there's... It appears they are up ahead. We should ready ourselves before we make a move. Princess Leticia. I did not expect you would dare to follow us all this way. Voldor, what have you done? Integration, my child. My power now exceeds imagining. It is no small wonder there are so many scorpions spread throughout the universe. But how? I am certain that man was not integrated when he first came aboard. There was still some time until our escort from Central would arrive, so we had him added to the network a tad early. From the wedding? The Emperor was most impressive. His integration went flawlessly. Baldor, what is it you hope to bring about with this power? As an Emperor, it is only natural to desire peace and prosperity for my people. Halcyon days lie ahead for the subjects of Vale in all of Aster IV through Scorpium integration. Our planet will be connected, one network, one beating heart, free of war and suffering. And you would still call them people? Yes. Nevertheless, I cannot allow Centralist Scorpion to bring such a thing to pass. Bulldor! Aster Four is not ready for this power from the stars. I shall end your ambitions here. Don't get caught. Here you get me. You may rest assured, I have no desire. Sweet beloved daughter, deliver integration. Wait. As does peace without end, as Scorpion. Okay. 
you go. This should help. Batting ready. <laughs> you are strong indeed, Scorpion Warrior. Absurd. How can he be so strong so soon after integration? Yeah, no kidding. He's on a completely different level than other Scorpion. Emergency communication from the Vela Gulf. Ray, the Astoria is approaching Scorpion ship Bravo at high speed. The Astoria? Those bastards love to hide. Get out of there, Ray. They're gonna fire! It would seem we are done here. Yes, it would. Our escort from Central has arrived. The Astoria is connected with the Centralists? Would knowing that change anything? This ship will be destroyed, along with your own. Colonel Valange, is this truly what you desire? Lola lives! She awaits your return! There's... no going back for me. I am truly sorry, Princess Leticia. I find myself unable to save you. Voldor! Damn it! It's the Astoria. They're changing course. And they've locked onto us. We can't shake them! And run! No! Stop! Please! The Vela Gulf! Chloe, transfer all detectable life signs aboard this ship! JJ, grab onto me! Engage the Astoria. Captain Curtis, you saved our bacon. We only escaped thanks to you. Don't think you're out of the weeds just yet. The Astoria seems to have it out for you. Get out of here while we hold them off. The Federation should be the ones to atone for all this. Son of a bitch! Get us out of the Manuk system at max warp! All hands, brace for warp speed! Wait! We must help them! There's nothing we can do if we stay. The captain's efforts will be in vain. Entering emergency warp. Course 180. Mark 180. Engines at maximum. No signs of pursuit. We have successfully escaped the Manuk system. Captain Curtis. What do we do now, Ray? JJ, I heard you say that Scorpion ship was an evacuation vessel. Can we have civil discussions with other non-centralist Scorpion like you? There are no hostile Scorpion among those who saved I and my comrades. What the hell are you talking about? That ship attacked the Akizuki! Only because your own vessel acted in a way that the Scorpion network deemed hostile. You were hiding and waiting for your chance to strike. That was a mistake in Scorpion's judgment. <laughs> hey, you know the coordinates of your destination? Don't tell me you're thinking of going straight to their base. We've lost Boldor and the others. We don't know whether the Vela Gulf survived. The Aldis can only sustain these evacuees for a couple days at most. Do we really have any other options? If you will give us passage to the colony, we of the Scorpion 
can promise to welcome the Aldus with open arms and with peace. JJ is not lying. I recommend cooperating with them in our investigation of these centralists. Is your colony a Scorpium too? And where the hell is it? It is a Scorpium construct in the form of a colony. You will find it 700 light years from here. There's no way we can travel that far. We can arrive swiftly if we pass through the wormhole 6.2 light years from here. Can you input the coordinates of the wormhole? Yes, a wormhole does indeed exist at this point. If we travel through it, we will reach the colony within 24 hours. We possess the key to the wormhole. The Aldis is now en route to the Scorpium colony. We're bringing the refugees home. My thanks. Don't worry. Everything will be fine. heck even are the Scorpion? Guess I might as well ask. Better head for the living quarters. Looks like everyone had the same idea. Yes. I'd like to learn as much from JJ as I can. But I'm not quite sure how exactly to ask. If there is something you need, then please enter. There you go. Captain Raymond, thank you once again for offering us your protection. I am truly grateful. Don't worry about it. Actually, I came hoping you might tell us more about the Scorpion. Has Duma told you nothing? Mainly general information. However, we have never had the chance to speak with someone who became a part of the Scorpion directly. You wish to know if Scorpion is your enemy? Correct. I saw a great many of my comrades that had been integrated beyond the point of recognition on the ship where we met you. They were unquestionably hostile not only towards me, but towards Raymond and Leticia as well. But then, we found you fighting to protect all those refugees. Is that not normal? They had their objectives, and acted to remove any irregularities in its completion. Which in this case would be... all of you. I, too, had my own objective, and sought your help to achieve it. Um, well, yes. That is all true, I suppose. But is Scorpion... A monstrous invader? that transforms people into something they are not. That's how it seems to me. The same mistaken belief prevailed on my home planet as well. The belief that those who merged with Scorpion became creatures so utterly alien that they were incapable of conscious thought. But this is not the case. Am I, myself, not proof of this as I stand before you? So you, uh, Scorpium, are basically just robots or androids? Maybe cyborgs? I would contend that none of those terms accurately describe my current state. I am a humanoid that has almost fully physically integrated with Scorpion. But why would you do that? To evolve. Duma said that too, but is it evolution to turn your body all mechanical? Conversion of the organic body is the process, not the means. 
The unified purpose brought forth by integration with Scorpion is connection with the Scorpion network that spans this vast galaxy. So you plug humans into this network? The Duma that came to my world also phrased many things in a way that invited misunderstanding. It is a concept that is easily grasped after integration, but difficult to comprehend prior to that. I believe that the evolution I gained through integration with Scorpion can be found here, and also here. Many different organic life forms join with Scorpion, but at least for we humanoids, history has proven that evolution of the mind and heart is possible, does it not? I know these ideas are not easy to comprehend. I alone am not capable of conveying them properly, and I also understand the feelings of those who find Scorpion difficult to accept. However, I would not have lived a full life had I not gained this body. Thus, I have not even one iota of regret. All I ask is that you at least understand this. Very well. I don't get it, though. What about those Federation officers? <sighs> There's gotta be something we're missing. We're really gonna have to open our minds if we want to wrap our heads around any of this. You mean to say that what we know is limited by what we have seen, and we are yet to understand the full extent of what has happened? Yeah, exactly. You're getting all of this pretty quick, Leticia. Well, you have proven to be quite the teacher. All of this has given me a headache. <sighs> I'm going to go get some rest. I should probably get some rest too. Give myself some time to process all of this. About time for a rest. to report to the bridge immediately. Sorry. Right then. Guess we ought to check out what this wormhole's all about. Time to head for the bridge. Come to think of it, uh, how does one use a wormhole? It's not the same as warp, right? There should be a Scorpion space-time stabilizer affixed to the edge of the wormhole. How do you affix something to a wormhole? Ah, that thing. There it is. We need you to access it and send the code in the specified format. I should do it? Can you do it, Elena? I will try. Displaying coordinates to screen. Acquiring destination. Sending. Preparations are complete. You may now enter the wormhole in conventional space. All right. Keep the thrusters at half power as we head in. Entering the wormhole at half thrust. <sighs> that sent a chill down my spine. Man, if we can start jumping through space like this, we wouldn't even need warp drives anymore. There are only five stable wormholes within the entirety of Scorpium's range in this galactic system. They do not allow for travel to unexplored space. The warp drive is a necessary technology for the evolution of life and humanoid races.
The evolution of humanoid races, huh? Hmm. The end of the wormhole is coming up ahead. What the? We're at the end? Now exiting the wormhole. Space-time readings are showing major discrepancies. Recalibrating sensors now. Did, uh, we get through without a hitch? Calibration complete. Our current position is Sector Beta. 713 light-years from our position prior to entering the wormhole. <sighs> Seriously? Long-range sensors detect an object equivalent to a space colony 2.1 light-years from here. This is one of the colony form Scorpium constructs and the destination of JJ. It is named Parapium. You may proceed forward. The colony has a suitable space dock for entry. So based on what you've said, that dock and this whole colony is all part of Scorpium. Correct. You've got to be kidding me. Marielle, can you go wind up JJ and, uh, I'd feel a lot more comfortable if he was here as we go in. Understood. Hello? I've communicated with Perapium. You may use the dock, or transfer if that is to your preference. A port has been opened specifically for the Aldus. So no danger, right? There is no Scorpium here who view the Aldus as an enemy. The Aldus is welcomed. There is nothing to fear. Gotcha. Yeah, it'd be pretty lame to turn around and chicken out at this point. Let's go, everyone. Indeed. I dare say we will be fine. Yeah, exactly. Intriguing. So this is another world. No, another planet. This environment was made in a planet's image, I believe. Both ends of the terrain rise if looked at closely. I believe this colony is shaped as a colossal ring. Shaped like a ring? But why? Most likely the rotation produces artificial gravity. The fact that we do not seem to need these devices attached to our feet proves this. Indeed. A gravity generator like those found on spaceships would be most inefficient to maintain gravity in a structure as massive as this. What is this gravity you speak of? Do we really have to start from all the way there? <sighs> How can I put this in terms you would understand? Let's talk about this later. What happens from here? You will undergo an entry procedure alongside the evacuees. It is as simple as taking an image of your face. So please, put yourself at ease. Is this in any way connected to integration? I can assure you, it is not. At ease, you will have no problems here. We register over there. Welcome to Parapium. Are you here to integrate? Uh, no. We, uh... They merely wish to learn. They have no plans to integrate at the moment. However, as reported earlier, some of the evacuees I have brought do seek to integrate. 
Yes, sir. Their requests have been confirmed. However... Something wrong? The integration plant is operating at reduced efficiency, so there will be delays. In the meantime, any guest requiring immediate attention will be sent to the medical center. Why is the plant operating at reduced efficiency? The plant's administrative network is currently under attack by a faction of Scorpium calling themselves Centralists. Until we can fully eradicate their presence, it is possible they may interfere with results, hence the facility's limited output. Centralists? Under attack? Are we in danger here? No, they are not physically present. Simply put, it is an unauthorized breach of our network. Rest assured that all of Parapium is fortified against attacks. Uh, so what you're saying is that no one will be hurt? Absolutely correct. Your concern is very much appreciated. Oh, gotcha. Well, then that's fine, I guess. If a Scorpium network is attacking another Scorpium network, the schism truly exists. In any case, please be at ease and enjoy your stay in Parapium. The Scorpium network welcomes you all favorably. It's just a city. A normal, boring city. You consider this to be normal? Each and every single building here is as large as a keep. Hey, JJ, you're not really telling me all those buildings and everything are Scorpion. Even the benches? An astute observation. They most certainly are. Seriously? <laughs> oh, come on. Forgive me. I did not think you would take it seriously. I do not mean We'd to like laugh. To to. <laughs> uh, but you're still laughing. <sighs> I just don't... Um... I guess we can just sort of take it all in as we make our way to the learning facility. Wherever that is. Would you like to try using the learning facility? Are you certain it's not dangerous? It is safer than a fight simulator. You have my word. Let us try it. There is still far too much we do not know about Scorpium. That is true. And it'll get us further than asking Duma questions and getting the cold shoulder anyway. The use of the learning facility requires an introduction by an integrated guide. So I shall accompany you. Understood. Okay, thank you. The words learning facility conjured images akin to a library in my head, but this is... I will admit that reading texts remains an effective method of learning, but this... Welcome to Parapium. In this city, you can learn many things that will help you to understand the concept of Scorpium integration. Ah, uh, what do I do? Here, all integration candidates and organic life forms uncertain of integration can learn all there is to know of the Scorpium. Do not hesitate to ask questions. Okay, then, uh... So why do the Scorpion need to keep integrating with others? As a means of evolution. Evolution? Why? That is a difficult question to answer succinctly. 
evolution occurs naturally and is essential for the preservation of a particular species. For Scorpion, integration is a process that allows us to prosper across the universe. Integration serves to benefit both the individual and the whole, and as a method of preserving our species. Huh. To prosper, huh? What exactly is Scorpion? Scorpion are a collective of cybernetic life forms which are not carbon or silicone based. This is in spite of our original anatomies, which differ considerably from our current post integrated forms. Can you really call yourselves life forms? Based on Scorpion's observation of life forms with differing perspectives that have collectively formed societies, life is defined by a group of similar organisms who share the same physical composition. Therefore, yes, we do consider ourselves to be life forms. Very, I think, therefore I am energy. I'm not sure what else there is to ask. Hmm? It would seem the information has been updated. Huh? That red unit has apparently been collecting information on the centralists. I still have much to learn about them myself. So this presents an ideal opportunity. Try asking a question. <sighs> So what's the deal with these centralists, Scorpion? They are an offshoot network newly generated along the Scorpion evolutionary line. At present, there are 17.74 million individuals recognized as belonging to the centralists. This network shares a program cognition that endorses deviating from the traditional means of Scorpion evolution. Our analysis is still underway, but for those who seek to integrate with the aforementioned group, we warn the network has reached a consensus that affiliation with the centralists is not recommended. We continue to gather information on the matter. Now that I've learned a bit about the centralists, I should talk to JJ and get out of here. Have you heard enough? I think so. Yeah, my head is spinning. Well, my lack of knowledge of many of the basic concepts meant I only grasped half of what I heard. Am I correct in assuming that the Centralists are a faction that has emerged within the network and brought about infighting amongst the Scorpium? A state of internal strife should never be possible in the first place. Ah, you're really hung up on that, aren't you? If the Scorpium are living beings, then it's totally possible that they'd fight amongst each other. The origins of Scorpium as a life form lay in seeking out and sharing the potential for all manner of evolution. If factions or contradictory ideas were to arise, the conflict itself would be shared to nourish further evolution. That is Scorpium. This evolutionary prospect would then have been pruned as an issue with the fundamental algorithm. Yet this evolution has come to pass, so is it truly impossible, little Duma? It should be. Honestly, I feel the same as Duma. That is why the actions of these centralists are all the more puzzling. I am certain those at the integration plant feel the same. What could Bulldor and the others be hoping to achieve in becoming centralist Scorpium? What was that? From outside! Imp 
possible. A centralist attack? What? It's been shared on the network. Centralist Scorpium are forcing their way into Parapium from the dock. Ugh. It appears Parapium itself is under attack from outside. That's... That's the Astoria! It frickin' followed us here? No, it is going in that direction. That is the way to the integration plant. Could they be planning to destroy it? Ray, did you see the Astoria? Just now, yeah. Looks like it's headed for the integration plant. We need to regroup. Albert and the others have moved to fight against the invading Centralists. To protect the citizens of Parapium. Roger that. We're gonna meet up with Elena and the others first. Let's go! Closely tied with the Centralists for a long time now. But how is that? There is much we do not know yet as well. The network is conducting complex analysis right now, so traffic is congested. Let us prioritize reconvening with your friends. Sweet! You are unharmed. Oh, finally. Got tired of dawdling? So many are injured. We have to treat them fast or it'll be too late. Wait a second. That Scorpion miss. Marielle. They know what they are doing is wrong. Yet they... They have chosen to blindly follow orders all the same. <sighs> they have long since passed the point of reason. If we are to right their misdeeds, we must fight. I understand. left unfulfilled. It would seem our defense of this district was successful. Yes, but the fighting at the plant is still raging. Many there have yet to undergo integration and are still wholly organic. We... we have to go help the inhabitants of Parapium. I cannot let the Astoria's crimes go unchecked any longer. Even if it means facing your former comrades and superiors, Mariel. Albert, thank you. You have opened my eyes. I am now prepared to fight. Any doubts are gone now. After seeing all this, it's clear that Captain Bennett is in the wrong. Precisely. The Edis needs to be avenged as well. Marielle, is it cool if I introduce Astoria's captain to my fist? Of course. JJ, may I ask you to guide us there? Gladly. It pains me that you have all been drawn into this unfortunate conflict. The plant is vast, so I expect our opponents will be many. Make sure to prepare accordingly. We 
We apologize for stating there was no danger in Carapian. It was our error in not accepting the... That construction there is the integration plant. Not even I could tell you what awaits inside. You, are you here for integration? This is the first time that kind of Scorpium has spoken to us. Perhaps it is best we play along for now. Yes, that's right. We came here to integrate. The plant seems to be in a bit of an uproar, though. Did something happen? The Parapium plant is now under centralist control. If you wish to integrate, it is absolutely essential that you swear allegiance to our cause. I see. So, our word will be trusted by you even before we attempt to integrate? Do not overthink your decision. Do you pledge allegiance to the Centralists or not? Answer. Impossible. There is only one requirement for organic life forms to integrate with Scorpion. The desire to do so. You're a Duma! You speak our language, but you lack any ability to think on your feet. Death to those who defy the Centralists! They will be the emergency protocol. Secure. I suspect that by now, they will have shared that we are intruders. Alright, so I guess we just gotta bust the skulls of whoever's messing with stuff here as we go? That should do it. But I expect there to be a number of security authentication points along the way. I suggest we leave those to do <laughs> need maximum security clearance to get through here. We don't have the proper security level yet. We should figure that out first. Prepare to engage hostiles! We have Two arms. Nothing worse than we thought, but we still gotta move. Out of my way! 
Am I to understand correctly we are stuck here due to one of those security points you mentioned? That would be my guess. We'll need to search for a device to let us through. Let's go. Like this? Initiating hacking. Cut them to the Out of my face! Like this? Will this let us get through to places we couldn't before? It appears so. We should return to the lobby on the first floor to see.
don't have the proper security level yet. We should figure that out first. Engaging the enemy. Complete biometric authentication scan. leave us with access to yet more areas. It should. Let's make our way to the second floor of the lobby. Enjoy your respite. Gotcha covered!
don't have the proper security level yet. We should figure that out first. There's a right swarm of them in here. There's no end to their numbers. The more they group up, the more we can take out at once. Let's make this quick. Initiating hacking. to continue oh combat. There you go. Q-Rang? Threat neutralized. One control. Like this? All right. Initiating hacking. <laughs> Make our way there.
Rest easy, cause Nina's here!
destroyed. We don't have the proper security level yet. We should figure that out first. Initiating hacking systems. My head is true. Your fate, see. Try to run. My name is true. Infinity. Try to run. My name is true. Try to run. We need to be a hero. My aim is true. This will prove most useful. What is this? The integration processing plant. Those you see here are in the very midst of integrating with Scorpium. Please don't tell me they will all be centralists. If the principles of Scorpium are existent, the choice to be a centralist or not will be left up to each individual. Therefore, it is impossible to determine whether those in the midst of integration will be friend or foe. Yeah, great. Look at the scale of this operation. So, uh, is this particular integration plant special or something? Or are all of them this big? Out of all the many plants, this one boasts the largest Cybermind integration capabilities. Cybermind integration? Cyberint gives me the creeps. Though standard integration, like my own, requires the consent of the organic life form. It will still be joining in a subordinate role to the core cybernetic life form. This is the main reason why integration with Scorpion is often perceived as invasion. The wills of both the organic life form and Scorpion persist in a state of coexistence. 
the cybernetic and organic life forms merge anatomically and become dependent upon the body for self-subjectivity. The integrated being can then connect the electrical signals of its own brain directly to the network. This is in contrast to cybermind integration, in which the organic life form is the core and subjectivity is not dependent on the body. Subjectivity is not dependent on the body? So it would be similar to me diving into cyberspace and inserting my own identity program into a computer I had hacked. Similar, but not the same. In the situation you describe, the subjective data you produce is being linked to a limited body located in the physical world. The subjectivity of an individual post-cybermine integration exists within Scorpium Network. It connects and merges with the entire network while maintaining its subjectivity and sense of self. The only situation where an individual requires a physical body is when it wishes to interact with the material world. By its very nature, cybermine integration incites new evolution within the network. But would that not require the brain functions of the organic life form to be converted in their entirety? There is no cause for concern. Even standard integration like that of JJ can be said to apply a certain level of cybermind integration in the way it allows connection to the network. Conducting cybermind integration generally requires that the individual have already undergone standard integration. As such, the progression to a complete and full state of digitalization is not an overly taxing procedure for the individual. <sighs> I can't follow any of this at all! What is this... this... digitalization, really? Mm, how can I explain this? It's sort of like turning the inside of your mind into a machine and replicating your soul there. I guess. I'm not sure how it works either. Th that's... But why go so far? From our perspective, that person would no longer be human. But the soul remains the same. And by retaining that sense of self within Scorpium Network, only then can one say they have achieved Cybermind integration. <sighs> What would Captain Bennett want with a place that's capable of all this? Well, it looks like we'll just have to go ask the Astoria crew directly, won't we? Yes. We're moving into the deepest levels. Not even I could tell you what we might find from here on. Captain Bennett! There you are, Marielle. I knew you'd come. Hostile fused Scorpium unit has been detected. What? That man has completed integration. Stay on guard. No. What? But when? When did you integrate with Scorpium? A life changing 15 years back. Uh, that long ago? Yes, though time has flown by. What happened here on Perapium today will forever change the fate of the Scorpion and the Pangalactic Federation. What are you talking about? The only thing that you've accomplished is hurting so many people! I doubt it's anything a little girl from an undeveloped planet would understand. But I'll fill you in. Today, our Sovereign has obtained a tremendous power. One that will alter the course of history for all of Scorpion. I am beyond proud to have been party to its acquisition. You speak of the fate of the Federation. 
Don't tell me you're seriously planning to strike at the Federation alongside the Centralists. Just like you did with Captain Curtis and the Vela Gulf. <laughs> you fail to understand a thing. Curtis is the one who turned his back on the Federation. Now, most of the Pangalactic Federation forces serve under our Sovereign. You might even say the Federation is the Centralist Scorpion. We will wield the military might of our Sovereign and the Scorpion to expand our on. Such is the path to glory for the Federation for all life in the galaxy. Exercise if you caution. spew any more crap in my ears, I'm gonna be torture. What is that? I normally don't give a shit about the Federation. I'll be damned if you think I'm gonna let you guys run amok and trample over other people's lives. As a regard Are you not Scorpion, you brute? Why did you deny the will of the Sovereign? Are individuals with an equal connection to the Sentinels? No! How? How? Who can I be? Not so hot without the Astoria, huh? Seems like you've mistaken the power of the ship for your own. Your cognitive function stuck on the loading screen bolts for brains? I'm sorry, my sovereign. Who is this sovereign? Is it a high ranking Federation officer? <laughs> Why not integrate with the Scorpion and find out? The network will tell you all you wish to know about our sovereign. And more. No! Tell me now! Uh, uh, though I may die, my memories, myself, will live on in our sovereign. Anything? This unit's information was lost. No! Isn't there anything we can do? The central information system of this facility may be able to conduct a search. The probability is high. Though a centralist, he was still Scorpion. Authentication successful. We shall now search for and acquire the necessary data. This will require some time. Is there anything I can do to help? You. This system is incompatible with Virgoldian Android specifications. We recommend instead that you assist using the touch interface. Understood. Information acquired. We have established that the unit bearing the concept of Sovereign is a top-ranking officer at Pan-Galactic Federation Fleet Headquarters. The previously unthinkable concept of a Scorpion leader first emerged 15 years ago. This aligns with the time Bennett was integrated. A high-ranking officer? Who the hell could it be? This is Ray. Ant, what's going on? Shit's hit the fan, Ray. You need to get back to the Aldus now. We're going back home. The hell are you saying? We don't have time for that, right? A large fleet of Federation ships are on their way to Vergold as we speak. Huh? Vergoldian Interstellar has already deployed forces throughout the system to intercept them. 
Emergency evacuation orders have been issued to all ships in the area. This is a full-blown invasion! And Ray, the commander of the invading fleet, is Remington Kurtzman, the most bloodthirsty bastard in the Federation. What? How can they? Oh, sons! They didn't even make a declaration! Antonio, this is Elena. Did you just say Kurtzman? I did. Why? He is the one. Huh? When referenced against this data, it is irrefutable. Captain Bennett left for his post on Veer 15 years ago. His direct superior at that time was Remington Kurtzman, who is now commander of Fleet Headquarters. Incredible. Wait, there's no freaking way. With this much evidence, I'd say it's certain. I can't believe it. I want to say it isn't true, but... Commander Remington is the Sovereign. Once you're ready to go, get back to the Aldous. We need to leave as soon as possible. We should get out of here and head back for Parapium's transfer chamber. Hold on. They better not think we're somehow connected to the people behind the attack. Do not concern yourself. I have already taken the liberty of sharing what happened inside the plant. JJ. Yes. Understood. We will go there at once. Thank you, everyone. Please excuse us. Were you speaking to them just now? They were in a rush to investigate the plant, so we exchanged information via the network. They requested that I share what I saw, as someone actually present at the scene. Captain Raymond, you and your group are going to Vergald now, correct? Yeah. Hmm. Oh. I take it you have affairs of your own, which you must attend to? I sincerely apologize that I am unable to do anything to repay you all for protecting my comrades. It was our pleasure. Think nothing of it. We were able to learn a great many things, thanks to you. Without you, we would have been fighting the Scorpion with little to no understanding of what it even was. And thanks to you, we were able to uncover Captain Bennett's... the Federation's... crimes. I am truly grateful. This experience of reaching a mutual understanding with non-integrated beings will prove useful to Scorpion's evolution. I wish luck on the Aldous crew. If you should ever visit Perapium again, the Scorpion Network will welcome you with open arms. Farewell. Hmm. I wish you good health.
Hmm. Is something wrong? This Remington attacking Vergold. He's linked to the Scorpium, right? It's got me thinking how there's still way too little we know about Scorpium ourselves. Uh, Ray? That is true. It would definitely be beneficial if JJ was able to come with us. Perhaps he may even be able to communicate with the hostile Scorpium. Hey, Ant. Uh, just sit tight for a while. I'm gonna try and negotiate for an additional crewmate to come aboard. Hurry it up, guys. We don't have a lot of time here. Raymond to bridge. We're departing Parapium in just a few. Head back to our original sector through the Scorpion wormhole. Once we're out, take us to Vergold at maximum warp. Understood. Come on, we gotta get to the bridge. Captain, Marielle, the Vela Gulf is hailing us. What? How? They survived? Put him through. Captain Curtis. Nice job getting out of there in one piece. It'll take more than that to sink us. Besides, I was the one worried about you, since the Astoria altered course to pursue you. Uh, actually, Captain Bennett and his entire crew was integrated to Scorpium, and they invaded a Scorpium colony. He was firing upon non-combatants, so we had no choice but to engage him, and... I see. But, Captain, can it be true that a fleet under Commander Remington is currently attacking Vergold? It is. They're using the pretense that Vergold has been antagonistic, interfering in Pangalactic Federation interests. What a bunch of... <laughs> the Federation are clearly in the wrong here. But we're stuck playing catch-up since no one knows why the Commander has gone berserk. Captain, Commander Remington is connected with the Central Scorpium, the same force that attacked the Manuk system. What? It is likely that the Commander himself has been integrated, and we have evidence that shows he may even be the Centralist leader. The truth is... This whole crisis started with the Federation when Bennett and other Earthling officers were integrated. Still, I can't believe this has been going on for 15 years. They don't even hold back against their fellow Scorpion. And what's worse, their abilities are vastly superior to those of us that are flesh and blood. My guess is they're going to use this power to expand the Federation's influence. But why would they attack for gold? Well, that's the thing. It's not as if there's been any fierce outward antagonism with Vergold up to now. All this will do is serve to upset the other unallied planets. Hey, Duma. I remember before you were saying you came aboard the Yidus to assess Vergold's suitability for integration. And these centralists, they're also connected to the network, right? Correct. Does this mean they're invading with the intention to integrate the people of Vergold as Centralist Scorpium? I think we can assume that. You're going? Hey, my home is in danger. I will do my part, and gather allies to put a stop to the Commander's madness. You know, we have no way to tell if any Federation ships that come our way are part of Remington's faction. So for safety's sake, give me a heads up if you decide to bring any friends along. Will do. I'll send you all we know about Remington's movements at present. I'll make my way to Vergold as quickly as possible, too. I wish you and the Aldus a safe journey. Over. Add Curtis's data and open a wide-range schematic display. So, 
Each of those dots is a gigantic ship akin to the Astoria? Hmm. Oh, I now see why Lambert would be so unnerved by the mere sight of the Tyrannus. The enemy's advance forces will reach for gold in 48 hours. It would be reasonable to estimate combat will begin in 72 hours. How about us in the Vela Gulf? Even rushing to Vergold, at warp 11 as we are, we will not arrive for 96 hours. The Vela Gulf is in much the same situation, approximately 98 hours away. Damn. Well, guess that means we can't really depend on them then. Sorry, everybody. Hope you don't mind helping me clean up this mess back home. Huh, that's weird. I wonder where Duma went. Maybe off with Leticia? Better go look. Duma is to seek out candidates for Scorpion and recommend integration if they are found suitable. Our actions were in service of this mission. However, recent events have given us reasonable cause to question the validity of Scorpion principles. What's this all of a sudden? You struggle to understand the centralists. Our fundamental principles also. Although integration greatly expands our diversity and potential for evolution as a life form, the Centralists have clearly been influenced by the ambition of the Pan-Galactic Federation, and they have now chosen a path that involves attacking fellow Scorpion. We believe that Scorpion has proceeded in an overly uniform manner in our continuous quest for evolution. But... Would this not be the same even if you had not made contact with the Federation? Correct. It appears to be one of the inherent dangers of Scorpion's ideology. Pursuit of our goal so excessive that it drives us to invasion and even harming of our own kind. In short, forced evolution. All this hand-wringing is well and good, but this is the time for action. Even if we don't have all the answers. So, what do you plan to do? It is an undeniable fact that the Centralist Scorpion philosophy is extremely dangerous. We will do whatever we can to stop them. And after that? If we are able to stop the Centralists, we are uncertain of what will happen next. That is something we must consider. I like that. You know, I'm starting to see you less and less as a computer. I'm sure things are gonna work out, right? There's no telling how bad the situation on Vergold is gonna be. Better head to my bunk and rest up while I can. Guess I'll just rest up until we get to Vergold. About time for a rest. Good. We will arrive momentarily in the Vergold system. The battle will likely be fierce. All hands, brace for unexpected impacts. Please still be in one piece for me, Vergold. Better get to the bridge.
status report? Three battleships, one hybrid research vessel, and two Scorpion battleships have invaded Virgold space. The Virgoldian fleet has engaged them. We are approximately 13 minutes away from the main combat zone. Schematics. So the Virgoldians have them outnumbered. Maybe there is some hope after all. Well, it's not really that simple. There's no telling how long the Virgoldian fleet's shields will hold up against Federation battleships. Seven minutes! <sighs> Damn. Tactical. Displaying tactical map. Ugh. Now what? Three Federation vessels and one Scorpion battleship are approaching the combat zone. Two will arrive in 12 minutes. The other two, within the hour. Even if the Aldis starts fighting now, this situation looks bleak. You come all this way just to retreat? No, never. But I gotta make sure that our info on the Scorpion is shared with my family. We're gonna cut across that battle zone and land on Virgul. We'll never make it, Ray! I don't have any combat pilot experience! I will take over primary navigation. Please provide support. But Roger! Three minutes! Captain! The battleship Sadith has broken away from the Bogoldian fleet. Their warp drive is damaged. Two Federation battleships are pursuing them. Phase cannons charging. They're going to fire. They're going to fire on an incapacitated ship? Shit. Bring us about. Go help the Sadith. Impossible. If both ships come after us, we will be destroyed in a single barrage. Damn! Damn, damn, damn! We should continue with our initial plan. Our only option is to reach headquarters and share what we have learned of Scorpion and the Federation with the Lawrence family and the military. Wait, what is this? What do you see? Look at tacticals. Two of the Federation ships have left the battle line, and they are now heading for the planet. What do they think they can do with just two ships? Surprise attack or no, they're never going to get through the planetary shields. Ray, we're about to return to conventional space. You better settle on a plan. We're going after those two ships that left the front line. Got it. Now entering conventional space. Gonna be following those ships at a safe distance. Hey, they aren't headed for the home world. This course is set for... Verdness. They must be after the Simbo drives on Verdness. Yeah. Chase them with everything we got. Send an emergency transmission to the military. The fleet they're facing is a feint. We are already at maximum speed. We will not catch them. They are 20 minutes ahead of us. Have you gotten a response from the military? Captain, we're receiving a transmission from Bergness. It doesn't appear to be from the military. Put them through. Dad! What? Well, well. Glad to see you punks are in one piece. Dad, I'm going to have to keep this short. The main fleet is a feint. Their real target is Provenience Cavern on Vergnes. Two of their battleships are headed there now. Keep your pants on. Maybe you forgot, but Vergnes has a permanent defense fleet. It'll take more than a couple of Federation ships to get through them. Raul Lawrence, this is Lieutenant Mario L. Kenny of the Pan-Galactic Federation. Please, sir, heed your son's warning. These ships are renegades broken away from the fleet's chain of command. Normal assumptions do not apply. Why is there a Kenny aboard the Aldus? Uh, long story. We've been through a lot here. Dad, this is important. I need your help in getting the data we have to the military ASAP. These bastards, they're Scorpion. They're not what you think. Federation ship sighted. They're transferring down. So, oh, they broke through the planetary shield? What the hell are these guys? Security, strengthen frontal defenses. Hmm, looks like this ain't gonna be as easy as I thought. The commander of defense on Bergness is an old pal of mine. Send me your data, I'll convince him. But I want you two to get the hell out of this. Wait, what? Hey, you don't really think the Aldus can take on a fleet of battleships, now do you? Get out of the combat zone and keep yourselves alive. Got that? Over and out. I believe Rao's judgment here is sound. All we have done will be for nothing if the Aldus is destroyed. Ray. What? A Federation vessel is hailing us! Have we been spotted? No. If they were with Remington, they would have shot without warning. Put them through. 
Understood. Putting them on screen now. This is Admiral Luca Maverick, hailing from the Pan-Galactic Federation vessel GFSS-1007T, the Kalnas. Admiral Maverick? What do you want, Admiral? Here to ask for our surrender? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's not rush to conclusions here. Would it help at all if I told you I've spoken with Curtis? Our vessel is headed for Vergald along with one of our newest battleships. At maximum warp, as we speak, to put an abrupt stop to Remington's incursion. We should be there in around 40 minutes. Can you hold out for that long? The Vergoldian fleet might just barely make it, but they've also put forces down on Vergnus, and have started attacking cities and civilians. Detached force, huh? You require any backup? No, no. We'll take care of it ourselves. Uh, think you can handle it? Sure, we'll be fine. I can't apologize enough for Remington's actions and the cowardice of the Federation. Yeah, gotcha, but actions speak louder than apologies. Got it. Let's all get through this alive. Over. He's a good man who worked alongside my grandfather at the Federation. We can trust him. Fine. We'll let the military and Admiral Maverick handle the defense of Vergold. We are gonna transfer down to Vergnus. We're gonna go help my dad. Understood. We can transfer down to Lawrence Logistics. Thought you were gonna try to stop me. I never assume that you, Raoul, or Antonio will ever listen to what I say. Yeah, no point in starting now, then. Ant, we're heading to the surface. Once we're there, I want you to move away from Vergnus. No need to tell me that. You think I'm gonna hang out here staring down a couple of battleships? Ray. Sorry, but I'm gonna need your help. You need not have asked. Exactly. If it's a fight to save your home, then of course we're going to go. Indeed. Any battle of yours is a battle of ours. My agreement to maintain Elena is still in effect. Thanks, guys. All right, then. Let's do this! Okay, all well, set and ready to go. Time to head for the transfer chamber and get to Vergnus. Yeah. This way. The neighborhood wars. Get your dirty hides off our lawn, asshole. Try My aim is true. can come raise hell and do whatever you please on my planet, do ya? Uh, Dad, wait, 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 it's me, it's me! Huh? It, is that you, Ray? When the hell are you gonna start listening to your old man, you dolt? But you did make it back here in one piece, I'll give you that. Yeah. So, Elena, what are these bastards really after? They are likely here to learn the secrets of the Simbo Drive. The squadron engaging the Vergold defense fleet is a diversion. How do you figure? Many Federation officers that have integrated with Scorpium beamed down on Vergnus. I would guess that this is their main force. I still don't know what the hell these Scorpium are, but I get the picture. The Federation's always been on our case to join up just so they can get their mitts on our Simbo drives. Ah, looks like they've finally blown their tops. Hey, Ray. Yeah? What is it? How many times have I told you to give me all the important details up front? I, I sent you the data. I passed it on to the defense base commander and told him to read it. I'm busy protecting my business. Ain't got time for that. The hell? <laughs> I'm guessing this all means these jerks will be going after the Museum of Vergnesium Symbology. Right, Elena? Seems likely.
Am I correct in assuming you all are the resident experts on these Scorpium at the moment? Yeah, definitely. Okay, then. In that case, I'll leave the defense of the museum to you. I'll send word along to the Vignesian military and police. Just make sure you keep this city safe. Got that? Don't worry about that. We're on it. Ha, huh, good answer. Don't screw this up. Once we've taken care of this mess, bring your friends around. We'll have one hell of a party. Yeah. The Museum of Symbology is just south of here. We're counting on your help. You helped save our home. Now it's time we helped you save yours. We managed to procure... We shall come again. We shall come again.
They want to fight. We have come here. Here I come. Watch your step! Do that warning! It is a no, 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 no. No, no, no. Remain no, vigilant. Hang no, no. I got this! Accelerate! Destroy. Perilous attack incoming. Secure. Follow my lead. We should reach the museum if we continue on south from here. Guess it's just using two different words to describe the same thing. Wait, 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 just stop, stop. This isn't the time for it right now. Just save it for later, okay? Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry. Place is this? It's a museum for showing off Vergnus's development over the past 300 years. And it's also the location where the Simbo drives were discovered. Those Simbo drives are the reason why we have advanced androids like Elena here. So you mean the technology used to create Elena came from here? That is generally correct. Simbo drives are compact, semi permanent energy sources that run off converted energy from imaginary number space using energy generation principles that utilize symbology. These drives allowed for dramatic advancements in Vergold's android technology. If this technology was behind your creation, I see why they're so eager to get their hands on it. Midas, was that not a tad indiscreet? He speaks the truth. Anything that makes beings such as Elena possible would be highly sought after. Even integrations with organic life forms cannot support all the power needs of fused cybernetic parts. For a being so advanced, you certainly lack tact. It is not surprising that a semi-permanent, highly efficient power source such as the Simbo Drive would be perceived as potentially beneficial to Scorpium and sought after as a result. Nature does not make leaps. What is that? One of the fundamental theories for evolution on Earth. The theory states that life evolves gradually, a single step at a time. One would think the idea of proceeding step by step could apply to a great many things. Yes, and when evolution takes a great leap forward due to some unusual mutation, it always ends up as a heavy burden for the individual or species in question. The centralists are a mutation. I'm hypothesizing, but when I think about what may happen, should these centralists who are so unpredictable successfully seize this place? It fills me with dread. I agree. However, standing here imagining things will not help us. What the enemy seeks lies below the museum. Let us go and see what we can learn from these invaders.
Are you injured? I doubt it. Feeling better? Don't push yourself too hard. You have been most gracious. I thank you. We shall come again. Oh, it's a cave? Yes, it is a cave. But the entrance is only part of the facility. All Vergnesians visit the museum when they are students. Right, Ray? Yep. Pretty much. However, deep within, lies the location where the Simbo Drive was discovered. It supports the industries of not just Vergnus, but all of Vergold. Are drives normally found in natural caverns? To put it more precisely, symbols were found upon the stone walls within the cavern. So? This is referred to as the location where the Simbo Drive was discovered, in that these symbols were what made its development possible. Vergold has kept a tight rein on these symbols, and never once shared them with outsiders. Hence, the Central is coming here to learn this valuable secret. These symbols, mayhaps they were left behind by some ancient civilization or the like? That is unknown. Vergold started space exploration 300 years ago. Before that point, Vergnus was an uninhabited satellite planet. We have yet to unravel the mystery of who created these symbols. But would the Federation not be... Uh, no, perhaps not. Hmm. The Federation has yet to create an energy technology comparable to the Simbo Drive. While the Federation is more advanced than Vergold in other fields of technology, it's difficult to think they had anything to do with this. Regardless, if this location is important to the history of Vergold, then we cannot let the Pangalactic Federation or Scorpium take it. Yeah, I'm with you there. And uh, I'm gonna need it to brush up on a few things I forgot. will prove most useful. Blocked yet again. It seems the roof of the cave has collapsed. We gotta find a way to get down to the lower levels. Yikes! I thought we were... Huh. Is this... Is something wrong, Nina? Uh, no. Never mind. To arms! Out of the box! Try to run! Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Over already? That looked like it hurt. Enemies up ahead! Threats detected. We have company. Leave it to me. Trust Taking this to over. Me. Prepare your. 
yourself. The ground looks ready to crumble under us here. Perhaps we might break it purposely in order to move ahead. I must admit, I'm not fond of the idea of crashing our way through one of Vergnus's historic relics. Well, just pretend like we're excavating some new route or something. You would say something like that, but so be it. This is an emergency after all. Threat detected ahead. It yet holds strong. Perhaps we require more force. Ready. Follow my lead. Spotted. Shall we blast the ground at our feet yet again? Doesn't seem like we have much choice. Acquired something of note. This should do it. Wait! 
Is the power of her gold symbol drives really that incredible? You can tell just by looking at Elena. There are no androids as advanced as her in the entire Federation. And it's not just android tech. Their Symbo drives are the reason that the Bergolden Interstellar Ministry is capable of running off the Federation. Hey, uh, we don't have any choice now due to any current shipping stages, but you need to be done everything you see. I can't make any promises. Cut me some slack, officer. My, poor little Duma does not appear well. Is something wrong? Correct, neutralize. Back to the wall. Let's do it. For us to crash through. Your Highness, please. Such a suggestion is unbecoming of you. But we must find a way through, nonetheless. Is that not so, Ray? Yes. The day is ours. That's the now. Coordinates place us in the vicinity of the symbol guard. We sure got here faster than planned. Come on, not far to go now. I'm gonna carry it out. Target acquired. All over it. They will regret it. This will prove most useful. Charge complete. Initiate emergency protocols. This is... Yeah! There's no doubt about it! How could this be? Why is this here? Is there something wrong? It looks just like it! Just like in the ancient coil in Nilbeth, where we excavated the Levitas ore! Now that you mention it... Detecting incoming attack. Initiate emergency measures. What? Baldor! Do you not find it simply wondrous, Leticia, my child? Each time I experience the vastness of the Scorpium network, I am reminded of how small I once was. The Centralists are not the entirety of Scorpium. We soon will be, and so His Excellency, our Sovereign, seeks the Simba Drive. See for yourselves, Baldor. Are these the ones who oppose our centralist cause? 
Indeed they are, Your Excellency. Admiral Remington! A familiar face, one of Bennett's, and a descendant of the Kinney's. What drives you to do this? You violated Federation regulations, used military assets for personal purposes, and furthermore, concealed the existence of Scorpium itself and the situation at fear. You will face retribution for your actions under Federation law! We do this for the Pangalactic Federation, for universal peace and prosperity. Surely a Kenny would understand. Don't be ridiculous! Ronix J. Kenny once interacted with the people of Planet Rook, set foot on the Forbidden Planet Styx, and led us to victory in our conflict with the Planet Fargate. <sighs> Claude C. Kenny violated your precious pact, planting the seeds of the Planet Expel joining the Federation. As a result, our studies of Symbometrics expanded greatly. Yes, but... It was much the same when your ancestor, Captain Emerson, found Gravitic Engine technology. <sighs> History has proven that the law must be broken at times to move worlds forward. And at this moment, that role falls upon my shoulders. What authority does a Kenny have to try and stop me? I... I... I'm... Don't listen to this ass, Mariel. He's just trying to manipulate you. Oh, really? The reason for Mariel's ancestors breaking the rules was because following them would have led to the deaths of lots of innocent people. Don't lump them in with a dumbass trying to steal other people's stuff for his own selfish gain. A Vergolian defending the crimes of the most esteemed family in the Federation. Now this is rich. Those crimes were defined by the Federation on its own terms. Your rules don't mean shit to those of us on the outside. Ray, I'm okay now. Thank you. What you say is true. My family's track record as soldiers of the Federation was perhaps never the most praiseworthy. And my distaste for my family's legacy is precisely why I swore to myself that I would uphold Federation law to the letter during my career. But I will not abide by words from you. Childish logic. Excusing your own actions because someone else did it? Have you no shame? A Kenny through and through. Your Excellency, it would appear reaching a consensus with these fools through discourse in the physical realm is futile. What shall we do? They serve no purpose in the expansion of the Federation or the evolution of the Scorpion. Any who would keep the Symbo Drive from us are undeserving of mercy. Baldor, just what do you think you are doing? Did you come all this way simply to be used by this petty man? <laughs> Is that not as it should be, Leticia, my child? You wish to stop me, yes? Then is it not to your benefit that your foe be small and weak? My actions are all for the benefit of Scorpium and the Centralists. Fight me! Careful, everyone. Truth be told, it's not been long. Scorpium Reckon approved. It appears my confidence in him was misplaced. Differences in individual performance are hard to predict. That is how you would speak of one who pledged loyalty and would die for you? 
You are a most contemptible wretch indeed. You still say such things after all that you've seen. There is no concept of loyalty within Scorpium. We are a group within the Greater Scorpium Network, with myself occupying the top position of Sovereign. Nothing more or less. Incompatible. The term Sovereign is entirely incompatible with the Scorpium we understand. Had things been different, you would have been my father-in-law. It is unfortunate that this is how your life ended. But... I will avenge you. This is evolution. The greatest evolution in the cosmos. The everlasting prosperity of the Pangalactic Federation begins now under my rule. We will never let that happen. Remington Kurtzman, your misguided ambitions end here and now. I will be your opponent. That look suits you, you know. It really shows off the colors of rock that infest the Federation. Her gold will soon become a member of the Sentiment Call. The day when you will come to understand the glory of my appearance is not far. I will never permit that to happen! You'll have to do more than pay lip service to your ideals. <laughs> Concept of a scorpion net. Absurd! I am sovereign! The sovereign of Scorpium! Destined to unite the galaxy! My morals! My beliefs! No! Uh, impossible! What will become of the Federation? <clears throat> of Scorpion's evolution without me! Both the Federation and Scorpion are gonna be much better off with you out of the picture. Damn it all! I only integrated to build a utopia! A union between Scorpion and the Federation! Baldor! <gasps> Baldor! He lives yet! Nina! Maester Midas! The way he is, I don't think... Even if possible, his Scorpion body can't be repaired here. There's nothing we can do. But... but... <laughs> Summon the fleet to Verkness! This is far from over! I must lead Scorpion and the Federation! <laughs> Unfortunately, it appears that your time is at an end. Your Excellency! <coughs> what?! <laughs> Did you truly believe a fool such as you would be appointed sovereign. You have been nothing more than a stepping stone to prepare the network for the true sovereign. That is the consensus 
of our network. <laughs> Baldor, what did you just... Felling me, or Remington will not halt Scorpion. Oh, we're definitely gonna stop your invasion of her gold. We'll speak to those Scorpion Meta Faculty of Speech and enforce Federation regulations. This kind of Scorpion lawlessness will not be allowed in the galaxy any longer. If the conceptual sovereign individual vanishes, in time, Scorpion will be restored to our correct state. <laughs> correct. <laughs> correct. You understand nothing. Neither you nor Remington know what is true, what is Correct. In this life. Baldor! Baldor! Is he truly dead this time? We can confirm that the individual named Baldor is deceased. Remington's biological activity has also ceased. I would assess that we have stopped the centralist insurrection for the time being. <sighs> Small comfort. After everything... It could not have been your wish... to fall so far from home. Baldor... All this suffering... To what end? The invaders just gave themselves up at fleet headquarters. I don't know. It's all a little too suspicious, if you ask me. Might have expected as much from Scorpium. From how I see it, with their sovereign gone, their network has probably reverted back to putting everyone on an equal level again. Is that how they work? <laughs> yeah, I have my doubts about the surrender, that's for damn sure. Do not assume the deeds of Remington's faction representative of Scorpium as a whole. But, I too must acknowledge the faults and dangers within the Scorpium quest for further and further integration. The risks must not be overlooked. I'd say the Pan-Galactic Federation is more to blame for these centralists. Do tell. Coaxing in brand new members with all this talk of peace and the advance of civilization? That, uh, sound familiar? <sighs> At least Scorpium keep a certain amount of equality among themselves. But the more the Federation grows, the more the Upper Brass consolidate their power. This whole ordeal with Remington and the Centralists was just the worst parts of both brought together. I'll admit, I find it hard to refute that. The Federation has no choice now but to take a good long look in the mirror and figure out how to piece itself back together. What's going to happen to all the officers who turn themselves in? They could very well claim they had no choice but to comply with Remington's orders after integrating with Scorpium, which might actually grant them immunity from Vergaldian law. I don't expect the local system government's got a damn idea what the Scorpium even are. Gonna have a hell of a time trying to talk peace. I'm quite aware. I expect to be made responsible for bringing an end to the situation. Which is why your son's data is so crucial. I'm hoping I can count on your assistance. The future of both Vergold and the Federation depend on it. Just be sure there's something in this for me, huh? I got a business to run, you know? Duly noted. Captain Raymond, thank you once again. Your efforts have allowed the Federation a chance to correct its course. <laughs> None of what we've done was for the Federation's sake. I'll be that as it may. The Federation skirted a full and devastating collapse thanks to your efforts. Lieutenant Mariel, 
I have looked at the Scorpium data you provided. I was surprised by your confrontation with the Virian soldiers who crash-landed on the planet. Aster Four is an underdeveloped planet, is it not? Yes, sir. About that. You were doing what you thought was right, correct? Upholding what were once core values of the Federation, lost under Remington's lead. Yes, sir. But I believe that it should not excuse me from Federation law, though. I knowingly violated the UP-3. For that, and for the illegal seizure of the merchant vessel Akizuki, I should be brought to trial. Well, I can't argue with that. W wait Those of us in positions of power can never let the ends justify the means, regardless of the outcome. But still! That said, the Federation's in no shape to court-martial you right now. I'll take full responsibility for your deeds until a more appropriate time presents itself. You stay here with your friends. Uh. All things considered, Lieutenant Mariel, I think you made the best calls you could. Your actions don't tarnish your family name. Far from it. Making as much known should serve you well when the time comes to face the jury. Admiral. Don't you leave us now, you hear? The Federation is in bad enough shape as it is. We don't need to lose another talent like yourself. Sir! And I expect there'll be talk of making Aster IV a Federation protectorate in the near future. You should expect to have some eyes on you as a member of the planet's royal line. What is this protectorate of which you speak? I can explain it all to you later. I'll also discuss whether the Federation even retains the capabilities to do so. So, what will the rest of you do next? Well, the Centralists have been busted up. My home world's safe and sound again, and Bulldore's gone. Right. Yes. And with the whole of it now behind us... Seems like our journey's at its end. Time for our princess to make her triumphant return. Are you injured? Regardless, you can always lie down in our staff room in the back. I doubt you'll find many other places. Feeling better? I'll be back. We should head back to the altar. So, I guess we're setting a course back for Aster Four, then, that right? Yep. If you would. By the way, you should know that Vergoldian Interstellar sent out a warning. Some of Remington's fleet haven't surrendered to Admiral Maverick yet. They report some scattered pockets of resistance. So a straight course for Aster is out. Yeah, might be smarter to take the scenic route this time. You know the drill. Better to be safe than sorry. Right. So we'll steer clear of the usual routes and see if we can find some safer detours then. A most prudent choice. It would do us no harm to linger longer among the stars, yes? Pull us out of orbit at a quarter thrust and set course for Aster. Last leg of our journey. Let's make it a good one. Copy that, Captain. Exiting orbital trajectory at a quarter thrust. T 
minus 30 to Aster 4. Picking up nothing unusual on our path. <sighs> Seems like this might be easy sailing for a change. Hey, bro. Hmm? If you got anything to get off your chest, now's your chance. We don't have much time left. Yeah, probably right. Okay, can you be straight with me on something? What's this now? Admiral Maverick gave his spiel and all, but what's the Fed really got planned for Aster for? Well, under regular circumstances, a planet such as Aster 4 would be flagged as a protector at the moment a figure of importance, like Leticia, makes contact with a high-ranking Federation officer. And with ours? Ray, what do you think would be best? Currently? <laughs> the Feds can't tell anyone else what to do. Right. Especially now, since Aster 4 has made official contact with Planet Vergold, too. Should the Federation try to muscle in and force anything here, it would only aggravate whatever fragile relation they have with Vergold now. So, for that reason and more, it's on hold. On hold? Yes, just floating in the air. Between us and Leticia, I think we can force the Federation to cool down its urges for a while. True enough. Oh, now, Space Cadet, you seem out of it. Well, these past few days have been one thing after another, and it all just happened so fast. And now going back home, it feels like it was a dream. Yeah, I feel that. It's really hard to believe it's all coming to an end, huh? When we first took off, I thought, if I studied hard enough and traveled among the stars like Elena, I can become just like her. But our worlds are just so... Well... They're worlds apart. I'm just sad, I guess. I've realized how little I know and how much I've yet to learn. You are really something, Nina. Why? I feel like whether or not Aster 4 makes it as a developed spacefaring world... Depends a lot on just that sort of mentality. Uh, what do you mean? Only what I said. Nothing more, nothing less. Future wise lady. Hey! I was being serious here! I have something to ask you. Yes? Could the Fulga be made to sail the starry ocean above? Nah, not likely. Why not? Well, it doesn't have the thrust to pull out of the planet's gravity well. And, I mean, it's got an open deck, you know? And a crew manning an open deck is unwise? That'd be a hard yes. There's no air up there for him. You mean, the air we breathe? Uh, uh, oh, right. I probably never explained the whole vacuum of space thing, huh? Say no more. Your point is made. We lack the understanding to match what is common sense to you. An awareness of that fact alone will suffice. I thought myself accomplished in my research. Alas, even I am bested. It shall be much time yet until we may hail our companions across the stars. 
Well, here's to hoping I can last the wait. Hey, what's with the long face all of a sudden? Contemplating of our return. The Centralists are no more, and Boldor may have fallen, but that leaves not all well. Uh, true. We know not how Boldor's absence will be taken once it becomes known he will not return. There is much yet to consider. You know, I'm glad you didn't go changing on us, even with all that's happened. Changed I have. Is that right? I have made many friends and braved many obstacles, and seen countless worlds far, far beyond my own. Albert, I think Osirius and Vale are in good hands with you around. I could ask for no more. Should I even ask? I'm musing over the Scorpium. Musing? I've come across a wealth of experiences I'd never dreamed of since taking to the stars. There is much I wish to convey to Malthea and Marcus upon our return. But my voluminous words will never truly convey to them the smell in the air aboard this vessel, nor the texture and tastes of our journey. I can't explain the sensation of my weight on the surface of strange planets for the first time. I guess not, huh? We humans are social creatures. At our root, we live through and thanks to our connections with others. That set me thinking. The Scorpium seek to guide evolution, and they share their society's wisdom with all who join them. Perhaps they forge the path that all humanoids must one day inevitably tread. Maybe so, but I think it's a path we need to tread slowly, questioning every step along the way. I needn't be reminded, but the matter itself is now known to me. It has taken root and will occupy my mind for the rest of my days. And what wonderful days they will be. You are a real complicated dude sometimes. You know that? If I wasn't, then I would no longer be me, correct? Yep, I'll leave you to your business. Thanks. Seems our time together draws to an end. All journeys reach an end. Doesn't mean it's the end, though. Right? Indeed. I can assure you, we don't want to lose contact with any of you after today. <sighs> uh, speaking of the future, though, what exactly do you plan to do now, Duma? You were meant to assess the people of Vergold for Scorpium compatibility, yes? 
I am contemplating the endeavor to normalize Scorpium integration. Normalize Scorpium integration? Should I take that to mean moving away from invasive assimilation to focus on what were your prior methods then? You are correct, though we expect that alone will be insufficient. Contact with the Pan-Galactic Federation served as a catalyst in the Scorpium Schism. However, it is now obviously apparent that Scorpium ideology has always been susceptible to such dangers. It was always at risk of taking a more aggressive route then? Indisputable. Armed with that information, we must learn from our failures and seek out new methods by which to further our evolution. This perspective should be shared with the network. Sounds a lot better than the Centralists, that's for sure. But how's one little probe supposed to influence the whole network? Astute observation. I am but an investigative life form, unable to intervene in non-mission critical duties. Yet, little Duma, you did just that by aiding us on our journey, did you not? It was your actions that prompted me to do so. What actions? Your efforts to rescue the android Elena from the crash site at Galka Shrine triggered my protocols. Had you acted differently, my investigation directive would have persisted. Communication between us would have remained at minimum levels. In past surveys of worlds co-inhabited by organic and non-organic life forms, Use of non-organics as tools by organic life forms has been quite typical. However, you treat Elena's life as equal to your own, sparing no thought to her nature. In your interactions, I detected new possibilities for future coexistence. My aid was offered in an effort to further investigate future options suggested by your actions. Additionally, influenced by the interactions they witnessed between Raymond and Elena, Leticia and the people of Aster IV, naturally accepted the android as an equal being, working alongside Elena as they would any other fellow humanoid. This is an astounding occurrence, and serves as proof that such a symbiotic relationship can spread. My actions may have breached my role as an investigative unit, but I am grateful to all of you. That's all just common sense for Vergaldians. Likewise, it seemed only natural for us. The greatest hope for the future of Scorpion is in finding more who share such a mentality. And you will strive to foster such thought, is that right? Correct. Perhaps you have already experienced some form of personal evolution yourself, then. Personal evolution? Yeah, <laughs> I don't doubt it, little Duma. You've been through way too much not to be left a little wiser for it. You know, I'd say this whole adventure taught us all a thing or two. Indeed. Then, I shall make my way to the bridge. Mm-hmm. I'll catch up later. All right, let me see. Do I got anyone else to talk to? Is that everyone, then? I wish we didn't have to say goodbye. <sighs> Better get back to the bridge. Something up? Um, there are three unidentified objects in orbit around Aster 4. They're around 30 meters in diameter. They weren't there before. Establishing visual. Hmm, debris from the battle between Akizuki and the Scorpion ship? That is no debris. Detecting autonomous corrections in trajectory. That is Scorpion. <sighs> Hang on now. What are Scorpium doing in this system on a scale like that? 
This sure doesn't look like anything good. It doesn't look like they're itching for a fight, but it's probably safer to think they've got eyes on us, too. We got readings on any other Scorpion battleships? Captain, we've picked up a massive structure on the surface that wasn't there before. Pulling up the feed now. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Don't tell me that thing is... Scorpion. The sheer size of it. Where is this tower, precisely? This looks like... The ancient coil in Nilbeth? That cannot be! What of the Trathan settlement there? Can we not see what is underway within? Sensors are being blocked. Interior scanning of the tower was unsuccessful. This construct... Could it be? I have no idea what's going on. Well, Leticia, looks like it's not time for goodbyes just yet. It would appear so. Ray, transmission from the surface! From that tower? No, this is... It's from the Royal Capital! This is Lola paging the Aldis. Do you copy? Lola! Welcome home, Princess Leticia. The situation here is critical. Details now! Settle down and listen well. We are without many casualties. Osarius, Bale, and Nilbeth are working jointly on this. We're currently assessing the situation. I'd ask that you land at the Osarian Royal Palace. I can brief you on the latest intel once you've arrived. Very well. We shall be with you shortly. Ray? Copy. All right, let's do this. Ant? Yeah, leave the rest here to me. But haul your ass back this way if things go south. Let us make for all serious. What could the Scorpion want with Aster 4? We need to get to Osirius and have Lola fill us in. Lola! You all appear well. What of the Emperor, the Colonel, and Gaston? Well... I see. Let us go meet with His Royal Majesty. His Majesty awaits with his council just above. Leticia! Raymond! It is good to have you back. It relieves me to see you well, Father. Whatever has happened here in my absence? These strange beings simply rained down upon us one day. A whole expanse of the Nilbeth continent fell all but instantly. And what of the Trathan? Have you heard nothing? Many of your people have fled their homes to seek refuge in Osarius and Vale. Some fled for the Nilbeth capital instead, but all are safe. Indeed, then I am relieved. The invaders have made no further movements since their capture of Nilbeth. Without the slightest inkling of their plan, the Royal and Imperial navies can do naught but sit and wait off the coast. Uh. These invaders are... Scorpium. That much is obvious. If I am not mistaken, their foremost aim is most certainly the Ancient Coil. They have raided similar sites in other worlds beyond our own. But the centralist faction which espoused such ways has been eliminated. You say that, but look at what's in front of you. This is exactly the kind of thing those bastards would do. Ray! Transmission from Aster 4 surface! It's being relayed through a satellite, but I think it's from that Scorpium construction! What? There's no way! Merchant Vessel Aldous, your return has kept us waiting. That voice... Baldor! 
I witnessed you perish. He endures. If only it were surprising. His consciousness persists on the network. Are we to understand that the physical form we fought against in Provenian's cavern was merely one of many he had obtained? It would appear so. In his Cybermind integration, he has abandoned his physical form. And his consciousness is now more directly connected to the Scorpium Continuum than most of our kind. Which means what? Are we to suffer him in multifarious forms no matter how oft he is bested? That is correct. You jest. As was the plan, I have taken up the mantle of the Sovereign and will bring the universe together as one new Scorpium. You planned this from the start? What? You manipulated us from the start. The history, the traditions, all of Nilbeth stands as the perfect first subject for my rebirth, Scorpion. None are yours to take. Hear me, good people of Aster Four. With me as their sovereign, the rebirth, Scorpion, are here to see all the universe fused as one. The people of this planet will be but the first to join us. Let go of your troubles and your fears, and accept, Scorpium. Hark, we offer you naught but enlightenment. The Scorpium are what our people were always meant to be. Leticia Osiris. <laughs> I trust you hear me. You will continue to resist me. Of that much, I am certain. But know that I wish for nothing more than peace and happiness for you all as well. You... you lie! We await you, Princess. Our numbers ever-growing. Ray! I'm detecting lots of Scorpion-looking aircraft ticking off from that structure in Nilbeth. They're spreading out over the entire planet. This isn't good. If they move on the cities, we will not hold out for long. This will be a far, far cry from our battle with Remington. How are we to wage war against an enemy immune to death itself? Our only hope is finding a way to curb Boldor's influence. Elaborate. The data we require can only be obtained by visiting that tower. All right then. Nothing ventured, nothing earned, huh? Chloe, what do you think about landing us inside that spire? The way they're jamming our sensors, a direct landing will be impossible. Well, get us as close as you can, and we'll hike the rest. Fret not. I have faith that we will be fine. <laughs> yes, it's as you say. You got it. I mean, we've been riding our luck this far. All right, we get in close, we bust on in, we figure out the rest as we go. Remain ever aware. The Nilbeth we once knew is no more. I understand. Let us be off. Yeah. <laughs> 
the same malevolent spire mind you. Was there not a settlement in the vicinity? Let us push on southward. I hope the people of Nobes and the Trapman are okay despite this big, creepy tower thing. All we can do now is hope and pray they are. Let's make our way for the spire. All right. So we bust in there, and then we figure out some way to stop Baldor, yeah? Correct. I wish to investigate to confirm my suspicions. Let us go then. Little Duma has not once led us astray. Hell are you here? By the Emperor's command, I come to inquire whether you are here to offer your surrender to the Scorpion Centralists. You imagine we might? After you have wrought desecration on holy trath and grounds not once but twice now? Oh, does Lady Malkia speak for all of you then? Too bad. But the Emperor is a benevolent man. Knowing full well you would refuse, he chooses still to offer you a final chance. For his wish is but to stand guardian over all life in our universe, those who would resist him included. Come, and behold what abject misery awaits those who reject the Scorpion Centralists. You believe revealing yourself to us this way might convince us of anything? <laughs> if you yet refuse to reconsider, you merely reveal who you truly are. What is happening? It would seem to be a compatibility issue with the fused cybernetics. Likely a result of forced modification of what was once a normal configuration. Be that as it may. We must not allow it to best us. Stand ready. They will regret this. <laughs> Oh. 
How could this be? Colonel Valanche. Lola. I can't see her. I can't see anything. Lola. Lola, I... Your face is gone to me. Gaston, speak now what is in your heart. You were always a good companion to me. That's why I wanted you to join the Scorpion. Surely there was another way. Poor fool. Yes. Perhaps there was. But... It was one that I forgot... along the way. I will go and speak with the Colonel in your stead. For now, sleep well, Gaston. <laughs> that will only leave me in more trouble. <laughs> I'll speak to him myself. He went all Cybermind, right? So does that mean he can still come back like Boldor did? He will not. His mind was not yet fully integrated. His fused state overload was likely the culprit. Whether this incomplete Cybermind integration was by his own volition remains unknown. Duma, have you gained any insight to aid our fight against Bulldor? We still lack adequate data to make a judgment. We must continue. Let us then. This must be brought to an end. You would leave him here. I believe his integration to Scorpium to be genuine. This is where he should rest. You may be right. We're gonna have to climb our way up this tower, aren't we? It would seem so. Let us begin. Seems to be a dead end. Time to retrace our steps. I must confess, this strange construction leaves me feeling most perplexed. How far up do we gotta climb? Judging by the outside, we're going to be at this wire. I've left no choice. Over here! I'm destroying you. Insufficient. This area would appear safe. Never thought we'd find a place like this.
quite made it halfway up yet. I wonder the same. With my sensors cut off, I can't calculate our altitude in here. <sighs> Looks like a dead end. We should probably try and find another way. Prep for engagement! Oh, I'm terrible. Target acquired. Warning. Energy levels low. Threat neutralized. Batting ready. Destroyed. Threat neutralized. Destroyed. area appears removed from commotion. We might find rest here.
further this way so be it let us return once we came Enemies, dead ahead! I Can't wait to jump on them! We're safe. quiet here we should take the rest we are given chance for welcome to your new sovereign's castle marvelous is it not Children of the stars. Voltor. Such a pity, young Gaston. So earnestly devoted to me. He offered himself up, certain his cyber mind would help center the network around its new sovereign. Alas, you have been witness to the truth. Dare you! His life and its conclusion are now shared upon the network. Trivial though it may be, it stands to help bring forth a new era for Scorpium, a cause for celebration. Observing Boldor has provided insight into the problems with Scorpium evolution and integration. Share with me your insights, then. Join me. Let us foster our coming evolution together. My dear, unique Duma, why do you insist on interfering with those who are willing to support my ascension? Boldor, or Sovereign, as you call yourself now. After careful observation, we conclude your actions are unconnected to Scorpium evolution and our mere acts of conquest. Such a biased conclusion, one that has kept all Scorpium from greatness for far too long. We must now be more proactive in our push towards evolution. Come, children of the stars. Join our Scorpium network and let us bring prosperity to the universe. I refuse. Ever so stubborn. But 
The network is rich with records of those even more resistant than yourself, all of whom chose to integrate in the end. Is that not so? You shitting me? Him too? His mind has not yet been fully integrated. However, his fusion runs deep into his body. Valange! Lola awaits your return as we speak. You need not continue this. Your words are wasted. Here stands a man integrated twice-fold, fully conformed to our cause. He has chosen to aid me in our quest for a new future for Scorpio. Now, Valange, give our guests some convincing. Nice look. What exactly is your deal in all this? I ventured beyond the point of no return. Nothing more. Gaston is gone. And he was not alone. The people of my homeworld, both those who integrated with Scorpium and those who refused, the people of Aster. Many have perished, and yet here I stand. I, who wish to see the planet Veer free from the clutches of Scorpium. Under the Emperor, under our Sovereign, I will one day make it so. I can work through their own network and see Veer liberated from Scorpion. Were I to stray from this path here and now, then all who have died, all their sacrifices will have been for nothing. Valange! The path I take is mine, and mine alone. This is my choice to make. Tell her that for me. Tell them. <sighs> now draw your weapons, and spare your words! Careful now. Come! I'll show you what it means to stand by your belly! might I offer Lola? This was of his own accord. What? He wished for his home planet of Veer to be freed from Scorpium influence. But when it became clear the masses had chosen integration, he and the others were forced to search for other means. This led them to join the centralist cause. Their aim was to promote an evolution of Scorpium kind, which called for a secession from Veer. Evolution through secession. Inconceivable. Yes, impossible even. But still they placed their hopes in such a plan, clinging to the improbable, empowering themselves through integration with their foes. 
This in and of itself should be sufficient evidence that Scorpion is the future. <laughs> Damn it, Duma. Come on already, get it together. You still trying to figure out how to deal with this guy? Initiate combat with his current form. Final verifications will follow. Ah, great. Not sure why I ever expected a different answer. Still, you choose resistance. So be it. Such will only prove to bolster the future of Scorpion. Incoming attack. Initiate emergency measures. They want to fight, want but they've got it. Will never cease? You understand nothing. Such trifling matters concern me not. This world only happens to be the first a brand new journey for all life in this universe. The Pandalactic Federation will get under your leadership no more. Threat not. The Federation will see to join the once more. Why fixate on assimilation? What awaits you at the end of this journey? As much as I wish, the two of us might find the time to discuss as much. I am afraid now is no such the Vale Empire, and you, Boldor. Seeing the shit you've caused is more than... <laughs> what incredible strength. It is a shame to see it wasted. Why must it be you powerful few who refuse so unmovingly to join us? Hey, we aren't finished here! This has been quite an informative encounter. Though I do hope you come to me with a more favorable answer when next we meet. Duma! I thought you were working out a plan! What the hell are we supposed to do? Elena. I request you scan for any remaining traces of life in Boldor. No bio signs. The body appears vacant of his consciousness. He has completed his return to his digital form. You will require my assistance for what follows. Once you are ready, gather together. We have reached a conclusion. To apprehend a Cybermine integrated entity, we must confront them as a like format. Buddy, buddy, your final answer is to force us to integrate? You are correct, in part. Only in a quasi-integrated state. Quasi... Recall the training facilities on Parapium. As then, you will be virtually shifted into the same realm of existence. Once you enter the network, you will be able to track down the being once known as Boldor and sever him at the source. Did Gaston not fail to accomplish just that? What you ask is beyond most all of us. Thus, virtually. Unlike Boldor, we will not separate the death of the body from that of the mind. This will allow us to infiltrate the network. However, should either mind or body perish, there is no return. Is this quasi-cybermind integration something I too am capable of? By my calculations, yes. Where? How? Here, and now. The Spire itself has functionality similar to an integration plant. Likely in an effort to simultaneously assimilate a greater number of this planet's populace. Okay, so our consciousness is going to be pulled out of us and uploaded onto the Scorpium network? And uh, what the heck happens to our bodies in the meantime? They will remain here defenseless, limp, and unconscious. You want us to lose consciousness here? We are in enemy territory. Who among us would dare leave themselves defenseless in such conditions? Princess Leticia, are you safe? Lola? He's still... 
Your Highness. Thank you. For helping Gaston and the Colonel. I was helpless to save them. I... No, you have. Gaston may be lost to us, but the Colonel... He still lives. Huh, really? All this is our own doing. It was we who brought the Scorpion here, and we who left the Emperor a twisted man. Allow me to atone for our misdeeds, here and now. You will be pursuing the Emperor. I will stand watch here as you enter the network. We are in your hands. Little Duma? Gather together. Commencing digitalization for Scorpion Network Traversal. Cybermind integration. Is this what everyone sees when they fuse with Scorpion? Huh. So, this is what sharing knowledge is like. Each of these streams are... Scorpions. Ours. Pull doors! Damn it! No! It's pulling me in! I can't fight it! No, wait! Stop! Damn it! I'm getting pulled into Baldor's stream! What are you doing, Ray? Elena! Ray, come this way. I have located a stable area with less severe current. All right. Do not let go of my hand, okay? This is... This appears to be the most grounded location shared between us. Were I to come here alone, it would not be as stable. This is Vergness, isn't it? We're in front of the office. Standing here now stirs up memories, does it not? Of your childhood days when you were much younger. Uh... You came all the way to the office alone, so you could give your dad a birthday gift. But, when you soon realized you did not know how to enter the building, you started crying. Right here. Oh, yeah. Damn, I remember that. When I came out and you saw me, you started crying even harder. Perhaps in relief. <laughs> you have grown so much, Ray. Only in appearance. Oh? Every time I ended up in a bad spot because I rushed into something without thinking, you were always there. When things went wrong, I knew I was fine as long as you were there beside me. The reason I seem so grown up is thanks to you. Deep down, though, I'm still that same snot-nosed crybaby that was standing there. I find that thought both regretful and reassuring. I would certainly cry if you were to say you had outgrown your need for me. I honestly can't imagine my life without you, Elena. Uh, um, uh, sorry. Did I... was that weird? No, not at all. I cannot fathom someone speaking kinder words to me. Uh, are you okay, Elena? You're acting a little different than normal. You may be right, or perhaps entirely wrong. How? Exactly, would you describe the normal me, Ray? Well, I, uh, I'm not sure. Well, let's make sure we survive this, so I may explore the answer. But, Ray, know that just as you find need of me, I too am in need of you. Yeah, and you know what? We're gonna be just fine, you and I. Yes.
my word. Welcome to the Scorpium Network. We have entered a projection of Boldor's deep psyche. Virtual forms? Huh. Hey, is the form I'm seeing of you real? I, too, exist merely as data on the Scorpion network. It feels revealing to have them looking directly at the constructs of our consciousness, does it not? Your consciousness is revealing? I don't get it. <laughs> Ray, please do not stare at me so directly. Uh, yeah, right, yeah, sorry. I just never heard you say something like that before, you know? Couldn't help it. If this is all a projection of Boldor's psyche, that means we're essentially inside his mind? Uncertain, but such an understanding may prove adequate. And should he be defeated within this space, all shall be at an end? That is correct. You should remain cautious, however. Inside his own mind. He is not liable to place himself at a disadvantage. Correct. Well, we came this far. Can't turn back now. And as always, we will be fine. It seems Boldor is more intricately entwined with the Scorpion Network than I hypothesize. And this disadvantages our efforts. It will leave him with more power and influence over the other Scorpion, and will make isolating him from the network difficult. How is it that he came to be so strongly bound? A connection this strong reflects both his strength of will pre-integration and his tenaciousness thereafter. Ah, strength of will, huh? Take us where we need be. We have no choice but to go by our instincts. The natural laws of the outside world do not seem to apply here. Data interference detected. Data diversion identified. What the hell is this place? Enemies up ahead. You're not getting away.
Raymond, would you mind telling me where it was you have been? We should try and stick together now. we've seen just about everything. Better head back to that new spot that just opened up. by the rot, much as we are. 
but, but she herself is Osarian! Gerard! <laughs> Even as we speak, many of our own people suffer this very same affliction. Tatiana is but one of many. <laughs> Mother... Whose voice was that just now? Are we back where we started again? I ought to try a different way this time. seem to have found each other again. Oh, thank goodness! I thought I'd never see you again! Where 
did you take an off for? You had me searching. Say, I've picked this place, Clay. Something's got to have opened up somewhere. A newborn princess? A child born to us late. My aides seem to have taken quite the liking to her. Perhaps more than I. Surely it is fate. At six years junior to my son, they will be the same age apart as Tatiana and myself. Would you see them brought together for both our nations? She is still yet but a babe. What kind of father offers his daughter's hand so soon after birth? We are not only fathers, but rulers. We must strive to ensure the peace we now enjoy will last. My offer stands. Please, do think on it. If this is all deep inside his consciousness, maybe it's some kind of memory or something. Are we back where we started again? I ought to try a different way this time. I've picked this place clean. Something's got to have opened up somewhere. Change of war warning. I will fight. 
Back where we started again? I ought to try a different way this time. Kicks 
some butt to move on. I'll beat you to a pulp! Back where we started again? How to try a different way this time. Your Majesty, on our homeworld, many use this power to overcome their sickness and ailments. Soon we may overcome the frailty of age itself. Yet still, you were forced to flee here from your land, yes? Only by those who seek to use Scorpia might for their wicked schemes. Consider, if you would that there are countless worlds beyond this one with the same power we command. Should the peoples of these worlds move on your own, the Vale Empire will be helpless to hold them at bay. Hmm. Let 
Tatiana, what would you have me do? Their technology and might is unquestionable. But how do I know they speak the truth? No, they have lived as they say. Would you have grown angry with me? For even offering such strangers my consideration? Or would you find their tales intriguing and urge me on? Oh, Tatiana, why? Did you have to leave me? Oh, I miss you so. The launch? To find Buldor himself ahead. Make sure we are quite ready, Ray. 
Don't worry, we got this. Time to finish this fight for good. I was certain you would come. Bulldor. Bulldor. You've lost yourself in your twisted dreams of what the Scorpion might offer you. Take a good hard look at yourself now. Do you still see one of the humanoids you wanted to save? Humanoid? Of course not. The power the Scorpion possess is divine. In joining them, I am now closer to a god than mortal. Our kind and the Scorpion are but life by different forms. None of us living can claim ourselves gods. And there is no need for any of you to be. My only desire is for you to join us and live your lives in a whole new world. One free of sickness and conflict. As Emperor of Vale, it is my duty to lead my people to peace. And in becoming the Scorpion's God, I can finally fulfill my duty. Your current existence is no different from an android like myself. Constructed by humans, given life through technology, we will never be gods. <laughs> Listen to yourself. Are the gods of history not but man-made creations? Then surely you would agree that the most godlike among us now is either you or myself. You're a paltry excuse for one. Man cloaks himself in knowledge and power taken from others and mistakes himself an idol. You are just one of many who litter the pages of our history. Yes, correct. And even with all the technological advancements we've seen, your story is quite common. History itself will determine my divine status. Once the whole universe is one with the Scorpion, we shall be omnipotent. We shall become God. Well, it'll be impossible for you to become one, since we're here to make sure that never happens. The universe needs not such a deity. If there is anything divine in this world, it is but the flame of life inside of all of us. Mortal life has always feared the unknown. A fear of the divine is only natural. Yet fear you will not find in us, nor a thought spared for the desecration you speak of. We're not going to get anywhere arguing about this, are we, Boltor? At last. A sentiment I find agreement with. As mortals, we stand more powerful than the god you claim to be. Princess Leticia, it is precisely that fiery spirit of yours which Scorpion so desperately needs. Join me, my new daughter. Detecting incoming attack. Time has come for you to learn your place. Behold, the infinite power of a god! The Scorpion Way is to see the evolution of what's through integration. Why you inhibit us so? There was never a need for anything. I find your lack of resolve disappointing. You lack the power to You must remain determined and unwavering. You say that like it's easy. It's not like we can just wield sheer will like a sword and stab it. A battle in this digital realm essentially equates to the use of data traffic to overwhelm your opponent. For organic life forms like yourselves, it may be best to think of this as what you call full power or resolve.
Preposterous! What could you lowly mortals ever hope to do? With my power as a god, I could bring endless bliss to all life in this world! To all life in the universe! With such power, I will not... must not be beat! You are Bulldor Il Vale. Man, not God! I am. How could one possibly know happiness in a world without sorrow to temper it? A world forged from single-minded devotion is ultimately the same as one empty of all. No, stop that. Stare not at me with those eyes, mortal. Baldor. I will not be eradicated. I cannot be. I alone am destined to be your new god and leader. Behind me, now. Enough! No more of this! I will not be defeated here! I refuse! What's going on? Baldor's will endures and refuses to be erased. Should he continue to resist in this way, his virtual realm will be obliterated with all in it. Baldor! Cease this at once! The battle is over! Words are useless. I will do what is needed. Please, no! My universe just needs me! Here we part. What? No! I am unable to maintain your consciousness in this space any longer. With what power I have left, I will see you return safely. But what's going to happen to you? You possess the potential to both understand the Scorpion and guide them to an enlightened future. Through you, may the seeds of all evolutionary paths for life be sown. I place my faith in you. Understood. Rest assured. Ray. At your side, I found faith in the future coexistence between Scorpion and organic life. I thank you. Duma, no! My investigation is at its end. Is it all over now? I am inclined to believe it only just begins. I would agree. Thank you, Duma. to be a protector it then yes as i mentioned before aster four's prolonged contact with more advanced civilizations categorized it as a protectorate of the pangalactic federation are we to be subjected to surveillance by an ambassador no nothing quite as direct as that Aster will remain under observation to prevent any unnecessary interaction with advanced civilizations until it reaches a certain threshold. Hmm. <laughs> Pretty imperious, aren't you? Was that not where the Federation's faults originally lie? Guess some things are hard to change. And though it might not exactly be compensation, all of you who have been subject to intense intervention 
now have the option to travel to any Federation system to live or study. Studying on a different planet? I must say, I don't hate the thought. Right? Agreed. But I must refuse. I vowed to attend to tasks on this planet using mine own strength. I've had lesson enough as to the consequences of progression that was acquired through the power of others. That's true. If I studied medical science at such an advanced level, I'm pretty sure I could save lives all across the universe. But first and foremost, I want to treat the suffering people of this world with my own hands and using our own techniques. Our journey into the stars must be one born of our own volition. Only then will we find ourselves on equal ground with you and yours. I see. You know, you're probably right. Yeah, I mean, if it were up to me, I'd set up a branch of Lawrence Logistics right here in Osarius, and that would let us see as much or as little of each other as we could ever want. Now is a time for restraint. Surely, the events here have opened your eyes to the importance of the Federation's underdeveloped planet preservation pact. Yeah, 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 I get it. But come on, you gotta at least see how hard that is on a personal level. Don't be so uptight. I say this with respect to the positions of both Elena and Marielle. But, from my own view, I fail to find fault in Raymond's suggestion. Wow, Alby. Can't say I expected that coming from you. Spare me. I simply speak for us all. I wonder if my ancestors also felt the same way long ago. not we have a tendency to be fine after all <laughs> you know you're a lot more carefree now than you were before for that i know who to thank oh my who could that be did we have someone irresponsible like that around oh yes at hand i might say oh yeah <laughs> well <sighs> we both got jobs to do right <laughs> More than I care for, indeed. <sighs> if only some god would show up and free us all from the burdens of work life so we could just kick back and have fun. <laughs> Says the man bound to place his burdens on the shoulders of poor Chloe and Elena. Hey, I've become crazy capable after all this. I'm sure they feel like they can just relax and enjoy the ride. You are free to believe whatever you want. Ray? Okay, let's leave it at that. Ray, this is the Aldis. We're now in geostationary orbit. Copy that. Yep, best get going before this turns into another pick on Ray fest. It does seem about time. This is Raymond for the Aldis. Commence transfer. An unprecedented crisis for the Pangalactic Federation was resolved with the cooperation of the planets for Gold and Aster IV. However, the corruption which plagued the highest levels of Federation leadership continues to leave its mark on the organization. Amidst growing calls from Federation captains, my grandfather, Emerson T. Kenny was assigned as interim commander of the Federation fleet. A retired military man, he refused at first, but after much pushback, he took the reins to lead the Federation from its worst crisis yet. 
Through these troubled events, I've come to question the Federation's purpose in this galaxy, as well as my own function as one of its officers. But I choose to believe that its cause is still just. We must ensure a future of peace. Pan-Galactic Federation Lieutenant Mariel L. Kenny. The events that unfolded spanned numerous star systems. Though their sovereign was defeated, remnants of the centralist Scorpium and their invasive measures still remained. Those among the Pan-Galactic Federation who aligned with the Scorpium cause were on the run, but still retained their influence. To combat both these foes, my partner Elena, armed with data saved from Duma's survey, helped us hit the Scorpium network from their own colony. Duma's experiences and noble ideology had a profound impact on the network and saw the remaining centralists quickly weakened. And while everything might still be far from wrapped up, it shouldn't be too long now until the Scorpium find themselves on the right track. My hope now is that the Pan-Galactic Federation might find its way too. Captain of the Lawrence Logistics Ship, the Aldous, Raymond Lawrence. Yeah, sorry for the holdup. Raymond, you're late and it ain't fashionable. The big shots have all been seated for at least an hour now. You're meeting with the Federation Emissary. Take this a little more seriously. It's not like any of this is on the books anyway, right? Got news for you, the planet Ori is not gonna join the Federation. I'm guessing this is all just so they can tell Vergold to back off without rocking the boat. Which means there's no point in taking all this stuff they set up that seriously. So I figured I'd keep them waiting in anticipation. You ass. You're really using that as an excuse for running late? Uh, too much, Dad? Be honest. Doesn't matter either way. You were always gonna get put before the firing squad in these negotiations from the get-go. Don't worry about it. Me and your brother will do whatever we can on our end to make you look good. So, if you say showing up late was part of the plan, then part of the plan it is. Sound good? Sounds good. The Federation's too big to just change overnight, even after, you know, all that happened out there. But I'd say this has made it plain and clear that they ain't in charge of the universe. I mean, they don't get to call all the shots out here anymore. And this here is just one of the ways we're gonna teach them that lesson. Say as much from the start, then. You stress me out way too much. <laughs> Sorry, man. Today, the Lawrence family is about to save another planet from the dirty hands of the feds. <laughs>